Hello, everybody. Uh, happy New Year's Eve, 2022 into 2023. I don't, I don't know what to say. You might be watching this a couple of years later. I don't even know. Anyways, hello, everybody. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're here to play Viticulture. Technically, Viticulture Essential Edition. Maybe with some Tuscany stuff accidentally mixed in that I don't know about, but also mixed in with the Viticulture world. Nope, Viticulture. Above your head, Rob. Viticulture World Expansion. Uh, and this is Rob's Gaming Table. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, oh. everybody in the live chat. Hello to you watching live. Hello to you watching later. Uh, I don't always drink wine. I, I don't ever really drink wine. Rare. But when I do, I make sure I do it on New Year's Eve playing a game about running a vineyard yeah. and fulfilling wine orders. And uh, yeah, all about making wine. Happy, happy New Year's. I'm probably not holding the glass correctly. I forget which one you hold around the thing to keep it warm and which one you hold the stem not on. That one. I'm not I'm supposed to only hold the stem, right? Yeah. Hey, sorry about that. But it's tough because it's very full. Sorry. Well, <laughs> because I didn't want to have to take a we trip. We do it big around the, here. I didn't want to take a trip to the kitchen. <laughs> don't ask me what it is. Uh, it's just random, probably clearance and bargain value wine because don't waste the good stuff on me. Um, well, that is true. It is also noon, so we're not drinking fancy, expensive wine. Yep, it's a, it's officially twelve oh three, so we're 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 able to to you know play board games, drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. Um, here it's the where we are. Kinds. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Be safe today if you're going out yeah. and having some drinks and fun. Be safe. Have a good New Year's. Uh, hello to those stopping in. Uh, Sajat left a nice little message. Popped in, said, "I will very likely miss all of your New Year's Eve streams." We're only doing one New Year's Eve stream, by the way. <laughs> yeah, there, there wasn't a whole I don't have anything, schedule plan. I don't have anything else scheduled for the rest of the day after the stream, so uh, other than uh, things not related to the stream. But, mm -hmm. um, but he says, uh, we are gaming ourselves. So in that case, this message survives until then. Wish you all in the chat, as well as Mel, Rob, and Kyle, a happy 2023. Thank you, Sajat, when Be you're watching this. in the future. Yes, Thank yes. you so much. Thank happy you so much. New Year to you as well. That's very kind. And I see all the other happy New Year's wishes and stuff. Totally valid today's stream to be dropping happy New Year's. But a couple days ago, people coming in the stream, Adam Morris, I'm looking at you, dropping Happy New Year's all over the place. Come on, man. Was that yesterday? No, it was like two days ago, I think. Oh, oh yeah, we did a stream yesterday. Wow. No, yesterday we spent the time uh, digging through the board game collection, trying to find Viticulture Essential Edition, Yeah. Uh, then blowing off the cake to dust all over it, <laughs> uh, then relearning Viticulture, okay? <laughs> Understanding fully Viticulture, because you need to know base Viticulture to play the co-op. It's like, it is different. But it assumes, like, the rule book is so thin because it just assumes you know Viticulture very well. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then this changes it. Viticulture, for those that don't know, Viticulture, actually, that's a good segue. If I had the page ready. Oh, I failed the segue. All right, let's do it again. Speaking of Viticulture Essential Edition. Here's Viticulture Essential Edition. It re-implements Viticulture, it puts some stuff from expansions into the base game, made it a more, I guess, complete, the best version of the game, supposedly. I don't know if components changed, I have no idea. But this came out in 2015. This is a 32 ranked overall board game. This is in the top 100 on BoardGameGeek.com, for those that don't know. It is a worker placement game based on you running a vineyard. It's competitive by default, okay? Has some modules in the box you can mix in, some variant rules, but then it also has an expansion called Tuscany, which I think they then made an essential edition for that, not confusing at all, um, which improved some things and had some of the other modules that were originally in the game and whatever are all in there. So you can buy that expansion. Then there are some expansions. Actually, I should probably talk about these expansions this way. So this game's been around for a bit is what I'm trying to say, and there are many expansions for it. So it might be confusing when you're like, oh, I really like this game. Now what do I do? So we'll just go over that quickly because the cooperative expansion we're focusing on today is another one of those expansions that just came out in 2022 couple months ago, I believe. Um, but there's promo packs. There's these visit from the Rhine Valley. They add more visitors. So in the game, you can have visitors come to your, your uh, vineyard um, to taste test wines and all this kind of stuff. They're basically little cards that help you do actions and kind of break the rules and cheat the game and stuff like that. Um, and then there's the Moore's visitor expansion or Moore. They give you more visitors in that expansion. So just beefing up the game, adding more cards to decks, basically. And then there's the essential edition of the Tuscan expansion. 
So I don't know when the original Viticulture came out. I'm assuming it was like some Kickstarter probably looked like ass. And then they were like, ooh, let's make an expansion to add to it called Tuscany. And then people are like, yeah, never play it without Tuscany stuff because the base game's kind of boring maybe. Just what I assume. Somebody in the chat I know or in the comments will have played original and can put me in my place. <laughs> but uh, I mean, we can go look at the year Tuscany was released. But this happens with Kickstarter games all the time, right? They look cool, people back them, they come out, and then they're successful, and people love them, but they're like, ah, they just don't look polished, or there's issues, and the publisher makes more games, and they learn, right? And then they go back and then make a better version of their, like, original games, or their original hit games, and stuff like that. So this, to me, is kind of like the essential editions, which are the only editions you should ever buy now, they're just what is available, uh, is my understanding, is kind of like, um, oh, what's a game that did that? Uh, I just had it on, is it my tongue? Uh, Aeon's End, for example. Aeon's End. Aeon's End came out, looked like crap. They had a, a grade 8 student do the graphic design in it. The game looked like trash. So then it went successful. People loved it. And then they went and actually paid someone and then spiced up the game. And now that's the only version of the game you should buy, which looks better. And then it matches the future graphic design and art and stuff that they use and the fonts and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the original game, they probably just put like very little money into it. They didn't have faith in it. But then the game releases, people like it, and they're like, this is awesome. And they're like, oh, well, let's do a second Kickstarter. Let's, we're kind of embarrassed uh, how the game looks. People are ripping on it in reviews. Uh, let's actually put money into it now because we know people like it and it's successful and it's worth it, you know? So maybe that's what happened with Tuscany, the or, uh, Viticulture, maybe. 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 Maybe the original Viticulture came out and just wasn't, I don't know, let's find out. But anyways, they released all those expansions, and then now there is this one, the cooperative expansion. And Kanji Studios, thank you, says you've been a member for three months using your included super chat to drop a, hey everyone, hey everyone, <laughs> happy holidays and happy new year. Kanji, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. I also hope you had an amazing trip. Yes. I think you're back now, I'm assuming you're back now. Hope it all went well. Or is on, on a ship right now? Or maybe, yeah, maybe you're... Puke, puking over the edge? Why? Why is my bed still moving? <laughs> what is happening? Thank you so much, yeah. Trip it was, was awesome. awesome. Oh, that's so great. I'm so glad. That is awesome. Okay, good. Good to hear. Oh, you're back now. Nice. Good to we hear. We missed you. Well... <laughs> <laughs> some of us did okay <laughs> not every no i'm just joking <laughs> uh, and michael's here says happy new year been watching past videos of robin mel playing gloomhaven jaws and lion i think you were commenting on some of them michael i was seeing uh recently oh, nice. but again we played that so long ago sometimes the comments are like oh hey yeah did you might have been doing this wrong or whatever i think sam uh, you know, Sam the man, he's yeah. watching through them and he commented on one. I was oh. like, oh, yeah, I need to go look at what he's talking about in that. But he's it also it'll help other people looking forward yeah. later. Somebody will probably answer his question who knows the game better. But um, but yeah, I noticed a lot of people are watching through Jaws of Line right now. So they must have, some people got it around the holidays or finally have time off to play it and stuff. Uh, among a few other games, I noticed they're getting a little more activity. And I think it's so cool. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, and then he says, um, relearning to play so I can play Gloomhaven. That might explain it also. Oh, that might explain it. And then Kanji, after I, you know, I, I, I say not nice things, he then <laughs> gives five gaming table, Ross gaming table memberships to people in the chat. Thank, thank you, you for thank the you, thank extended, you. crazy, over the top support, Kanji. Thank you so much. A few of these people are Too in the kind. chat right now, so that's awesome. Thank you, thank you. And Mike's dropping a member for twelve months super chat. Ten, says, ten. Or sorry, ten. Close, close to twelve. All right, listen. I swear, <laughs> I just started sipping, okay, and already I'm falling apart. <laughs> I'll be honest. Do you like it though? It's fine, yeah. Okay. It's wine. I'm like, I usually have wine with like a meal. I so know. it's like, I know. it's a little weird to have wine with a board game, but I'm, I'm trying new things. I've done it. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go back to Mike. Mike James says, uh, a long term member, uh, says, thanks to everyone for the great community. It has been a pleasure this year. Looking forward to next year with you all. Mike, thank you so thank much. You That's so, much. so sweet. We're looking forward to next year as well. And Mark C's been a member for three months. Says, happy New Year's, everyone. Thank Mark, you. Thank you so thank you, much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. And the community extends, and I always forget to show this out, and I get in trouble uh, by members of our Discord and who've been producers of the channel for a while. If you want to hang out and chat with some of the other producers that hang out in the chat, those who donate on Patreon at the producer tier, or who click the join button down below, there is a benefit added there of a Discord uh, community where we can talk when the streams aren't live. 
and chat about random things and stuff. Uh, share pictures and, and whatever. Join up and play games online through the, the voice channels and stuff. Um, but it is private and is, is only for those who support the channel uh, through those ways. And you need to link your Discord account to your YouTube or your Patreon and it will pull you in automatically. Um, but when it's mentioning the community, it's not just here in the live streams. We also take it, take it offline uh, per se. And then uh, you can hang out there and chat with some cool people and share some pictures and, and do all that kind of stuff. So I just need to shout that out. That that's the thing. Um, so those who have just got memberships, uh, if you want to get involved and hang out and just chill and have a place to just show off pictures of the, you know, the uh, giant board game collection you still have to play, um, you know, your, your, your board gamer problems, anything like that, um, you know, or ask questions, that kind of stuff, go drop them in the Discord, join up, and uh, yeah, come and hang out. Mm -hmm. It's fun over there. If you don't like it, that's fine. It's while well, you have your membership, so if your membership expires and you're just, oh, that's fine. No, no big deal. It's not for everyone. Um, but come on, visit, check us out. More people in there, the better, more, more fun we're having. Mm -hmm. um, you know? Yep. Good time. Great community. Yes, great community. That's where that all full circle right there. <laughs> thank you, Mike. And thank you, Mark. And, and thank you, Kanji. Bob Bell's here. Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. A bit early to join Mel and Rob in drink, unless it's a mimosa or Bloody Mary. Uh, hmm? I mean, is it too early? I mean... You, you do whatever. Here's, yeah, the, here's the problem. You, you do you. In the past, we've done New Year's Eve streams for around our New Year's Eve, like in our evening, like right. after dinner. We try to do it, you know, stream close to midnight or after midnight, whatever. We've done it in the past. I remember one last, year. Oh, uh, last year was close. Last year was close, but here's the problem. Our community has grown, right? We have 16,709 subscribers. Okay, those people, majority of them watch videos later. One more would be like amazing. Whatever, Make it's it fine. Listen. I know, but you gotta just- Okay, let me finish my thought, <laughs> Sorry. please. I'm already having trouble <laughs> reading and we haven't even started playing the game. Uh, but what I'm gonna say, our audience, uh, looking in the back end of YouTube is like all over in different time zones, countries, parts of the world, right? So everyone's New Year's when they hit midnight or it turns to 2023 or people are yelling Happy New Year's, we can't hit everyone's New Year's Eve. No. So does it really matter when we stream on New Year's Eve? The answer is no, because we're never going to hit it all for everyone. And like, you might think like our time zone would matter. It doesn't. It doesn't. Because there is more people in different time zones than in our time zone watching at live or in the future. So it doesn't matter. We're just streaming on New Year's Eve afternoon for us. I know our West Coast friends in, the, in North America, they're like, <sighs> just waking up and they're yeah. like, what are these idiots doing drinking wine on the YouTubes? Mm -hmm. Idiots. Um, but good morning and happy New Year's Eve. Uh, but yes, then there's some people like watching in New Zealand, Australia, and, and you know, the, the Far East. Um, hello, and happy 2023 to you, um, which is kind of cool. Frederick says it's 18 p.m. here. <laughs> 18 is... 18 p.m.? That's 6, right? 6 p.m., you mean? Okay. Unless he's just making up times. Like, I know it's 12 p.m., but he's just throwing out 18 p.m. I, I haven't used the 24-hour clock in a really yeah, long yeah. time, so I have to think about it for a minute. <laughs> Mike, we don't... <laughs> Mike, we don't talk about how our time zone's the best, okay? We don't want to do that here. We're kind of outnumbered. <laughs> Just like me throwing out my little Canadian. Anytime a fellow Canadian says something in the chat, I'm like, hey, <laughs> little little nudge, a little pound, you know, shout them out that they're better than everyone else. But then, like, quickly I scale back because we're outnumbered. <laughs> Bob says, I'm not whining that you started too early. No, no, no. And we're not saying that. We're just trying to give you justification for you starting early. It's okay. <laughs> Mark C says it's noon 14 here. <laughs> oh, no. Mark's been drinking a little bit, right? <laughs> Ninja Art with the super chat Thank says, you. Happy New Year's Eve. Learning sleeping gods on my end. Awesome. That is awesome. Have okay. Fun. That brings me to my other question. Uh, which I should just pull in the chat the whole time we're playing because I want to see it by the end because people are going to stop in after this and you know whatever I'll just leave it up mm -hmm. um, but uh, this is the question I want to know because I love hearing it around the holidays uh, boom
Whoops. Oh, Lee, holy. Something like that. Hard to cover it all again, talking about the time zone thing. Um, are you playing board games on New Year's? New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, or just like the whole around New Year's? Um, yeah. Around New Year's? Mm -hmm. How do you say this? Because some people are already passed, but some people might play on New Year's Day, you know, I guess have we could it say all. on New Year's Eve slash day. Yeah. All right, I dropped a poll. Uh, it just says, are you playing board games on New Year's Eve and day? A flash day or day, whatever. Oh, Jana had us said this weekend. We could have done that too. Yeah, that, been, that, that might be better. easier. <laughs> and if so, what games? For those who are here right now, what games? What did? What do you pull out on yours? Like, are you playing with family, friends, yourself? Playing some solo gaming? Just sitting there waiting for the ball to drop, the celebrations, or you just treat it like any other day, and you're just, you know, most people like not maybe not most people, but I'm assuming a lot of people are are off during that time. They're not working, so they might have time to get together with family and friends over the holidays. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, case there's travel it says too many bones. Nice. Ben also Horn, asking. Ben Horn has tomorrow Gloomhaven Day. What, oh, what, what are you asking? No, no, no. Also uh, asking, um, can you do more too many bones playthroughs? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't heard that question asked before. <laughs> Listen, we will. When the new stuff arrives, I will then stop what I'm doing and and learn relearn the game and play it again for sure. But right now, if you look at all the playlists on the channel and the ones that have the most hours of content in them, too many bones is definitely one of those up there with like Gloomhaven and stuff. Uh, so some other games in our collection need some love, okay? I don't want to play too many, too many Bones sessions, if you know what I mean. Um, there's lots on the channel. Not everyone's watched it all. We did two 12-hour-ish streams of it a couple years ago to celebrate hitting a milestone on the channel. We played recently that book, the pop-up book. Uh -oh. Yes, we played it blind. We got our butts kicked, but uh, it was cool to experience that. I would love to go replay that at some point. Um, but yeah, lots of too many bones to play. We will try some probably this year. I don't see what, why not because we're going to get the new content. I'm assuming. Yeah. I know it got delayed and everything, which kind of sucks, but, uh, I did drop like $500 Canadian on the last too many bones Kickstarter of a bunch of stuff, you know, check out some of the upgrades and things like that. And you know, what's going to happen is, uh, after doing that, you know, cause it was on a, a coffee stream or we're on the Kickstarter. Of course, the hype's there. Everyone wants it. You know, we play it all the time. One of my favorite games. Uh, I'm sure Chip Theory is going to reach out, you know. Oh, after? They're going to reach out when it's time to, you know, the game's shipping, and they're going to be like, hey, Rob, do you want some uh, press copies, you know, to play on the channel? But usually they don't send all the extra fluff, so, like, I wanted all the extra fluff. I want to try some things out, though, so, like the maps and the dice trays and stuff, so uh, I maybe spent way too much on that crowdfunding campaign that I shouldn't have, but it's all good. It's all good. I definitely want it. Definitely going to play it, so stay tuned for too, more Too Many Bones. Mm -hmm. Um... But anyways, back to a bit of culture. Just sorry, just Addy's just popped too. Addy, Addy happy thank New Year's Eve. Thank you so much. Thank sorry, you. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Nope, Addy, thank you for the support. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Janice is learning Reckland Run, later playing Lands of Galdir, Touring Machine, and maybe some Great Western Trail. Wow, that's an amazing day planned. Yeah, Great Western Trail. We have that one. I, yeah, I still want, I'm still looking at that one. Soon, 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 soon. Yeah, I want to crack that one out and play with Mel. Or Kyle and Mel. We'll see. But yeah, that's on my list. My Mel and I went through and like added the games to the list that we just showed up even yesterday, the day before, in the last couple of weeks. Man, the list of backlog games plus games we're currently playing, campaigns I'd love to continue, all that stuff we're playing on the channel. There's way too much. So we're just going to keep chiseling at it, keep working through it. Of course, other Kickstarters are going to arrive and stuff that we backed in the past. And I'm sure some publishers will send us some games in there too, so or offer some games. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's a little daunting when you put it all in a spreadsheet and you keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and then start filtering things out. Like you got to make some tough cuts mm -hmm. and you have to put, we prioritize things, you know, like what will we play majority? Then some things I want to play solo, some things I want to play two player, some things I want to play three player and even more if we can organize it. So some things are just waiting for the right time to fit into when Kyle can play them, you know, so um, we'll see, we'll see. So we'll see, we'll get there. But yeah, so too many bones is the moral of the story eventually. But there's a huge list of games that need some love. But when that shows up from Kickstarter, yes, we'll try to work it in as soon as possible around there because I do miss playing it on stream for sure. 
And I can do that one solo too, so there is a uh, easier chance of getting it in. We don't have to wait like for Mel to be free or interrupt the campaign or whatever. Um, so it should be good. Uh, yeah. Ask Chip Theory for some coffee instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't send the game. Just send a whole bunch of coffee. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, bribe me with caffeine. I mean, <laughs> this is awkward. You did like their coffee, right? It was good. It was okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just didn't come with enough promo cards. Um, but other than that, I'm just joking. <laughs> but thanks to uh, Kanji for ho hooking it up, sending it, send me his stuff. So I appreciate that. <laughs> I made up for the one that was like missing stuff, but uh, it's all good. It just sucks I can't, I don't think I can get that coffee in Canada still. So that's no. the problem. Yeah, we'll just grab it when we're at conventions. It's just like a treat to get at conventions if, mm -hmm. they, if they have it there, which is kind of cool. Yeah. It's just something that like feels like, you know, it's part of the, it's a souvenir of the trip. Uh, which is neat. All right, back to Viticulture. Uh, let's see. So uh, back to here, actually. I just want to see the original Viticulture. Oh, yeah. This it is was 2013. Original. Oh, wow. So literally two years later, they're like, let's make a better version. Wow. Yeah. And I bet it was a Kickstarter because that's what uh, Stonemaier Games used to do back in the day. Yep. Crowdfunding Kickstarter. Which I guess makes sense. Yep. Yeah. And I bet it was one of his early ones before he actually started making money, you know, pre-Scythe probably, right? Mm -hmm. Is it pre-Scythe for this game? Let's find out. Let's go to Linked Games for Stonemaier. Can we sort by, like, year released? Yes, we can. Uh, but then we, yeah, how do we do it? How do we do it the other way? I guess we'll just go to the bottom, right? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. So if I scroll on the last page. Uh, no, it looks like that was first. Yeah, Viticulture was their first game, if this is correct. So that makes sense. This is, totally makes sense. It's like the, the young publisher comes to crowdfunding, one dude in a garage with some glue sticks and scissors making a board game. Back, does a Kickstarter. I bet it didn't do that great, but actually gets it into retail. People love it gets good reviews, and then all of a sudden, you know, the money starts coming in, and then maybe Euphoria does, I know Euphoria people love that at the time. Um, yeah. Euphoria, that's a game I, I've heard a lot of good things about, but I don't think it was that popular, but I've, I always was told by friends and stuff in our local board gaming group was like, Rob, you need to play Euphoria, it's really good. 507 yeah. though, I, I, for something out in 2013 is not yeah. it's terrible. Supposedly it's pretty good. I don't know if it still holds up or if it really is that good. I just had friends that were like, Rob, it's really good, you'll like it. Hmm. Um, 2014 came out with Viticulture Tuscany expansion, so obviously the game was doing well enough, they did an expansion. And then 2015, we're like, yeah, let's just make an essential edition, make a better version, and that jumped up to 32 wow. overall. So this, like, got the company started. So Stonemaier Games, those that make Scythe, and Between Two Cities, and um, some other games that aren't that great, with the Wingspan, <laughs> you know, Stonemaier Games, this is what got them going, right? Uh, Scythe, one of my favorite games of all time, is in here. What was that one? And Brett, thank you for the super chat. Here's something for a thing of specialty Oreos too. Oh, Brett, thank you so much. Which, man, maybe I'll need to grab some of those too. We'll see <laughs> later. I'm saving a box of yeah. those those uh, uh, those white uh, chocolate covered Oreos yes. uh, just for today, actually, yes. for New Year's Eve. I don't know if I'll eat them on stream, but later, definitely. Maybe that'll, Brett, go to some pineapple pizza for dinner. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. No, I put that in the Gen Con convention oh, okay, account. okay, okay. For, so for we'll, Oreos? We'll, yeah, when we stop at the local Target right. or Walmart, you know, yep. uh, to see what board games are on the shelf with our little uh, our little uh, vlogging camera. We, mm. Then we stop it and we go wander to the Oreo aisle so nobody knows our, our problems. Oreos and wine, yum. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat well to that, but wine and chocolate is good. Is so, it? So, yeah. I'll, I'll be the judge of that. I'll be the judge later. Oh, we're getting some pineapple pizza love. In, stay tu in stay tuned. Oreos and wine and <laughs> Rob's face reaction to such things. <laughs> All right, so Wingspan 2019. But where's Scythe? Oh, I freaking love Scythe so much. Oh, My Little Scythe. Yeah. Oh, oh we played that. Yeah, we'll play it again on stream. I want to pull that one out. Oh, there you go. Scythe 2016. Rank 16. Love this. Oh, love this game. Love this game. I love Viticulture too. It's like an amazing worker placement game, in my opinion. Love it. So rock solid. You have we not have not played this in a really long time. No. Uh, like so too long, probably. 
So for Viticulture, we have not streamed it. When I was looking for the scenes for it, uh, I then realized I hadn't streamed this game or the digital version I haven't streamed since uh, I, before I built this computer we're streaming on. Oh. So that means all my files that I thought I copied over were all not there because I probably cleaned up some stuff um, or didn't copy everything for some reason. But uh, yeah, I had to kind of start from scratch this morning. So I've been a little, little crazy trying to find all my Viticulture assets and download and stuff. So, um, but, we, but based on that, I was like, when did we stream this last? I feel like it wasn't that long ago. Crazy part, we streamed this game, Viticulture last, we played it on stream in uh, late February 2020 in the before times. Oh. In the before times. And I remember during COVID-19 lockdown and stuff, that's when I started building a computer, which was the dumbest thing ever cost-wise because everything costs like triple the cost. It was nuts. So I probably didn't build the best computer I could have, but I just used the money I had, but it definitely needed an upgrade. Um, but yeah, it was on an older computer we played on. Uh, so that's how old, a long time ago. So we had different cameras, capture cards, lights, all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely like, wow, we haven't played it since February of 2020. So here we are in December of 2022, uh, getting Viticulture back. So we're not professionals, uh, is the moral of the story. We're not experts. I play Viticulture a bunch of times. Family, friends, love it. Played it on stream. Yeah. Played the digital version. I'm not a pro, but playing Viticulture World yesterday and then reading up on it and reading the book, uh, Viticulture World, even if you are the best Viticulture player, this is going to be a challenge for you. It is uh, outside the box. It is the same-ish game mechanics you're playing. But the way they've designed this cooperative version, uh, it won't be for everybody. And it still feels like Viticulture. But the difficulty scale on it, it definitely makes you have to play differently. Like, truly cooperatively. Mm -hmm. You're not just playing multiplayer solitaire fighting an AI bot at the table. This is not what this is. This is everyone working together at a table to build a communal engine to try to have every player reach 25 point score or you all lose. And there's a new influence track score, which I'll show on the table in a sec, that you must reach 10 and everyone can bump that up with different ways. Um, but they've added new mechanics um, and it's still worker placement, but you're just, everyone that needs to work together. And if you don't, you're not gonna win and everyone loses. So if one player ends at 24 points, and everyone else is at 25 or above, you all lose. So there is trading, and there's uh, things where you can, the cards that usually affect opponents and give them points and stuff, you want to do those because now your opponents are your fellow players. So you want them to have those benefits. You want to play those cards to give the, the weaker player at the table who's just having a bad draw. You want to trade cards with them to get them the best stuff. You want to make sure you help them fill wine orders, um, which is really neat. It won't be for everyone, but we're going to play it today, and it'll obviously make more sense as we play it. Um, and show it going through here. So we're gonna play cooperative viticulture, but if you're looking for competitive viticulture, check the video description, there's a playlist. If you wanna find all of our older streams or playthroughs or whatever uh, for viticulture, digital viticulture, whatever, um, all of that content is down below in the video description. Um, so check that out there. And Brian, thank you for the super chat for your Jalapeno Cheetos budget. Thank you, Brian. Thank the you, J is silent. Jalapeno. Did I tell you, Brian, that they sell them in Canada now? Remember when we couldn't yeah. find them in Canada at all, yes. but now they do. Yes, and some some grocery stores. Some, you, yeah, you not just, all. Yeah, some grocery stores wandering the aisle, and I'm like, oh, yeah. look, Mel, look what's there. Yeah, which is bad. We don't need to smuggle them in a boat across the border anymore. Yeah, but it makes it slightly not as special because it was special because whenever we went to the U.S., it was like, yep. I need to get a bag of those. Yep. And now they're here. Yep. But thank you so much. So basically, crack is now legal in our country, is what Mel is They're saying. They're so good. Crack is just readily available on store shelves here. And uh, yeah, Mel's now in trouble. No, I try not to buy them. <sighs> Brian Walbridge is here. Hello, Brian. Brian, where did you and Cynthia disappear to? I know you guys uh, dropped it. And I, I remember in the, chat, in the chat, you guys were like, this will be our last stream over the holidays. We'll be back later. And then I forgot to ask. Did they, I think they went to Cynthia's. Did you go to Cynthia's so you family guys traveled in like to the US? Seattle or something? Yeah. Is that where you went? That's what I thought. I thought they traveled to the US. They but... were in the US. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, cool. But I can't remember if that's where you were. Yeah, 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 West Coast. I know she, they traveled to West Coast. Um, but that's awesome. Oh, that's yeah, cool. okay. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. It says, happy Christmas all. A bit late. We are now back from our trip to the uncivilized barbarian wild. <laughs> okay, that all makes sense now. That all makes sense now. A happy new year for whatever 
it is uh, for whenever it is your time zone as well. Brian, good Brian, to see you. Glad, you. glad you had a good trip. Thank you. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, I remember before they traveled to, to Seattle and I was like, that's so crazy. It's not like like they're in like, you know, UK and it's like they're not just traveling to like North America on the East Coast, you know, they're going all the way West Coast, which is kind of nuts. That's like a long trip, I'm sure. Yeah. And it's also in the US, so it's even worse. So sorry about that. Sorry, sorry to hear your luck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Brett>? <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Brett has a funny comment here. It says, that's the reason I'm not allowed to go to the grocery store with my wife. I put whatever I like in the cart. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, no, I know of these issues. I know of these issues. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> All right. Funny. So let's play some Viticulture World. Uh, and let's talk about it, I guess, some more. Why not? Uh, you know, it's New Year's Eve. We're chilling. Mm -hmm. Yes, this might be a little longer of a stream than you expect for a Viticulture playthrough. We're not getting down to the business. I don't want to see comments of why is this video three hours to play a game that should take like 90 minutes or less or something. Uh, go away. Go away. We're chilling. We're hanging out. This is a live stream. Long form content. Enjoy. All right. Hope you had a good New Year's though. Either way, you internet troll. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Here's the Viticulture world. Uh, so yes, it comes in a quite big expansion box. Uh, I don't know. It's for an expansion, I should say. Um, but I just wanted to show this before we get to it. It does have solo mode. So because it's a co-op, any co-op can be solo, pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you can play solo. I haven't read the solo rules, but it has the Ot uh, Automa or Otama or however you pronounce it. Uh, they have cards for it to play against, like an AI kind of thing. Um, has uh, little rules. I think the AI guy is called Buratino, Buratino rules for solo play, okay? It's a little booklet that's all different rules. I'll, I'll probably try this solo at some point. No guarantee, though. I don't know when I'll fit it in, but I do want to try it at least. I don't know if I'll stream it. We'll see, but um, we'll see if I can fit it in. But um, yeah, it comes with this cool little insert, which I like. Kind of like the Tuscany uh, or the Central Edition stuff. Comes with little inserts for everything. It has a similar kind of insert and uh, to hold all the cards. So in this game, there's different regions. And these are all like different difficulty levels, different rules. These are like an event deck. So we are playing against the recommended starting event deck called Green Gully. Okay, this is the easiest that comes in the box, but it is still hard. It is hard enough that people complained enough for something and they have an easier version of Green Gully that is available free print and play or in a promo pack when you buy the game from Stonemaier Games to actually be on an easier level so the players have a better chance of winning. Wow. So you are expected to lose with this until you understand and get a hold on the game, but this is the gentlest way to play this game. And still I go online and I see people also like we did losing on the intro hand-holding tutorial scenario like this game is challenging yeah and it's, the problem is everyone comes in with the preconceived notions of i know how viticulture works i know how to get to 25 or more points easy peasy but then the way they've given a new board here with new spots and there's different things here and new mechanics for improving those spots with innovation tiles which we'll get into then there are the same components there's all the components are pulled from viticulture you need you need viticulture uh, essential edition or whatever um, to pull all the components from, but it does come with its own event decks and its own. Uh, there are some replacement cards that don't work in the co-op game. So they give you black border versions to replace. So that way you can leave them in the deck. And when you see them in the co-op version, you just draw a new card and discard them. But if you see them in a regular bit of culture, just ignore the black border, play them like normal. Um, so they replace a bunch of cards in there. They also have these little rubber hats uh, that go on workers. Uh, there's a whole bunch here so you can play up to whatever uh, six players. So that, that will define which workers play in the summer and which workers play in the winter. Um, and then you can train the workers, take their hats off, and then they could go in summer or winter. So that's kind of how the worker training stuff works. Um, but there is, uh, what goes in here again? Oh yeah, there is new mama and papas that are specific to this expansion. You can shuffle these in the base game. Um, but we're playing with just the ones from the world expansion because they have some different stuff on them that works with the co-op version. Bob Bell with the 499 Super Chat says, making sure you have enough wine. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Bob, for thank the support. You, yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and Brian uh, with the Super Chat says, making sure you have enough crack. <laughs> 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 
Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, and then there's like little tiles in here. Uh, these are more innovation tile stuff, but this is for the solo. So there are solo only components in here too. But I just want to point out, I like this little insert. I like the way it's kind of laying the cards on little trays um, nicely. So we have the one that's missing here. Uh, oh, the innovation tiles. All these innovation tiles are from this expansion. I think they go in here. Um, but it does come with even a little um, a little cover uh, to keep everything nice and tidy, which I love when games just throw that in. I, I, way better than just giving you a bunch of baggies and everything's in a cardboard insert you need to throw away. Um, and then, yeah, the rule books just fit on top all nice. And the board. It comes with its own board, which is neat. And it's a two-sided board. On the other side of the board, which I'm not going to flip right now because all our components are on it, there is a section for the orange cards. I think it's called the structure stuff we played with before on stream from the Tuscany expansion. So if you want to play with Tuscany stuff, you need to play on the other side of the board and it's a little different. Um, but you need to play on a new board. So you, you need all the meeples and the wooden components and the player boards and fields uh, and coins and wine or grape tokens or whatever. Um, you need all that from the base game. But uh, oh, and the card decks here. But uh, the board is new. The innovation tiles are new. The alert token is new. And this alert token is used to remind you when an event is affecting something on the board. Um, and yeah. So just letting you guys know that you do need the base game for it for sure. It's not a standalone expansion by any means. Um, but it does give you stuff to mix in with the base game and stuff too. So it gives you some extra stuff to spice up your, your game a bit, I think. Um, I just want to point that out. So that is done. Just showing off components and things. Let's throw that to the side. Okay. So, uh, for setup, I guess, yeah, it's probably best to just play and... Play explain as we play? Yeah, I think so. So it's still a Viticulture, so anyone who doesn't know Viticulture, uh, it's a worker placement game. You're usually playing competitive, you have your own little wine board, your little uh, vineyard board or whatever, your wine factory board over here, uh, where fields, where you're planting uh, grapes, you're planting vines, I guess. Um, which are the green cards, you're planting them, you're harvesting them into grapes, into your crush pads, and then from those crush pads, those grapes are being made into wines, and all that is done through you placing, you know, worker meeples, okay, you have worker meeples, and you're placing these on the board to do things like harvesting, planting, uh, visitor cards, playing visitor cards, so there is uh, summer and winter visitors that show up, and they are basically cards with powers on them, that allow you to kind of do multiple actions more efficiently, cheaper, you know, get some extra victory points, that kind of stuff. Um, and then there's order cards. These uh, show orders on them of wines you need to fulfill them to get victory points. And the victory point tracks along the bottom. But now there's this influence track using the uh, pink Canadian maple leaf, I guess, instead of the red. No, I'm just joking. I don't know what kind of leaf that is, but um, it is an influence track which we all can make increase through things on event cards usually. Or uh, there's a spot here um, to pay eight lira to gain an influence. So this is a community track that we need it to hit 10 to win. If this bottom pink track at the end of it doesn't reach 10, and all the players, little markers here, don't reach 25 at least, we don't win. We all lose, okay? And if you can have a player reach up to 30, and each player can do this once, if you can get up to 30 victory points, that's another way to earn one influence, but you can only do that once per player, okay? Um, and there is a new, like, turn order track that's a little different, uh, which is cooperative, so we totally discuss and decide who's going first and what bonuses we want to get. And there's a whole idea, like I said before, of trying to carry the weakest player. If they're having trouble, they're drawing, they're not getting the grapes they need, they have orders that don't match the wines they're, do they're making and stuff. You want to trade with them and help them. And how you trade, and it even reminds you on the bottom of the board, um, there's reminders here that at two to three players, in this version, you only use the left worker spot. So at a four to six player game, you use both worker spots, okay? So it's a little different than the base game, because I think it's like usually three spots. Mm -hmm. And it's like one and two use the first spot, three and four use the second, and five and six use the third. I think is how that one works. Uh, or maybe it's different. I don't remember. It's been a while. Um, but then here it reminds you, you can trade. So if you place a grande worker, which is the bigger worker who can go anywhere, even if the spot's taken, if you place your grande worker at a spot where your other player has placed a worker, uh, another player at the table, you can then trade with them. And the trade can go either way, it doesn't have to be equal, um, but you can trade any amount of lira, which is the money, for uh, any amount, I think, of uh, yeah, gra uh, grape cards or wine cards, whatever these green ones are. 
and wine order cards, any amount. And then you also can trade a single grape, either red or white of any value from your crush pad. And you could trade a grape for a grape. You can trade like money for a grape. You could trade a couple green cards for some money, or you could just give. But it's one thing for one thing pretty much, um, or a wine, single wine of any value. So this is how you work co-op where you need to try to like, if you're making like this amazing expensive red wine, but you don't have an order to fill with it, you need those points to be, you know, made. So you might give that wine to another player or that player might give you the, a wine order to help you out. So in Viticulture, that's one of my gripes of the game sometimes, you just draw not the grapes you need that work with, you know, your fields and that get you the wines that match your orders and the summer and winter visitors you draw don't help with what you're trying to do. Sometimes the cards can just screw you. And then you're wasting actions drawing to try to get stuff that you need to work or trying to make the junk you have work. And it's like part of the fun, part of the fun of the game. Um, some people find that fun, but sometimes it's annoying. Um, but there are expansions that help with that kind of stuff too. But in this game, that stuff still does happen. And the other players at the table have to help you get out of that problem. So if I'm not drawing the grapes I need and I need a white grape and plants in my vineyard to help me start filling orders, Mel, I might need to try to drop a grande worker on the spot she's at to try to trade with her, um, you know, to get the grape I need or whatever she might have in hand, you know, uh, or the, uh, sorry, the vine, vine cards, right? They're called? Yeah, the green called? are called vine cards. Yeah. They're called vine yeah. cards. I keep forgetting, but anyways. Um, and then also there's innovation tiles, which we'll talk about a little bit here. I guess that's a good way to, to talk about it. Oh, well, Mike says, worst part about Viticulture is you cannot make wine at all and still win. But they fix that, I think, with one of the expansions, the visitor expansions. I'm pretty sure one of them actually replaces and adds in cards that, that fo make you have to focus more on winemaking. I'm pretty sure, Mike, one of the little box expansions, they're pretty cheap, but it adds or corrects the visitor decks so that they, you can't just play them to gain points and win the game. You have they're all everything is like replaced to focus on winemaking. Mm -hmm. Somebody in the chat will know which one that is. I feel like it's the Moors, but I could be wrong, or the Moors or whatever. But I they, they did about that, that was a complaint with the base game, and they did fix that with one of those visitor deck expansions. So if you don't like that part about the game, go get that expansion, mix in those visitors, take out the ones they tell you to replace. Um, it's been a while, I don't remember exactly. I may have done that already in here. They, I think we're playing with that stuff in Probably. here. Probably. But, uh, yeah, so I don't think we have that ability. You can't do it in this game, though. You have to make wine in this game. I think so. I think so. You would not yeah. get enough points. It's not enough time. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Um, and here's the other thing. This has to all be done. So you think Viticulture, you're like, <clears throat> I easily just, like, sit at 24 points in, the, in Viticulture, and then I t and as the players are catching up, and I take a couple rounds to like build up some wines. And then in the last round, I do some craziness to make a bunch of wines, fill orders and, or whatever. And then boom, I shoot up 10 victory points <laughs> and I fly up to the end of the track and I crush everybody. In this, you can't really do that per se because you're also against a six round clock. You have six years for every player to reach 25 victory points. And it is tight yeah. on purpose. So this is a very tight game. It's meant to be play it, learn it, become efficient, deal with the randomness, work together as a team. It is not a just play it and you always win kind of game. And especially when you start changing the continents and playing with different continents, you'll get different uh, event cards and they can be random or you can play them in order where they'll give you new things to do. They'll throw in a rule that changes the game and you've got to take advantage of it and deal with what's thrown at you and try to all work together to try to get the points. Um, so yeah. And we'll, we're just going to play the tutorial kind of um, recommended first game thing, which shows off the new mechanics, which I think is great to stream with that to show it kind of talks about everything that's added to Viticulture World. So it'll, it'll kind of feature that stuff, it has a little story with it and stuff. Um, but let's talk, about, um, let's talk about the innovation stuff. So on the board, there is a lot of worker placement spots that match one for one with the base game. Okay, you plant vine cards in your fields. Okay, that's the thing. Right? Mm -hmm. But now they have ways of gaining innovation tiles, you know, gaining influence. Um, training the workers is different because it's the whole taking off the hat thing. Um, and then underneath the worker spots are kind of different. And you'll see little symbols here. Some of these give bonuses. If I play an innovation tile, and I'll show you an innovation tile, there's oval innovation tiles. There's ones with arrows that point to other bonuses. 
but playing innovation tiles, they're going to come out here in a little, little every year they cycle. So we're going to get two rectangles, which replace the base actions with something better. So for example, and they're, they're listed with letters. So this is uh, play, uh, pay to build one structure, right? Is space D, okay? Normal action from the base game, right? Boring. But now, if this shows up in your game and you want to build it, you can pay to build up to two structures at minus one each and gain two victory points if you build two. So you can, this would be here, two available every round, they cycle each year. So if you don't buy them that year, they're gone. And every time you play, they're randomly shuffled and they show up different. And you can pay for Lyra to gain one. Even that can be improved to some broken action. So if I pay to gain that, that replaces D. Now when people go there, it's improved. So the whole point of this game is to, whatever actions show up, to decide as a group, try to get those actions out here to turn into their broken versions, and then abuse them as much as you can to like get victory points and make sure you're building engines within the game of building engines, okay? So it's not just about building your own, this is an engine building worker placement game. So normally you build your little wine making engine to pump out wine orders and, and make victory points. But now we're gonna make sure the whole group is doing that and racing against the clock. And we have to improve our communal little village here and make it broken. So another thing you can do, for example, the oval version, so you might have these out here, okay? You can also, these are innovation tiles, they're just called the oval innovation tiles versus the rectangle innovation tiles. So like I said, you can, in a two to three player game, we can only use the left spot. There's no bonuses for placing your workers there anymore in this game. What these little symbols are, they're either giving the, all the players a bonus if you build a tile there. So if I improve this space, every player at the table will get a victory point, okay? If I do this one, every player at the table draws any two cards they want from any of the decks, okay? So if I build this here, now if any trained worker goes here, so a worker without a hat, your grande worker is a trained worker because they don't have a hat, the neutral worker is a trained worker, they don't have a hat. So when they're trained, that means they can go on any season because remember the seasons, the blue and yellow hats, tell me that this guy can only be placed on summer spaces on this half and the blue can only be placed on winter spaces on this half in the second half of every round, right? But if I take off the hat, boom, they're trained. They can go on any thing, even on the, the, the event cards. But now, if I put a trained worker on this space, and now you're not limited, you can put as many meeples on here as you want, but when I put a trained worker there, before or after taking the action, I can gain the bonus on the tile. Okay, so I could draw a, a green card before or after I train a worker, for example. And then some of them have arrows on them, a little line uh, to tell you uh, which direction to put it on the board. But I could put this one here, for example. And every time I put a worker here, I get to do the bonus to the right of it, okay? And yes, it gets a little silly. I, I, I'm not sure I like this part of it, it's kind of weird. Like why not just give me more bonuses? Um, but I, you can engine and puzzle build kind of like this going on. So if I put a uh, harvest one field here, I can harvest a field, but before or after I do that, I look to the right, then I look down, I could get this bonus. So this green bonus is now applicable to three spots. Okay, so they have these little arrows in here. You can try to even build an engine within the engine of bonuses and try to break the game even more. Okay, and there's a whole bunch of them. And you don't see them all in a single game, right? They come up in random order every time, and sometimes you can't afford them at the time you need them but you gotta work together as a group to try to decide like which bonuses you want and where. So some actions you're gonna know, I wanna literally jam three of my guys on that action in the last year, and I want you to put your e workers on there too. Mm -hmm. So you might just want this on there to break the restriction of only one meeple at a time, right? So this is, an, uh, this is the main thing that's added in Viticulture World, and this you cannot, there is even a, like a designer tip in the book do not sleep on these. If you don't take advantage of these innovation tiles and the rectangle ones to start breaking some of the actions in the game and make them make them super busted, okay? So this one, instead of playing one yellow card, you can make it play up to two, and you gain three lira if you play two cards. Some of these cards, are, some of these tiles are so good. Yeah, yeah, they're meant to be busted. Yeah. But you don't see them all, and some, some are way better early in the game, but you might play and they don't show up early. Yeah. So you gotta make it work without them, right? and take advantage of something else. So that's how it also makes every game different and a new puzzle to try to, to beat. Not to mention the scenario you're playing will be different too, based on what you pick or if you shuffle it up. So these are the innovation tiles, but this is the main, the main thing of the game that's added. 
but it's also like the main mechanic you need to master to win. If you don't do this properly, you will lose, is my understanding. Based on our playthrough, that's what I feel. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems for sure. Because um, you need to break these actions, otherwise you won't have enough, you only have four workers and a grande worker in the game, you do not gain extra workers in this, like in base viticulture. So you can't just go train, get a bunch of workers and start throwing them on all the actions. You are very locked down and only one person can take the action. So you need to use these tiles to start being able to throw workers on there and, and get your workers doing more efficient things. Yeah, especially some of the more common things you need to do, filling wines, harvesting fields, yep. things like that. Yep, yep. Especially later game when you need to do that more often. Yeah, and instead of the mentality of I want to go to a space and 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 do it first because I want to block my opponent, now you need to like discuss and like, man, I want to do this this turn, but I need you to do it too because if you don't hit 25 points, I lose also. So you might want to get an oval tile on a space to help the whole table be able to take that action so we're not getting um, like bottlenecked or clogged uh, with our workers trying to be efficient and fast. Because remember, we have six years, right? Which then is where the turn shuffle. order comes into play because yep. maybe you need to do, we both need to do something. So it's like, okay, but you're going first. So you do it first, you'll remove your workers. Then I'll be able to put it down later, things like that. So the whole thing is a lot of puzzling out your turn. Oh, is it the Rhine Valley that makes it the more, um, the more focus on wine building, that expansion? You know what? I should have just looked it up, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, one sec. Andy, hello. Good evening. I could find it here, I'm sure. Oh, visit from the Rhine Valley, maybe? Yes, yes, right here. Swap out your visitors with this set designed to focus on winemaking strategies. Which I think we've already done. Right? I, I don't know if we did, it makes this harder. Because in the book, it tells you, or online I read, was like, uh, don't put in Rhine Valley, otherwise it makes the co-op much harder. Well, I don't know if we did it. Whoopsie. Initially. No, I probably did. We may have, though. It's okay, though. I mean... Actually, like a challenge. you know what? What do you mean? Uh, the expansion. Oh, I see it. I see it. Okay, one sec. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Uh, I can see the expansion over on a shelf staring at us, um, but this is the expansion, it's just a tiny little box, um, and I feel stuff in here. No, maybe I don't have it mixed in. Mm. Maybe I don't have maybe it currently mixed in. Maybe those are the in. ones we took out. Yeah, they could be. They could be able to replace <laughs> versions. Ooh, how would we know? They don't have symbols on them to tell you they're from the expansion. I guess just read them and see if they're all do this and get points, or if they're wine-focused. I think these are the expansion wine-focused ones. He's already rage quitting. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. Andy, good evening. Good evening, Andy. Yeah, I don't think we're playing with the expansion stuff. But I could be wrong. I probably separated them out for a playthrough we did. But uh, this is all it is. It's just this little expansion giving you like a new deck to play with. So I probably kept the deck separate because we, you can just, I think, swap out the deck. I think that's all you must do. Um, so I left them separate. You have new visitors. This expansion for Viticulture provides you with a new set of visitor cards, which focus less on victory points, more on the wine business itself. These cards have their own unique backs. Oh. As they must be played without the visitor cards from Viticulture, Tuscany, and more of the visitors. Oh, so how do you know what backs you need? Is okay. There... Yeah, good question. Yeah, so... Oh, uh, you know what? This might tell me. Yeah, look, in, at, uh, look at the base game. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, this is base game. Okay, so yeah, we have base the base game. game. Okay. okay. So here's the backs of the cards. Oh, See? the small one on the back. The small icon on the back. That little house, I think. Well, no, this. no. It's the art. It's the art. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I just wish it said the words, like, expansion or something on it, so I knew. But you just have to remember the base game is, like, the yellow little vines there. So, so that's why I have them completely oh, separate. Oh, they actually match this art. Oh, that makes sense. Duh. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> we not too bright. 
We're getting there. It's all good. So I keep these separate in this box so that I know now that it's, I'm telling you, it's been years. But now I know that we just can swap these right now and make it more focused on wine. But the, the world's expansion says don't do this until you want more of a challenge. Because obviously we're racing for victory points. So that there's there's more cards obviously focused here on just victory points, not winemaking directly. So that probably makes the co-op easier. Or I guess the way they designed it to be played against. But it is fully compatible with this. It just says it will increase the difficulty. And Horn says, so the base game have boring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah, exactly. 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 Uh, okay. okay. We figured it out. That's funny. All right. We're not pros. Like I said, we're not viticulture pros, but I do love the freaking game. All right. The base game and the Tuscany stuff we've played with, I think is all awesome. I'm pretty sure if memory serves correct. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about my thoughts on this after our second playthrough today, which again, take with a grain of salt, of course. Um, but yeah, you guys can judge it yourselves watching how it plays here. Okay. Oh, just a quick thing. Andy says, I just started a game of Final Girl, but this popped up and now I don't know what to do. <laughs> Increase the difficulty of your Final Girl by doing both at the same time. <laughs> Andy, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. So, yes, we could draft these, but for setup sake, it just says, you know, give out a mama and a papa to each player, and this is going to determine your starting resources. In this cooperative version, you always start with four basic meeples and one grande. So that doesn't change as it does in the base game. So if you're playing with the other mamas and papas mixed in from the base game, which is totally fine, just ignore the meeple counts. Just always get the right amount of meeples, and there's a couple mamas and papas you should ignore if you draw them that just give money or whatever. Um, there's your papa. And there is my papa. Hmm. So just like uh, regular viticulture, except for you see here, if you're playing viticulture world, so that's how this can mix into the base game because it just reminds you here, like, obviously take four regular workers. Sorry, I probably should have it like this, I think, but I don't know. But anyways, um, and you always get a, a grande worker. So these are just the mama and papa decks specifically from this expansion. I didn't add in the base games. I didn't mix them in yet. But you can mix these in because it has reminders on them of just ignore this if you're playing the base game. Um, so yeah. So I obviously have my meeples already set up. I'm going to get a yellow, a blue, a purple. And I have choices here. I could take two residual or four money straight up. Now, what we should do is discuss... Hmm. We need definitely to buy innovation tiles right off the start. Yeah, I don't know if we, we can really set those quick. up probably. Oh, yeah. Let me do the setup. I'm just going to hold mine up really quick. So I can get, I will get two yellow and a green card. I'll get two money. And then here I can either take a cottage or four lira. If you want to just shuffle some of the little decks, yep. that's step one. Shuffle the small decks, green, yellow, purple, blue, and orange if you're using orange. Place the great temporary worker, done. Place all grape and wine tokens and lira next to the game board, general supply. Continent cards, which are this little event deck we'll go through in a second. Um, so that's also another major thing added to the game. I, I'm, I'm like saying the innovation is the main thing, but like this does is also a big change. Um, but you'll see it as it happens. So again, the continent cards, uh, like I showed, there's a whole bunch of continents in the game. They all behave different, is my understanding. And they have an increasing difficulty. Um, so you're meant to play this over and over again, increase the challenge, try different um, continents and battle against them to, you know, win, basically. Um, but this one we're playing with, you can play them randomly shuffled, where craziness just happens in whatever order, but they all are numbered. There's a one through six, where you can, with the first time you play a continent, I think you're supposed to play like one through six, and they have a progression to them. So we are gonna play one through six. This is the one that kind of teaches the new mechanics of the game uh, and shows them off. So we're gonna do this one, and but you could then play this again and shuffle it up. Then you don't know what cards are showing up when, and what spaces will be available and what changes to the rules they'll add each each year. But it's basically just a card that comes out and affects the current year. So we're only going to see six of them because there's only six years. Okay, so give this a quick little shuffle. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so those are gathered one through six. And I can just show here, who cares. Um, but yeah, so one is on the top and six is on the bottom, okay? And then they use like a little charter stone uh, art and stuff. This is supposedly like linked to a charter stone thing. Uh, we have not played Charterstone, I know. We're criminals. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, event deck. So we just did that. Oh, that's the event deck, sorry. Um, continent cards. We have uh, the event 
thing which will go on the board if uh, this affects any single space. Innovation tiles shuffled. Yep. Uh, hit shuffle. Just make some piles, whatever. We just pull randomly. Influence token on the track, and the track is set different. If you're playing four to six players, you start at zero. If you're playing two to three players, you start at three. If you're playing solo, you start at four. Okay. And then the year token, you use the great marker, which I think is the first player token from the base game. Uh, it's going to track the year. And then on our mat, we have our tokens. We have our workers. Uh, residual payment token is out here. That's like money you gain every year. Our victory point token is on the track at the start space. And red and blue cards we just drew. Oh yeah, you place innovation tiles out? That no. was in the setup. Sorry, just shuffled. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to see the starting innovation tiles and kind of make a strategy from that. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is harvest all of your fields. That's interesting. So instead of just one, we can harvest all of them. That's not bad. Give a tour. Gain two lira plus one per structure on your vineyard mat. Okay. That can give a good influx of money once you have buildings. So here's the thought process here. Remember, every year, these are going to clear and cycle. If we don't buy them and get them on the board, they're gone. Right. So if you want a certain strategy, um, I'll put this here too. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss it in a sec. But there are the steps here. One is reveal this card. Two is remove and fill every year, normally how it works. Then three is choose the order. So I'm going to read the little story and the setup and rules on this card. Okay. And, uh, but yes, you want to look at the innovation tiles and plan around it. Like, is somebody going to be able to get this on the board? And is somebody going to be able to start taking advantage of it? Are these good ones to have at the beginning? Are these ones we need to take advantage of the whole game to try to just earn victory points over and over again somehow? I mean, this one is definitely decent being able to put money on a place that we're going frequently. Yep. So, like, um, literally, what would the first place you go to is what you have to ask yourself. And can somebody go here and get this tile on the, you know, the first space that the next player or the other player or whatever, whoever at the table is going to start taking advantage right away? Because so you don't want to put this somewhere where it's like, oh, we'll take advantage of that in year four. Mm -hmm. No, you want to start hammering these things right away. You need these advantages and yeah, maximize them. Good. Okay. So each continent has a little story. So this is Green Gully, difficulty introductory. As your forever king, I welcome you to your beautiful continent of Green Gully. Over the next six years, I challenge you to win international recognition by earning both high reputation, which is having each player reach 25 victory points, and high influence in my royal court. Players collectively reach 10 on the influence track. My loyal citizens of Green Gully will guide you in your journey. I wish you a very good luck, my dear winemakers. And then it says this continent, which is a crossover with the game Charterstone. So they're trying to sell you on another game in their catalog here. Very, very clever. Uh, will guide you through your first game of Viticulture World. And featuring guest artist by Mr. Cuttington. Okay, so then they give you a setup card. So this is, this is the same, I believe, with all of the continents are the same. And some of them come with a ton of cards, new mechanics, and all this stuff. And they'll have different rules that change up this game. We're just playing the introductory one, so it's just focused on the basic new mechanics. But it supposedly gets spicy and changes things up and makes you, like, you know, have to think outside the box and, and, and whatnot. And we can maybe look at some of those later. Um, but we've not played them, just so you know. All right. Um, because, let's see, on each event card, a Green Gully citizen will introduce a new system or mechanic of Viticulture World. Each event card has an action that follows the game's worker placement rules. As with the board game, the rightmost action space can only be used in a four to six player game. Workers may be placed on these action spaces in summer or winter. Because these actions are not on the board, grande workers act as regular workers on these event cards. Ooh. Oh, okay. We may have played that wrong by throwing a grande worker when the, the spot was full. We may have. Whoops. Okay, now we know. Uh, find rectangular innovation tile P, which we already did, pulled that out, and place it beside the board. So this is the one that is related to buying influence. So it reduces the cost from 8 lira to 6. And you get to build one structure for free. A little busted. Like I said, these tiles, these innovation tiles are broken. And you need to use them to take advantage of the game. The game is balanced around you abusing these things. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, because these actions, uh, we already talked about that. 
uh, and then place it next to the game board. This will come in handy when the fourth event card is revealed. So they're not allowing us to find this randomly in a game, which normally it would be shuffled in and we find it randomly or not find it at all. Yeah. But in this game, they're being kind of nice. They're going to throw it at us in the fourth year. Okay. So year four, five, and six, we could possibly have that and be taking advantage of it, which we probably should. So we need to plan for buying that and spending six on that. Okay. So okay. to buy some influence. Okay. So that's the cards that get us started. You can just, these are off to the side. Good to go. Okay, um, and then we start with step one here. Innovation. Innovation is the key if you want to succeed. Aim to innovate at least once each year. Okay, this is a general tip for the game. I believe this is in the rule book, and I was reading some tips online um, about the game just to understand like how it was different. Um, aim to innovate at least once each year, but beware that money is tight in Viticulture World, and it's also the primary method of gaining influence. Oval tiles permanently upgrade action spaces and allow any number of workers to be placed on an upgraded action space. Each trained worker, or a worker without a hat, uh, placed on an oval tile gains the bonus printed on the tile. As a gift, I will help you innovate more easily this year. So, this gives you an additional space, so we're playing a two-player game. So we can use the left space to drop one worker there. So you can pay two lira to gain one oval innovation tile. So we probably want to take advantage of this because you should... For the first few years at least, innovate one to two tiles on the board if you can. Mm -hmm. So that's just going to sit up here in this spot. And again, this could be shuffled. You could be playing a different continent and this could be all random and you're seeing different things and you decide to take advantage of it or, or not. And that's kind of how it drives each playthrough and to be different and stuff too. Um, then we set up the innovation tiles are here. But in the future years, we'll clear out any that are left. So you have that year to get them or they're gone. Okay. You got to make choices, pass on them, build them, whatever. And then we're going to choose an available spring bonus here. Um, and we will decide which order we're going in. If you go here, you get the neutral worker, but you can gain a green card, a victory point, a blue card, a yellow card, uh, two Lyra or a purple card. And then when you switch seasons, you know, so let's say we're here like this. Uh, when you switch seasons, you just slide them in and you can take any one of the three fall bonuses of two Lyra. You can age any color grape, a red or a white and then uh, one space, and then you can um, gain any card you want, which is the gray. Gray is just any card you want. Okay. Oh yeah, there's also this space, well you can see it on the screen. This is new, I believe. So like a good worker placement game, there's a place to go to get rid of junk you have to buy stuff you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can pay one to gain one. So you can pay a victory point to get a grape, a one point grape of a color you need. You can play three lira to get two new cards. You could toss two cards to get two new cards of any color. So if you're holding a couple wine orders early in the game and you're like, I'm never going to get these done. These are a waste. I need to get some vines in my field. You can throw them away and grab vines or summer visitors or something. Um, but that's also something new that I just remembered. Okay. So now we'll have to pick. Oh, yeah. Now that we have all the sorry. information. Yes, oh, that's yes. okay. Uh, sorry, I didn't finish this. So I need uh, two lira. But... Should I take four more Lyra to have six? It is four to gain an innovation tile. So I would need like eight to be able to do it twice if we want to hammer out two of those. But One is only going to give us these ones. Oh, sorry. We have a way to get it here. Yeah, that's the oval. Yeah, but this is the cool part. So you pay two to go there. We get this out, put it on the action, even this action, which we know we're going to do a few times. Mm -hmm. This can help give us money, and you can take the bonus before or after doing the action. Yes, yeah, so you'd have more money to so, pay. So you, you could, I think, go here with three money, grab this fourth money, and then boom, buy an innovation tile for cheaper, kind of. But to put an innovation tile on one of these ones with the red, we have oh, to pay. Oh, there's two extra costs to it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Because they thought about that. So there is a red, if there's a red ring around this, it's not a player bonus. It's actually a cost to put the oval tile there. Yeah. If it has the little player symbols underneath it, that gives everyone the bonus. So the plant one costs two extra money to put there. This will give everyone at the table a white or red grape of value too, for example. But if we're going to be training workers, we could go here and then that gives us cards. You can Every player will get to draw two cards. Mm -hmm. So, I, oh, oh yeah, we'll draw our cards too. Yeah, I get a yellow, a blue, and a purple. Two yellow. But it's just this choice here, this choice here of money or residual. I'm going to get two, if you can pass me two lira for sure. And then my, my choice is either four more lira or a cottage. Now, in fall, we don't get to draw 
either a summer or winter card normally anymore, we get one of these bonuses. But if you have the cottage, you do get to draw one. So I just don't know if having that ability to draw a card. Summer and winter cards lead to victory points yeah, usually so I'm thinking and that extra actions. If stuff. you. But if we're going the card strategy, then we want to make these playing cards. Uh, we want to make those spots better so we can go to them multiple times to be playing cards. You know, and if we're dry, or like one player focus on the cards or something, I don't know. But then we might not see the better actions of those card spaces. Because right now we have giving tours. Yeah, so then also if I take the cottage now, giving the tour will give me more money. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if I focus more on... Tasting room, right? Is yeah. the tour, and it gives you victory points if right. you have a, a wine in your cellar. And then if you go there and you have more buildings, you'll get more money, which is a good way if we need to spend eight or eventually six to buy influence also i want to note to those watching live in the chat uh if you've played this before or you just played viticulture in general and you have any suggestions or questions and want to play along please throw them at us we're not pros with this we're just gonna have fun experiencing the game and showing it off but if you have any suggestions and you want to see how it plays out or have anything recommended throw them out there like no idea is a bad idea okay yes some are i just won't say that but uh, just kidding. Um, but yeah, we're not pros. We're just going to go through it and have some fun. So we'll talk about what we got. But like, if you want to play along, throw in your suggestions in the chat. If you're watching later, turn on the chat archive. You can see what people are saying. Um, but yeah, if you don't know Viticulture at all, just watch. We'll show you how it works. It'll make more sense. And later you can get involved if you feel comfortable. Um, so I drew a wine order card right from the beginning. Oh, also there's a hand limit in this game of five instead of, I think, seven that the base game has. So cards are tighter. You can't just hold forever uh, for a lot of cards. So this is a wine order card. So I would need a wine of at least four, three, and two, three separate wines, all white, of at least those values to fulfill this order for four victory points and one plus one on my residual values of money I'm making at the end of the year. So that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Will I draw white grape cards? Who knows? If I don't and Mel does, maybe Mel needs to trade with me or I need to trade this to her. or Maybe I just need to go here and ditch this card to try to draw something different, you know? Yeah. I also drew the promoter, which I could discard a grape or a wine to gain one victory point and one residual. Okay, so that's something I want to probably do earlier. And then the planner. So this is one of the new cards. It literally is the exact same card. It comes from Viticulture World. But because it has the black border, and this is perfect that this happened here. This just tells me if I'm playing regular Viticulture or Tuscany or whatever expansions mixed in, this card is normal, nothing's wrong with it, okay? But if I'm playing co-op, this card does not work in co-op. So what I'm supposed to do is discard it. And what this does is it's genius. I love games that do this stuff like this and think about setup and tear down and, and keeping your game organized. I don't ever need to take that card out of the deck. I just know when I'm playing co-op to ignore that card and discard it and draw something new. But if I'm playing regular bit of culture, it's just a normal card. I don't need to configure my decks differently based on what style of game I'm playing, which is, I, I love that idea. So I got the buyer to replace that card instead, where it's pay two lira to place a one value, either red or white line on your crush pad, or discard one red or white grape, sorry, grape, I should say, grape to gain two lira and a victory point. So that's funny. I can pay to get a grape in there quick, and then use mm -hmm. my promoter to get rid of it to gain a victory point and residual. Yeah. Kind of weird. That's two full actions. Obviously, uh, you know, it's like, is that the right way I want to spend my workers? And in only six years I have to do that, is it going to work out good for me doing it that way? I don't know. Obviously, if one of those spots had a bonus, it would be better. These are my cards that I got. And I got uh, Marlow, which needs the irrigation, uh, which I don't have. And it's going to give me three red. And then these are Mel's summer cards she got, the Artisan and the Negotiator. Discard one grape of uh, either color to gain one residual, or discard one wine to gain two residual value. Artisan, choose one, gain three lira, build a structure at uh, a one lira discount, or plant up to two green cards. Yeah, that's a good one, because it's versatile, yeah, yeah. and it's going to give me some money before And planting happens. early, you want to do that and, and get it going? And doing it on another action, right? So putting it on the play a card, but then being able to do something else. I love those kind of actions. Mm -hmm. so, we'll see. So back to the issue at hand. What is your choice? Gaining a cottage. Uh, cottage or four money? And I 
I'm kind of leaning towards the cottage, but... Uh, I think, yeah, maybe. Only if you're also okay with that. But we need okay to buy an innovation. That... Yeah, so, so, so I could... I that could... costs four money. I could buy that and one. And two money. So, like, I would get, like, two in play. So maybe we do do this one and this one, for example. Yeah, and I can do this one with the two money that I have. Yeah, so, okay, I'll just take money. Okay, and I'll do a cottage. And we'll try this strategy and see what happens. So I have a cottage. So I have six lira. Six lira. Give me those mamas and the papas. And I will my horrible accents. My money. Yeah, I'll just put my money here. It's fine. All right. Hans says go cottage. Yeah, that's what I was really leaning towards. <laughs> Mike says I do irrigation for a living, Mel. I got you. Oh, sweet. Okay. Right. Thanks, so, Mike. <laughs> so we're kind of cheating at the game. We have some experts with us. Uh, so, yeah. Don't try this at home. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Yeah, I, I'm thinking cottage just for the card. Also remember selling one of our fields is probably good. Based on our playthrough yesterday, we never needed our third field, but that seven money will be really helpful when we need to buy influence uh, influence or innovation tiles, which is just a new way to blow more money in the game, right? Yeah, so now talking about this, mm -hmm. I can take the money. I don't know if you're interested in a worker like or vice versa, but I do think having the extra worker from the beginning is good. Yep. So if you don't want him, I can take the worker or well, I'll take the money. I, 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 we got to think of who needs to go first. Yeah. I and agree. also that person who goes first should be the one dropping innovation tile and the second player might be the one to start taking advantage of it right away. But you have the tasting room would be really cool to have for victory points if we're going to do this tour thing. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. But also like going here, like replacing this one, for example, like we, none of us really have green cards. Like you have one, but like maybe dropping this here, we, we each get a two value wine or a grape for free. Which is good, especially knowing you need some white. But if we also need to train our workers this year, like throwing uh, uh, the tile over there so we can drop whatever. I was kind of thinking about that one or which other one. If we are planning on buying or selling a field, but that's only going to give us like. Oh, a, yeah. But we'll only do that a, like once. But it gives us a victory point. So I don't know if we wait on that one. Hmm. I probably. I don't know. I know. It's the rectangle. I think we need to focus on the rectangle ones and start busting those right now. Yeah. So even so, like both of these might be possible, but it is giving us one oval. So we might as well do it. I can do. Now there is a play where I take the two coins here whether you go first or i go first and then i can in the summer i could gain give a tour to gain additional money and then put my grande worker here after you've done this one so we do this twice get two of these and i do one of these which i'd probably go for the money but are we if we're selling a field do we care about harvesting all our fields in one shot i don't necessarily like it is harvesting two at a time so that's dropping in like Possibly four grapes. Yeah. So we like definitely will speed things up, and then we definitely focus on like making tons of wines and filling orders is our victory point path. Yeah. Jeez, so much to think about. Like this is really neat. But if you go first, uh, really you neat. put this down, and then I give a tour, then I can afford a second. I can afford even weather. But I, I don't want to buy this if we're only going to use this like once in the whole game. You know, because that's like a big mistake. Well, I think it just can be like a waste of money if we need it later. Yeah, but it's also like act, you're also spending a worker and money to get that in. If you're not making the money back from it, then like, why did we do it? Mm -hmm. And could that worker be spent to do other things? I don't know. But I say let's try it. Like, we're just going to go through a playthrough here. If we don't win, we don't win. It's like, as long as we show off kind of the flow of it, that's the point, right? Yeah, as long as we get close. I, I want to win. Don't get me wrong. I want to crush this freaking game after it beat us yesterday. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so I will just go here and take the extra worker, I guess. Okay, and I'll take two lira, if you will. A two lira. Okay, so I'm first. How do we do this? Probably should just go here to get the over tile wherever you're going to go. Well, I was gonna. I was actually thinking about putting the oval tile. Makes most sense, probably on train a worker. It'll give us the influx of two cards right now, and it'll make training a worker cheaper, making it easier for us to... Are you going to train a worker soon? Um, 
depending on the two cards. Or that you're going to go here and build that first, or I should go there and build that first. Like, if we're not training worker, this can be done near the end of the round, or end of uh, any time of the year, actually. So if it's going in a winter space, I don't care about this right now. I care about getting the other one. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. I'll go here. Okay. I'm going to pay four for Lyra to gain this give a tour innovation tile. I think so. Which goes on E. So instead of just giving a tour to gain two Lyra, now e, space E gives a tour. You gain two Lyra plus one per structure on your vineyard mat. So we have to build structures. Yeah, but like also once this comes out, then we can but build structures. But that's your four. Free. Yeah, no. But then are you but giving tours at the end of the six. game? If this we doesn't need get money. victory points. I don't know if this is the right play. I don't have any structures, so this literally does nothing different for me. For me right now, it gives me one. Oh, it does additional. give you one extra. But I just spent four. Like, we got to think as a full... So but like you, you said about harvesting fields, I don't think... Okay. I don't know. It's fine. We just better take advantage of this. If we oh, don't, well. that was a big waste of money. Because remember, even though we have separate money, separate fields and all that, remember, the victory points, if we don't both hit 25 and 10 influence together, we'll all lose. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I'm ingesting tons of money in, and nobody is getting an advantage of it back out, then, like, I'm now behind. Yep, no, I know. And if I don't reach 25, no matter if you do, we lose. So it's just, that's the thing. So anyways, I'll grab it. I don't think these are the best two tiles to see at the beginning, but, oh well. Who knows? Okay, um, so I did that. And, uh, yeah, I'm done. Okay. So then, maybe we wait on this one till winter, like you said. I don't know. I think I do. Any worker can go on there too. Yeah. So if we're not doing many winter stuff here. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to. But also, to... if you want cards right now, you know. Like, but you already have yellows, so it's, you're good here. Well, but I think if you I'm want a couple green a cards. Or... I think I'm going to go here to play a yellow card. And I think I'm going to play the artisan, which is. Uh... Choose one. After gain three lira, build a structure for one less. Mm -hmm. Or oh sorry, discount uh, or, or plan, plan up, up to two greens. I think I just want to build a structure at minus one discount, building the irrigation for two. For two, nice. Okay, and then I'll be able to plant my Marlowe, which three red. That will hopefully... help this get you more money. Yeah, which is great. Which I think I will. Okay. All right. Then... So I have a little summer guy. What should I do with this guy? What shall I do? I have no green cards. I literally... Oh, I could buy or sell a field. You get that out of the way right now. Mm -hmm. mm, but like this, like you're saying, it's like... I'm going to try this. I'm going to go here. I'm going to spend two. And I'm going to place the oval tile. Hmm. Yeah, let's throw the money on the train. So we each get two cards right now. Two cards right now. Okay. Two cards right now. I am going to take an order. Oh my gosh, a nine champagne. What the heck? And I'm going to take a winter. Oh, I can't use that one. Start and replace. <sighs> I think I just take two greens. Okay, cool. so I got a, a one red grape and, and a vine or whatever, and a three red. Oh, where's the whites? Where's the whites? Yeah. <laughs> Rolling me. My card, the winter card says, make up to two wines of value four or greater, even if you haven't upgraded your cellar. Ooh. Ooh, that's not bad. Okay. Okay. That was you? Mm-hmm. So now me. I think I'm going to give a tour. So then I can do this again. I gain this. Oh, 
or I'm going to train remember, we in the only, winter. Remember, we only get the bonus on this, remember, if we go there with a trained worker already. You can train the worker you put there, oh, but... So then, okay, so... I, I don't know if it works that way. Like, if I put this guy here and train him, can I gain the bonus after because he's already trained? I, I don't know. I don't know. So, but I'm not sure. Know. But yeah, I, that's the one I don't know. <laughs> but we could just train another one. It's fine. Go there with your trained worker already. All right, I'm going to give a tour so we can have some money for the winter, I think. And I'm going to gain two, plus I have two buildings, so four total. So then maybe I don't worry about these two, and I just train workers in the winter. I'm going to buy or sell one unplanted field. I'm going to sell this one for seven lira. Okay. I don't know. I'm going to use my grande worker to plant. And I now have the irrigation system, so we're good. I think I'm actually going to use my... Possibly take the other Merlot from you. Okay, we're going to place that in there. Then you don't have to worry about the irrigation. True. If it's not part of what you're doing. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I will pass. I'm going to go fall and pass. So I'll go push my little guy here in the center. And... Hmm. I feel like I'll just... Uh, I think I'm going to take a winter card. Got the designer. Build one structure at its regular cost. Then if you have at least six structures, gain two victory points. Oh, that's weak. And... Okay. And then I will pass to fall and I will take... Hmm. I will take two coin. Sorry for reaching. And then I do have a cottage, so I will choose to pick a winter card. The judge. Draw two yellow cards, uh, summer cards, or discard one wine of value four or more to gain three victory points. Wow. That might not be bad. Yeah, that's cool. Especially if I have a wine I can't use. Okay. So now, back to you in the fall, in the winter. Man. I guess I'm going... Oh, I know what to do. I'm going to go... Here, I think, with my grande guy. And I'll pay. So he's trained. So I could gain the money. And then I spend uh, four to train one of these winter guys. And he gets to take his hat off. And now he can work any time of the year. And he gets placement bonuses on these oval tiles now. The hand limit is five. But. Only you discard down to five at the end of the year. Yes. Only at the end of the year, uh, instead of the normal seven. So at the end of the year, you'll see it shortly. When one, when we, one of us is finished in the winter, we'll retrieve all our workers, so that could free up spaces for the, the players that are still playing. You age grapes and wines. You discard down to five cards. You collect your residual payments. And then you advance this year marker. And that's the year-end stuff. Okay, my turn. I am going to harvest. Like, like, I was hoping to draw a winter card that I could actually go here and play, but of course, this is like stupid. I mean, I can build a structure with it, but I can it's. I trade with you possibly on my turn because I'm going to go to your grande worker. Uh, I think you have to place the grande worker to do the trade. Oh. I think that's how it's oh, worded. I it is. Sorry, you're probably right. Let's find out. But I could have. Uh, oh, no, I couldn't have. I didn't have my gray guy. I could have, we could have done that in a different order. 
Yeah, maybe, but I didn't have another. Oh, uh, you're right. Whenever a player places their grande worker on yeah. an action. So you yeah. have to be placing your grande worker to do a trade, which we okay. probably should have done better there, of course. But again, we're noobs, so. That's okay. It's fine. Okay, my turn. Uh, no, if you can just, I'm harvesting a field, if you can just pass me a bead. So I'm just going to get a three red. Hmm. I don't need any red, really. I guess to make champagne, I need some reds. So. Oh, also in this, you can sell wine to gain the lira equal to the wine's value. So that's another way to gain like money from wines instead of victory points so that you can use to buy like influence and, and things. I don't have any of that stuff. I'm definitely playing very bad here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess I can just go to train another worker. Um, maybe another winter guy. So this will cost. I'll gain one, and then it'll cost four. The train. I think maybe my other winter guy just train. If we do a summer. If you do a summer, then you have more. Uh -huh. I know, but early in the game, I need to do more summer stuff anyway, and the winter stuff's not so important until later in the game. Mm -hmm. Um. I think I'll just train a summer. I'll train this guy. Okay. I will go to also train. I don't get the bonus because he's not trained, but I will spend four. And I will train. I'm actually going to train my one of my summers. Okay. Now this winter guy, I don't really have anything I can do, so I'm just gonna put him in this crappy summer and winter spot to gain one money. That feels very bad, but you don't have to play oh, any I, cards I, or draw cards. I could draw purple, and then you'll just discard ones. But you don't the, want. yeah, but then I'll lose two. So instead of like using them better here as like throwing them to gain something, I'm just yeah. literally losing cards. But I am kind of desperate actually. Maybe that's better. So yeah, let me just draw a purple card. Oh, oh my, my god, it's the opposite of what you have. Wow. Had. But that might be doable for me, potentially. Maybe. Wow. I might just toss both those, but they are four victory points each, but you need like three wines, so... Yeah, and a medium seller. That's going to take forever. Yeah, a medium seller too, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if I could... Yeah, yeah. I'll probably toss this guy, because I don't, I don't think you're going to build six structures. Unless we have the one here that helped us with the structures right yeah, away. Yeah, which I mean... That still could show that up. That still could show up. Okay, I guess it's my turn first. Uh, you just place the guy. So my year end is going to happen, so I'm going to retrieve all my workers. Age your grapes Age and wines. Age my grapes and wines, so my three goes to a four. Uh, discard down, I only have four, so I'm good. Collect residuals, you have, have zero. Any. And advance the year marker, but only when it's the last player doing it. All right. Now I'm going to do it. Retrieve. Uh, age, grapes, and wines. I have none because I suck. And then discard down to five cards. I don't know. Do I get rid of these wine orders? Like, is this ridiculous to hold on to? Or is this build a structure at regular cost and having strict structures or two victory points? I think that one's ridiculous. Okay, I'll just get rid of that. In this version. And then, well, and how we've been set up. But then we could see the tile next, and it's like, I damn know. it. Um, I like these two, I think. I'm going to get rid of one of these. Which one do you think? I would say with the way it's looking the white. white. Okay, discard down to five. We advance the year marker, and we go to the next event. Spring. Seasonal workers. Each oval tile allows any number of workers to be placed on its action space. However, only a trained worker may gain the bonus shown on the oval tile. Upgrading a worker from seasonal to trained also gives the flexibility to place the worker in either of the two worker placement seasons. As a gift, I will help you train workers. Whoops. <laughs> um, okay, so this one person can go here, pay three lira to train up to two workers. Oh, that's so good. So I can train my last two. So it kind of sucks that we put this here. 
I know it gave us cards, but mm -hmm. it's like that's like probably the last turn we'll ever use that bonus if well, we do I this think, right now. But only know? one person can go there, so the other person will still have to oh, go. Oh yeah, so true, I think true, it's true. Still... Yep, true. Never mind. Yeah. Okay, so then we need to clear these out and draw new ones. Okay. Pay three lira per tile to gain up to two innovation tiles. So that oh, is H. That's, that's right good. here. That's the one about gaining innovation tiles. Make up to three wines and age one of them twice. So that replaces the regular uh, space M, which is just make up to two wines. That's how you get more of the expensive wines. Uh, we got some arrows. And we got a draw a winter card. Okay. Hmm. So who should go and where and do what? Okay, you want to go here, right? You want to do that, train your Probably. Other two workers. That's fine. I don't know. You That's can. Fine. No, no, know. no. That's fine. I don't have the money for it yet. But you could go here. Oh yeah, true. I want to do this. I need to get grapes planted, man. Which I have. I'm gonna do this. <sighs> oh yeah, that's not a bad one actually. But. I'm gonna do it and then put it so we have to wait till next time. I gotta get two, but make up to three wines and eight. that's good too. That is good too. Maybe, maybe I take the extra worker this time. <laughs> Ar Ar Archeon, however you say that, says, "Hey Rob, are you gonna play Skyrim?" <laughs> and Yogi answers, not in 2022. <laughs> Yogi <Yeah>. is correct. <laughs> yes, we will play Skyrim eventually. N not today, though. But yes, <laughs> at some point, Mel's probably going to paint the character miniatures in it, and then we'll play it. Mm -hmm. So probably in a couple weeks or so, I would yeah. say. We'll see. We will see. But yes, eventually I'll probably play it on the channel. Unless we play it off the channel, learning it, and it's like really trash, and I don't even want to touch it anymore, I will not stream it if it's just a bad time. But uh, if it's decent, uh, we'll play it and we'll look at it. Yeah, I'm curious. But yeah, we'll see. Hmm. I'm thinking about the extra worker unless that you think you need. I'll do this one to gain this tile. I would love to gain that if I can. Maybe I can... Maybe I could give a tour, which then would give me enough money to do this a second time. To gain both of these. Make up the three wine each. I mean, I don't know if we're even going to need that. I know. I know. Making two wines usually might be enough. I'd like to go worker if you're fine with that. But do whatever you want. I, I this, like. I still don't have my head wrapped around this. I stared the six year track, and I'm like, it stresses me out, man. I think just this alone makes me like. I don't know if it, it's like ruining it for me a little bit, but like, I hate this feeling of like we're already in year two. And I don't have all this stuff done. Oh my god. But in the regular viticulture, okay. I, I just play a little slower or do something else if things aren't working out. And maybe I can catch up and get victory points later. And maybe we need to play 12 turns of the game because we're all kind of slow and things aren't working out, you know? Mm -hmm. You play as fast as the other players are playing. Yeah. But in this, I have this stupid grape token haunting me over here. And I feel like we're not getting the right things showing up and right cards to line up with the tiles. So like I'm not sure if sometimes just how things come up, if it's like impossible to win based on the amount of worker actions you have in a whole the whole game, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, uh, but I think I have vine cards, but I don't have the things to build them or plant them all, but I should plant something. Maybe I just go for a spring card, but then I would go after you. Does that matter? Maybe I just go for the two money. Yeah, I'll just do two money because I don't know any better. Let's just do that. All right, so you're first. A four. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to gain this one. So then we'll next time we'll only have to pay three per tile to gain up to two. Okay, so if I have the money, I could go there with a grande worker, but I want to go there with like six money would be the best. Hmm. Mm. But then I don't know if I want three, uh, two of these anyway. I know. It might be better for you to do this. Yeah. You spend your three and train all your workers, and you have flexibility. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
But do I need to train like oh yeah, I guess they get the placement bonus too, right? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope it will escalate. I know, I know it does sometimes that it's like so slow to get points. And then the last couple of years, all of a sudden you're like starting to fly. I know that's how the game works. I do. But it's like it feels for the first few years, man, it's so stressful, I feel. But again, we're not pros uh, uh, with it for sure. This obviously is kind of part of the replayability of it is like if you're okay getting your butt kicked a few times and learning to work together and understanding how this game changes the viticulture formula, there is the replayability there. And then like once you master this um, continent deck, there's like uh, six or more or whatever of them left in the box that change things up that you can play multiple times. I feel like... Maybe I'll just do the summer one. A two to place a grape in your crush pad. Or I just try to do the classic old plant. Get this one red in. So I can start doing something. I, I don't know. Doing the classic harvesting and making wines. I don't know. Would I care? Damn. I don't know. Okay, I'm done that. I'm gonna give it to you. Yeah, you can do this if you want. I gotta give a tour, I think, for some money first. Oh yeah, I forgot about that part. So let's go here. I gain two, three, four, please. Okay, go ahead. Hmm. Hmm. Need some white grapes. Yeah, maybe that tour thing, but I only get two because I don't have buildings. Hmm. Hmm. But if you want to trade with me at all. Yeah, I could go there with my grande you know, to start a trade. You draw a card. This one you can discard one wine grape. Sorry, but you don't have that. The champagne one is just going to, I don't know. I'm not doing that, I don't think. Make up to two wines value four or greater even if you don't have an upgraded seller this is good for you if you don't upgrade i think i'm gonna upgrade my seller shortly so what are you thinking I, I go there so you can like take this merlot i could take the merlot from you yeah i could also even if you wanted i could take the wine well i think it's only like you take uh oh, any yeah. amount of green cards or any amount of oh, yeah, purple right. cards like you can't take a mix it's not like the gray like this one yeah you're right yeah, I could take the Merlot to get two wines going. But I might, I could go here to get rid of like two of these cards that are being annoying. That, or you do that first. And then that gains me like maybe two grapes to get going. Yeah, you or, do that. Or some money. You do that because that's probably better. I don't know. Is it though? All right. So I am going to get rid of these two. I don't know if this is the right way to do it. Or do I just do the money? Or do I just go to you and you get these? Yeah, but like you said, that's two actions, right? Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, so I think you just do what you were doing, it's fine. You can find white grapes, that would be good. Uh... I will just you know white one. Okay, I don't know. I mean, okay. Do you need to train, or you said I can go? No, go ahead. Whatever. Okay, so I'll spend three if you can give me one back. Oh, sorry. And I will train two of my workers. I'll train a winter, and I'll train summer. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know.
could go here and just for three get like this one out on something we'll be doing but i can't do it on like harvesting i can do it like on um this one i don't know there still might be lots of planting what about this um, one oh even just to get you a grape or both of us grapes yeah yeah okay sure i'm gonna go here with the grande worker so we can trade but i'm going to first uh pay three and that will allow or do i do this one make up to three wines and age one of them twice like i like that one but i just don't know how many yeah. at this point we're having trouble with the grapes so i don't know how much wine we're making okay so let me throw this one up here then um and then we each get a grape uh value two whichever kind you want I'm going to take a red value, too, I think. I'll take a white. All right. Okay, I think I'm going to... Yeah, I might just go the card route. If I'm not doing the wine stuff, we'll see. I don't know if it's too late to decide, but... Or too early, even. Me. I think I'm passing... Yeah, I think I'm going to pass. Okay, do your fall bonus so maneuver thing in. I will do... So you can take any card of any type, age a grape, uh, one space, any color, or gain two lira. I will gain a... Yes, Bob, I agree. Bob says I'm seeing far too much contemplation, not enough wine drinking. I agree. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is like... Yeah, this... Uh oh. You can't drink from an empty glass. Whoa, hold on. <laughs> All right, Mel's glass is empty. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Bob. Alrighty, we're back. Thank you for the reminder, Bob. Yes. <laughs> Yogi says, if you drink all the wine, then you've got nothing to sell the visitors. Yeah. This is true. That is true. 
Okay, sorry, so I'm just making my decision here. I will draw a probably a summer card with my cottage. I think I'm just going to go for I can draw any card, I will draw an order. Okay, this is doable. More realistic one. This is doable. I just need a large It's only three. You need to find one that gives you twenty five points. Yeah, but every point is a point, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Happy to help promote the theme. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, and then my cottage, I'm going to draw. I'm just going to draw summer, I think. Homesteader. Oh, okay. I want to build my... Uh, build a structure at three discount or plan up to two uh, vines. You may lose one victory point to do both. No, I just want to build a larger cellar. So. I don't have to discard yet, so I guess... Yeah, so just play well as winter cards if you can. I can, but it'll let me draw two more cards. Okay. But I guess knowledge. Um, hmm. What was I doing? I think I'm going to play this at, in the winter, so I'll save this guy for this card. Exactly. Then this one. <laughs> Tough decisions. Better drink more wine about it. <laughs> yep. Think on it a little bit. <laughs> Uh, what else do I want to do? Harvesting a field would happen then, but I don't necessarily need to. I think I'll go to this one. Oh, with a trained worker, so I can draw green and a blue. Yay! Nice. Let's see what we got. We got the bottler and the see-through card. I should not <laughs> put green cards on there. Oh, oh you need the, the trellis. trellis. I need a trellis. But it is a white. Well, this is only two to build, but that's a, also a worker to build. Make up to three wines. Gain one victory point for each type of wine you make. Oh. That's something. That's something. That's something, yeah. All right. You've already passed. I have. I will pass for fall. Uh, hmm. I think. Think. Just while you're thinking, I'll get a money. I'm gonna get two money. Bugs, I missed the first few minutes. Did you describe what kind of wines you were drinking? They are just um like, like Zinfandels. Just like cheap. Yeah, like just cheap, yeah. like fruity wines. I don't usually drink wine, so I I don't care about any expensive wines or anything. But as I'm basically drinking alcohol Kool Aid. I think. Yeah, right yeah that's exactly how we joke about it and and call them like Kool Aid wines because they're like fruity and probably a lot of sugar in them. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Uh, once a year I drink it, so I think we're okay. Mm -hmm. we're good. Yeah. But it's afternoon, so we're like, we don't need to drink, like, good wine. Okay. Uh, so, so we're now in winter. Two? Yeah, I took right. two money. So now me, me, me. Okay. I am going to harvest. Don't need to train anymore. What am I doing with my people here? Harvest, make, and I cannot fill, unfortunately, that's too bad. So then let's actually just play. Did you miss something? Oh, you need to play? No, oh yeah, you do, you do. No, 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 you do. But you have a grande to go after? Yeah, I don't even need to do that. Do something different. Get off my Are you space. harvesting? No, I don't have a worker to do such things. Okay. Harvest. Sorry. I would like, I should, but I don't have a worker for it. So Harvest a poor, field. Poor planning. If you'll pass me a grape. Boop. So I get a three red. All right. Okay. And I will go to the play a winter card. And I will discard a grape. I'll discard a red. No, I'll discard a white. And then I gain a victory point. Whoa! Yes! We're on we're, our way. We're, we're there. <laughs> and one residual payment value. Nice. Go ahead. Okay, then I will make up to two. And I will make a white two. And a, let's save this one over here because it can't go any further anyways. And let's do a three red. Okay. Have a seller. All right, I will pass. 
Okay. So I'm going to retrieve my workers, which... Oh, I didn't even need the grande then anyways. The yeah, so it'll free up the spot that you want to go to. Okay, get my little workers. And then I age grapes and wines. I only have a grape red going to three. I discard down to five cards. I'm good. Collect residuals. I'll gain a one a lira. And I'm not going to advance your marker until you're done. Go ahead. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Nice, Bob. Nice. There's appropriate times for Zinfandel, I think. Listen. <laughs> I think I'm just going to go to play a card. It'll just give me... The good wines for the customers, okay? Relax. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm just going to go here to play this card. I'm going to have to discard anyways, but this will give me just more options. I can draw two or discard a one wine value of four or more to gain. Th oh, this is not a good idea because I should probably do this. No. Maybe I just. So draw. you're going to lose cards. So if you can turn a card into a victory point right no, now. No, I can't right now because it has to be four or higher and I need to get oh. my seller going next round. I think I just draw an order card and then I discard this and this. No. Oh. Which. Or then fine, I can do this. I can go here. And I can just can you fill no. any orders yet? No, because I need the seller, which I'll get at the oh, end. I'll get no. next turn. I didn't know I was going to draw that. No. You could sell a wine to gain money equal to its value. Mm -mm. I could also just... No, that's not efficient. None of this is efficient. I just have to draw I know, we're all over the place. And hope I get something I can do. Oh, this is good too. Okay. Six. This is good too. Six. Why is it good? Because I have... Things that if once I get the bigger seller, I can fill this one next turn, then this the turn after that, getting six points. Okay. Good. It's good. Believe me. Okay. Then I'm done. Retrieve my workers. Oh my god. I think I have like a worst score ever. I can feel it. No, no, no. We're not. We're not. We're not. <laughs> so a lot of people are learning from our mistakes. This is not how you play co op viticulture. We're all good. This one can't go any further because I don't have a bigger seller. That goes to three. Uh, discard down to five. We're getting rid of the champagne. I'm not, we're not selling champagne. We're going to get rid of this one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. I have my five cards. Collect residuals. I still don't have any. And advance the year marker. Okay, next event. Hmm? Number three out of six. Give me something I can use here. More innovation. Rectangular innovation tiles permanently upgrade the corresponding actions on the game board and enable you to take a more powerful upgraded version of the base action. As a gift, I'll help you gain a rectangular innovation tile this year. Hmm. So you can pay two to gain one uh, innovation, rectangular innovation. So it's really trying to emphasize innovation tiles are the jam. So we discard, oh, yeah, discard, replace... Oh, so there's an, an, there's an age of oh, wine. An age of wine. And then it is the two we're getting here. Let's do it here. Uh, so the planting, now we can plant two if we want to put this one out. You may ignore the field's max of vine value restriction for the second vine you plant. So that you can is. really get ton in a single field uh, okay. if you do that right. That would have been nice to get really earlier in the game, but yeah, maybe, we can, for more maybe we can still make it work. Oh, the selling a wine. You gain money equal to its value and victory point equal to half its value rounded down. Oh, so we maybe can make that work. Maybe instead of filling purple cards now, I switch to just like making, making wines and throwing them away for victory points. Yeah. Maybe that's what I do. Yeah. I wish again that was, I didn't even know that was a thing. I have not seen that tile yet. Wow. Okay. Again, replayability here, right? As you replay, you get to know what tiles are possible, what could show up, you know, and start to maybe plan for maybe some of it happening or not. I don't know. All right, what do you need to do here? <laughs> I'm so lost. I, I I have no idea. It's okay, it's okay. Um, I need to get points and wines and stuff harvesting. I I don't know. But that's later. Yeah, I can just. I'm thinking of just playing into the summer and winter cards to try to make points and things out of those, but it's like not happening. I can, uh, I can eventually trade you this one then, because if you can just get a wine to. Four, you can get three victory points. I don't even have the building for that. Like, how is that happening? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. For me, I'm not. I might just take a green card to maybe find something else I can plant before I harvest so I actually can make, like, two grapes because I don't have this, so maybe I have to build. 
Oh, yeah. You so I'd get my trellis. Work. Like, that's the other problem. Oh, yeah, you have a lot you need to do. But I could just draw another green card that needs a building and I'm in trouble. And then if we're doing this, I have the money for it. I can do that, though, if you need the money for your trellis and you need money for other things. Okay. So then I'll, let's say, right now I'll, I'll say I'll do this, but we'll... I'm gonna, I'll do the green one, I think. Okay. I don't know. And then I'll take the money for that one. Oh. Oh, so it's the, I, oh need I, the, I need that. the irrigation and a three white. Jeez, Louise. Uh, will you pass me two? Points? Yep. Okay, so I go first. This sucks. Uh, I don't have either of those buildings, so maybe I just try to build them. I don't know. Relis. Pay to build a structure. I don't know. Or do I just like, drop it? Maybe I go here and I should have went here to gain a green card. Because I would have got a winter card with it. I forgot about that bonus. I'm just going to build a structure. I don't know. Spend two. And we'll put the trellis out. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> okay, I'm going to also build a structure. I'm placing my grande. We can trade in a second. Mm. Oh, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Sorry, sorry, because I can do it for Yeah, I can give you this one. Uh, well, maybe I'll meet you in a minute. But let's put this here, because I want to play this card. You don't play, need to play a yellow card, do you? I was going to, but I can use my grande for it. Okay. Uh, build one structure at a three discount, which I will do. So I will build my medium seller for one or plant. And I don't need to plant two so that I don't want to spend the additional. Man, like now two. when you go here, like you get tons of money if you do that. I know. Because like, you have all the buildings to. Oh, I need to place it. Yeah, yeah. You have three buildings. Three right? buildings. So I'd make, I'd make five coins when I go there. Right. Okay. So now that's good because now I can fill this one. I need this. So I'll go here. Or hold on. I do all of this. I'll go here with Grande. Play this yellow card, and I'll just get rid of a grape to gain two money and a victory point. I guess, I don't know. I don't feel good. And then we can trade if you want, yes. so I'll give you this. So definitely you can have this one. I'll take that one. Mm. Okay. If you can just get one into there and then... Yeah, but I might just use it to gain the... Two yellow cards. Even that. Yeah, that works Because those too. could lead to me getting victory points from just doing my shenanigans. Okay, me? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. So I just need to think for a second. If I give a tour, then I can go here. I would have five, six, seven. I can spend six. I need to gain this. Yeah, we need like this. The, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I need to give a tour first. Okay, I gain two, three, four, five. Oh, big Plus yellow pizza. Two. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. And then I'll go here. Oh, maybe I go there, actually. It only gets you one, though. Oh, here yeah. you actually here get I two get fired two, off. And I, cost, I want this. It only costs one extra, really. That's just giving you, like, uh, for two. Here you get three, but for one worker, you get two, you know, for Yeah, six. and I want this, so yeah, that yeah, I, yeah. I need definitely. to age one yep. of my wines yep, this turn. And it will help us when we all want to hammer that same spot. It will free it up for everyone to go there, too. Okay, so. Do I even have to do all of this? I probably should have went for the gray worker. Harvest. I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm just going to do a boring old plant. Because we're not buying this one, right? No. I don't think we need to. I only have one plant anyway. Okay. Boom. Maybe I should sell this second field for mine. Like, I'll probably never use it. Okay, I'm going to go here. I'm going to spend six if you'll pass me one. 
and I'm going to buy two. We're going to buy this one, which is the cell. On, oh, so it's going to be boom. for you. And then this one. You can use it too. I don't have enough money to put it where I want to, but let's put it here. Making wines that will help age one of them. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. I wanted to put it here, but I don't have two coins. Yeah, I know, I know. So that's the best case. That's fine. When you but make then maybe them, even, we can, even maybe we can then put. Oh, if oh I an arrow. Like this and then do. Oh man, because we then get a free so wine. But I can't. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, it's it's rectangle. Two. Oh, it's rectangle. Oh. So maybe you so don't, then I don't buy this. Okay. You buy this yeah. instead. And then we get. We each get a one wine of a one value wine of your choice. Uh. White or red? Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. I white. Don't think. I'll just do red. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. And then, are you able to go there to do that though? Do you have enough? Sure. I guess. Whatever. All right. I just don't have the money. Paying two. For that one. Yeah. Now we go here because it's a uh, arrow. It will. Whoops! You can't see. It's an arrow. So when you put your worker here, if it's trained, uh, you'll get to do this bonus of aging a wine, one space. Okay. All right. That was you that just did that. So I think me, so. Uh, fall. I will pass. Okay. I will. What will I do? I will gain a. Uh, I'll gain a card. And I will gain an order. Campaign. Why do you keep giving me champagne? And then my cottage will draw me a summer. For some reason I like the summer ones better. Well, they're better. all related to like planting and stuff like that. Oh, discard two cards to gain four coin or discard four cards to gain three victory points. I oh, need to give but this you have off. a whole bunch of cards right now. Too bad you didn't have it while you're still in the summer. I know. These two I'm going to fulfill. Oh, though. okay. Yeah, yeah. The but way. I could get that to you and then you just collect cards. Maybe. Yep, maybe. And then get three more victory points. Yeah, because there's a way to get two cards right there at one shot. Plus, you have a winter card that gives you cards. Yeah, true. Yeah, I'll, we'll just try to get that card to you. Okay, I think I'm going to just harvest. Uh, oh, pass. Sorry, pass. Um... I think I'm going to just gain a card. Let's gain. A summer card. Blacksmith, build a structure at two discount. If it's five or six cost structure, also gain a victory point. I mean, it could Yeah, build... you just lean into all those victory points. Yeah, maybe but I, I don't know if I'll do them as I have the money and stuff, but hey. Because I need to do a five cost one, so that's either my large seller, I don't have my medium. Do your oh. tasting room or. Oh, yeah. Oh, do your. Oh, yeah, windmill's not very good anymore. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of sucky. But if I'm just throwing away cards or victory points, yeah. that's also a thing. Okay. Um. So, Winter, go ahead. Uh, I am first. I think you're first. Or was I first? No, I was first. Oh, you're first. You're first. You're first. But then how did I just... Oh, you were waiting for me, right? I, I passed first. Yeah, so you have to wait for me. Then I pass. But then... But then now you get to go first again. Do I, though? Yeah. How that works? Okay. Um. All right. I'll just harvest a field. Oh, my guy lost his hat. <laughs> and then I get... Uh, a two white grape in my crush pad and a one red grape in my crush pad. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to make up to two. I only have one. It is a five, five red. Okay. And then I get to age a wine. Now I don't even need to do that. Oops. That's fine. Oh, yeah, I do. Let's do this one. Aging that to six, which I'll just do this one first. All right, then I'm going to retrieve my workers because it's end of the year for me. And then, uh, age grapes and wines. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, then discard down to five cards. I'm good. Collect residuals of one money. And advance to your marker. Not yet. Okay, Go ahead. my last worker is just going to fill. I will fill this with a six red. And I gain three victory points. One, two, and one three, residual. One residual. I'll just leave that here, actually. Um, okay. And I'm done, so I'll collect all my workers. Age your grapes and wines. You're already at five cards. Collect your residuals of one money. 
And then we'll advance to round four. We flip a new event card. International awards. Gaining, inf uh, uh, gaining 10 influence is required to win. It is expensive, so filling small wine orders for early residual income helps. Now you tell us. <laughs> Thanks, game. Each of the continent decks will provide a unique way to gain some influence, but you will need to gain the remaining influence by placing workers on action P on the board. Start this year by moving the influence marker to the right one position. Yay. Yes. <laughs> Way. We're at four out of ten now. Yay. <laughs> and placing innovation tile P, which we set aside earlier, which normally would be shuffled in, which now reduces the cost to a buy, and we get to build structures for free, which is like kind of busted. Yeah, it's like a two in one. Um, but again, if you see that early, man, oh, anyways, yeah. but then you, you might not have the money to do the influence part. Uh, and then we have a spot here now. You gain two influence and or build one structure for free by going here also. So definitely uh, one of us needs to take advantage of that for sure. Yeah. I could just do it, whatever. Do you need your... Should I this freaking extra worker? Do you need your... Oh, yeah, we got to oh, clear, clear that. I was going to say, do you need your larger seller or your medium seller? I don't know. To... I don't know. So here is the two tiles coming up in the pool for possibility of adding. So this improves the buy one and you gain two now. Oh, that's good for... Or influence. pay one, sorry. Pay one, gain two. So you could throw away any two t card types to like gain six money or gain three money and one grape or gain a couple of victory points, whatever. That's nice. That's helpful. And then F is buy or sell one unplanted field, which like if that was out first at the beginning of the game, that would be amazing. At least you can still do it one more time. Or though. you can gain a grape, then gain a victory point. And then for our oval tiles, we have a down arrow and gaining a lira. And now who is going uh, where? Okay, what am I doing here? I might just collect extra worker if you don't need it. Nope, I think I'll just get money then. Two coins, please. Two coins. I would like this. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm, I want to try to, maybe I'll give it to her, then do this so we can get both of these. Or you even, need to do this one? I don't think we need this one. Or not, well, if you wanted for the victory points, but even this, and then put that here, so then we can get the age of the wine. Well, I guess, yeah, you can buy or sell a grape, and then you get a victory point. Or you can buy or sell an unplanted field. Yeah, like, it's just a way to get Yeah, maybe that's what I do. If we need it. Buying and selling grapes. I don't know. Weird. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. You are first, though. Do you want a free building, or do you want me to lean into the buildings? I don't know. I would just go for the tasting room, so that when I give the tours, I get a victory point. As long as you have a wine in your cellar. Yeah. How am I getting victory points? Yeah, you need. <laughs> I don't know. Or you go for a tasting room. Yeah. Because then if you're trying to get money. No, I don't know. I'm not sure what Oh, yeah, I'm going to give you this one. So I'll have to try to meet you somewhere. Because it's if you discard. I do want to get my medium seller if I'm going to... But I might just take two yellow cards for this guy. This will give you three victory points if you discard four cards. Oh, okay. So, so I definitely point. should go here just to get more cards. And then I'll just try to meet you somewhere. With my grande. Uh. Or yours. So you want to use this? I, like you're going to use it? I, to build something? Like I a, would just build a tasting room because I seem to go here every okay. every turn to get money and now and doing that will make it even more. I think I'll get six coins which then will help me be able to do this and then in turn it'll be like a cycle I can mm. except we only have three more rounds. I know. I, like, I, I don't, I don't know. To do. I don't know. Okay. I just need another wine to fill, I think. Uh, can you get victory points for just selling the vineyards off? You can, no. once we put this out. Yeah, you can that's get only one. one. So it's like, we, I need 24 more victory points somehow. Well, this is going to give you three. That'll give you one. If this, I get you those can... I know. I, I, there's so many things, but I only have so many workers. So, like, I don't know. I need to get some of these making me victory points too, but damn. 
There's a play later too where like if I build up and I can then give you a wine that you can then sell, like if I give you the grapes and stuff. Hmm. Maybe I'll just try to trade with you at the tasting room too. All right, I'm just going to start it by going. Oh, I need the untrained. Or a train, sorry. A draw green and a blue. I got a trellis little red, which I could put there. And it's under my five limit. And then uh, discard one wine to gain four money. If it's the most valuable wine in any player's cellar, no ties, I gain two victory points. Well, just wait till I sell. Yeah, yeah, but we'll see. Interesting, that's funny. Okay, I am going to... So you're going to build a structure, right? Because you're going to build a tasting room if you're going to... Go. Maybe. So then I need to give it to... But I could do it with the summer card at a two discount, and I could build it for four money. I don't have the money, unless that's the problem. And, and then uh, I would... If it's a six-cost structure, which it would be, I would also gain a victory point. Okay, so, so you're not building get... for free then, right? Because mm, I'll go no. here if go you're ahead. not. No, go ahead. So gain two, two influence. influence, and I get to build a building for free, and it'll be the tasting room. Okay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and that one. And then in the winter. I'm just filling. Okay, that will work. That will work. Maybe I'll just build my medium cellar with it. Well, yeah, whatever is smart. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. But are we going to trade at the tasting room? I don't know. We could. Because I can give you money. Yeah, true. I just need, I'm going to gain. Two, three, four, five, six. But why build a tasting room? I'm never going to go back there again. Like, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It just gives you a victory point when you do go in there. I know. Oh, yeah, true. But what, one or two more in the game? I don't know, but I'm supposed to be thinking that way. Oh, this is Yeah, because if we lose by one or two, you're like, ah, oh, dang, I wish I did that. Very frustrating. I'm definitely playing this weird... All right, I'm just going to go here, I guess. Nope. Here with the summer hat guy. I'm going to play the blacksmith for a two discount on a building. I'll just make my medium seller, which only cost me two. Okay, I'm going give, to give a tour. Two, three, four, five, six. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, oh, man. I guess I'm going to go give a tour with my grande worker. And that will give me four money. Because I have two buildings. Okay, do we want to trade Thank anything? You. Trade, trade, trade. I can give you a four grape. Oh, yeah. Or a four wine. Which I needed to gain three victory points. Yeah, because I'm going to fulfill with these two here. I'll trade you a four wine, white. Four white. Okay, boom. My, then... my fresh new medium seller right in there. Oh, I wanted to give you this too, but I'll give you that next time. Maybe I'll meet you with my grande or something if I can. Okay, what do you want from me? Uh, I don't need anything, I don't think. No, I don't have a trellis. Uh, I think those are all good for you, right? For victory points. But if you have, I won't have the most valuable. No, nope, because I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna fill as my only action. What in can winter. I give you? Uh, you a grape, a wine. I know I don't have to, oh. but just if there's something that you can use to make things happen. Hmm. Oh, I think I even have my wrong, my wrong house. Hmm. 
Yep. I don't know. Okay. I don't have much going on over here. All right. Uh, that was me dropping that worker in, gaining money, trading with you. Your turn. My turn. Okay. Well, then I'm going to go here. I'm going to pay six, which is six I just got for my tour, to gain two innovation tiles. And I think I'm going to go for both of these, right? Mm -hmm. F and G. Okay, then mm. oh, I did not gain a victory point when I did the tasting room. Sorry, sorry. Oh yeah, because I have my yep, yep, yep. trap. My oh, thank you, Craig. Got me. Thank you, thank you. Uh -huh. I did not. Craig, nice catch. Nice I just catch. did, but I noticed it before I saw your message, so that's awesome. Hmm. Hmm. Definitely want to have a guy save for blue cards to play. I need to do something there. I want to harvest, so I should save someone for that. Uh, I could just plant to get higher value wines going. Of a three red. I don't think the value matters. Uh, just don't play the blue card until after I fill, which is going to be my first action. Yeah. Hmm. I can only do one of these blue cards to play, and I want to play all three. So my Grande being gone kind of sucks. Maybe I just plant. Uh, or buy or sell a field, maybe. Just I don't need this. I'll sell it. For six money. And then I gain a victory point. Yay! <laughs> okay. I'm just debating going here. Yeah, I know. I should probably go on there too. I will, I will assume probably. Okay, yeah, then I'll wait till next turn. Actually, maybe I can do that. Hmm. This guy's filling. Maybe I see. Oh yeah, the free structure thing. Remember that. If you have six money, you could probably do that this year. You build a structure. So then if you go to that again, you get more money, but like and that oh, will help that have, will help buy that's more. That's what of I should have taken from you then is money when we traded. Yeah. Oh, what? Two. Yeah. Thanks. You did, sure. Yeah, that <laughs> I didn't happened. think I needed anything, but wink, yeah, wink, I, guess, nudge, nudge. I guess money would be helpful. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Okay, then I'm passing into fall. So here, oh, I guess I could take in the two here as well, but I probably should go for a card. And I'll go for a fill, because I'd love to be able to fill something next turn too, which is possible. Okay. Oh, no, it's not possible yet. Okay. That I'm going to discard. Okay. And then I'm going to take a winter card, politician. Yep. If you have less than zero, gain six, otherwise draw, Whoa. draw, draw. Okay. I don't need that either. Okay. Well, I will take that from you gladly, but again. No, that's fine then. If here. we could have had a bet the spot for this that lets us play more winter cards, that would be awesome sauce. But at least there's a way to pitch cards here, but you've already passed out of summer. That's a great way to get rid of cards to turn them into victory points or wines or I money. I know, I know, but I think I'll do that next turn. Okay. All right. Um. So, harvesting, making wines. I'm going to do that way. All right, I pass. Uh, let's... Hmm, I feel like gaining a card... Let's gain summer. Gain three money or make up the two wines. Novice guide. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, oh, <clears throat> there fall. I mean winter. Uh, winter. Just don't play your blue card if it's that one. Well, well no, I can. I can do. Uh, oh, I'll do the harvest first. Okay. Harvest one field. 
So that will get me a white two and a red one. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna fill this one which is a four red, two white, exactly what I have. This is gonna give me three, one, two, three, and one residual. Okay. Now I have no wine in my cellar, which I will need for my tasting room. Okay, then I'm gonna to go to playing a winter card. I will play this one, make up to three wines, gain one victory point for each type of wine you make. I'm going to make a white. Uh, I'll make a blush. Three and a one. Red and white. Give me a four blush, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a two red, which will just be a one red. And then a two white. We have three. That's good. So three victory points. One, two, three. You're I, probably going to do better than me, actually, now that I Relax. It. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> I sold half my farm over here. I'm not doing too hot. I'm in debt with the bank. It's crazy. I'm I drinking think... my own product. It's a, it's a crap show over here at Rob's Vineyard. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Han says, Rob does know this is a winemaking game and not a real estate game, right? Mm. Oh, whoops. <laughs> whoops. Okay. Oh yeah, I need to remember this. I need to get my wines up really high so I can get victory points just from selling them straight up. And as many people can go here, and I get to age them first. Yeah. Which, which makes, makes it better. Oh my god. I, yeah, this is my end game. Yeah. This is my end game. Uh, uh, sorry, that was you that just did that, right? So it's yeah. me? I'm just gonna go here. I'm gonna pay six, two, four, six for a point. Influence. An influence, sorry. Influence, yeah. and I can build a structure for free. Which I am gonna plant, so maybe I just build my windmill for free, so then I can plant yeah, and gain a victory, a victory point, point that sure. way. Yeah. Okay. I know. I wish you had that winter card I threw away before. That was like you build the last building. buildings, you get a whole bunch of victory points. I know. Yeah. Because I'll try to do that one again next round. Because we only need to do a couple more here. Yeah, I have money. Like hopefully the last round I'll build do one or two. We'll see. Okay. Because once I start selling wines, like. I get tons of money from that, so mm -hmm. what am I doing with it? Just building. So mm -hmm. I later, last couple of years, we'll just need to be doing lots of winter stuff. Yep. All right, on to you. Uh, pass. So retrieve my workers. Yoink, yoink, yoink. You were in a Yoink. <laughs> Couldn't find them. He was in disguise. All right. <laughs> Age, grapes, and wines. All right, let's do that. Boop, boop, boop. Slide them all over one. They're increasing in value as the wines age. I have no grapes. Uh, discard down five cards. I'm good. Collect the residual payments of one money. Okay, great. Uh, then, uh, advance the year, but not yet. Only after all players have passed. Nope, but now I'll pass. Okay. So, retrieve your workers. Okay. Let's go oh, back right. here. Age, my groups, and wine. I have nothing. Discard down to five. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just going to get rid of this one with the champagne, which I don't want. Collect your residual payments. Thank you. And advance the year marker to five. New event card. Oh, no. What's this one going to teach us about trading via grande worker? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we know, all right? <laughs> We've in, done it already. In Viticulture World, when you place your grande worker on an action space, you can trade with one other player whose worker is also present on the same action. That would be really cool in a, in a higher count, higher player count game. Mm -hmm. That could be really neat, actually. Um, and then it says, also it's present on the same action. You can give and or take any one of the items as shown on the key on the bottom left of the game board as a gift. I will help you trade more easily this year. So one action you can take here, choose an action in the current season where another player has a worker. Then gain the benefit of that action as if your worker were there. No bonus. Okay, that's good if we get locked, but... Cool. Okay. I don't know how that's helping us trade, but sure, whatever. Draw. So this is going here so we can draw. If we put it if there. We, put we it don't there. need to necessarily if we're not going to be using these that often. Oh, it's draw. You may immediately fill one of them using wine tokens worth up to two less than the order requirement. Whoa. That is So if huge. you're about to start filling orders like crazy, there's there's the help. Which lets me do this. Because oh, okay. I'm only going to be able to do a five and a three. Uh, we've never seen this tile before yet. Yeah, I mean, that's a three awesome. and a three. Okay, the less would be the five. Our next <gasps> one is... Play up to two yellow cards. Gain three money if you play two cards. Well, a little late, late for that. For that little but late maybe that. we can get some some of these that will help because we want to get a victory point there. We got an arrow and we got purple card. Okay, I want to go here 
do this. I need six money. Man, you can put the purple card on here, put this on here. Then when you go there... You have so you, many options. You Yeah, you could just draw... Well, you draw, like, three cards instead, because you can do this before doing that. Yep. Then you have three cards you just gained. Then you can fill whichever one you feel like is, like, the perfect one. Yeah, that's a play. Okay, I need... Okay, okay. So, I need... We need to go here. Someone needs to go here and spend six. Okay, I can. You can? Yeah, so, so you based take on the that... Worker? Uh, is that what do I do? you need the worker? I don't know. Are you going after me then? Like if I'm Yeah, I'll there. take the money, I think. Uh, will I? Or maybe I take the victory point. I don't know. Is it needed though? What will get you filling more wine orders and like doing more stuff, right? I mean, if One I... One victory point doesn't help your engine grow. It's like, I don't know. But maybe it's the victory point you need to go from 24 to 25 I'm later. I'm losing out on the victory point from the tasting room this round because I don't have any wines because I use them to fill. Oh. I need to plant this. We're going to fill this. I can take the turn. worker. If I go there. I will plant, so that'll give me a victory point. And I'm thinking about selling off my seven. That'll give me money for this. That'll give me one, two, and maybe I go here with some of my money. One, two, three. I need to. If you don't need the worker, I could use it. I'm not sure. I can't even think that far in advance. I want to get the uh, tile over here so I can play like more than one. Yeah. Because so I can pitch a wine of four value or more, get three victory points. I mean, I can't do that next round. It's last round. Um, but I might draw more cards. I, I don't know. Maybe I won't. And then this one is discard one wine and gain four money. If it's the most value wine in any player, sell or no ties, I gain two victory points. So I need to do this like this round before you start making wines. Mm -hmm. And this one, I guess I can wait till later. So maybe I don't need to do them now, both in the same turn. But I was thinking of like, oh man, can I get that arrow here and the purple card here? So then when I play, I draw a purple card. But do I need the purple card? I don't know. I don't know. I think I think this is important, and I think this is important. Mm -hmm, I agree. So, uh, hmm. I might just need I a can, victory point, like I you say. I can do it if you want. No, but then... let me just take the extra worker then okay. if you don't need them. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll find somewhere first. for him to go. I think I want to take a victory point this round. I really think that it might come down to that. Okay. And I'm getting nervous. Four, five, six. What if you need the money for something? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to sell my field this for seven. Oh, okay, okay. And get a victory point for that. All right, I'm putting my summer worker here. Oh, no, you're first. You're first. I'm first. Oh, yep, yep. weird, weird, weird. Okay, I think the first thing that I'm doing... Yes, I'm going to sell one of my fields. I'm going to sell my seven. So, give me seven. And I gain one victory point. Seven coins, please. And one victory point for that. Okay, summer guy here. I'm going to pay six. And we're going to gain this purple to make drawing and filling orders on the same thing. Amazing. And then I'll take this and make it even better. Which is good because then more, multiple of us can go there. Yeah, yeah, true. I really need to start taking advantage of these, and we're not. So, like, putting these here was, like, kind of a I'm waste. going to take advantage of this one. I also kind of want to do this one. Okay, go ahead. Do whatever. Oh, it's me now. I'm going to plant, plant this one in here. So, that's my six. And I have the windmill, so I gain one victory point. So, I'm at ten. Trying to determine my winter guys I'm saving for later and then who I can spend now. I think I might even be done. Okay, I'm gonna put this one here. I think. Oh, yeah, maybe I do. And I'm gonna get rid of two cards since I'm not probably, or I should just plant this to help make better wines. Oh, but I also need my large seller, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. So hold on, if I sell a wine, I gain money, then half its value rounded down. So if I'm selling six cost wines, I'm getting three victory points. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here I'm going to get rid of this card, I think, and this card. 
I'm paying one to gain two. So I could gain like grape, could gain victory, two victory points, could gain a grape and a victory, could get three money. Uh, what do I need though? I don't know. I think I'm in trouble. I don't know how I'm getting the last few I need. I think I'll gain a victory point. And I'll gain a grape. Uh, red? I don't know. Red. Mm. That'll be enough, though, because I'm turning it into a wine and aging it. Will it get there? Kind of blocked. No, I'll just take two victory points, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that I have to draw the wine. You may immediately fill one of them using wine tokens worth up to two less than the order's requirements. So it has to be something you draw. Okay. Yeah. Not one I have already. Yeah, okay, correct. so then if I don't draw anything that I That's can That's why drawing then... three is like, it should hopefully line up, but you should have a lot of wines ready just in case, like, what type they need. I know. Could be a big whiff. Could be. But then if I if it is, I'll use this probably just to discard them. Okay. I did this thing. Did you do something? Uh I think Oh, you're past. Or no. Oh no. Sorry. That in? I, I didn't pass yet. But I think I am. I think I'm doing the draw the wine, harvest the field, and then worst case fill the order. Okay. If not if so you're passing? Again. Uh passing, yeah. So I will take Oh, maybe I take a grape here for more. Options. You age a grape. It's not oh, age, gaining a grape. So then I'll just gain a card. And let's gain a winter. The scholar. Draw two wine orders or pay three to train a worker. You may lose a victory point to both. Okay, that might be helpful at the end. And then I will take a summer for my cottage. Handyman. All players may build one structure at a two discount. You gain one oh. victory point for each opponent who does this. <laughs> Way better so than a larger just buy, like, your Pay for like your yoke or something. Yeah, maybe. Because free. Oh, then yeah. I get a sure. victory point. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. I'm, I've passed into fall. I'll also pass. Which I will take... Do a purple just to see. Maybe I'll get something I can do. Oh, never oh, making that. But... You didn't have a blush, no? Yeah, oh, but I can never get it to color? eight. Yeah. That was a waste. Oops. But if you buy build a seller with this for two discount, you can fill that next turn. Yeah, okay. Then Fair. you can age it first. It'll age now. Yeah. Oh, maybe you can't do enough. I don't know. Hmm. What happens? I can't discard it. My value wines are the same. Isn't it opponent though? Uh, it says in any player's cellar, no ties. Oh. If it is the most valuable wine in any player's cellar, but in my cellar I have two wines of the same value. Maybe do this first and see what happens. Nah, whatever. Yeah, maybe. Oh, and then I'm first. I don't know. You this do is so annoying. All right. Okay, I think I want to, well, first I have to harvest. Do you need to harvest? Well, remember, we have this, too, you can do to, oh, like, yeah. gain the action. Okay. So I'm going to harvest one field, which is just a three white and a three red. And I have my grande. Okay. So do I, just in case. Hmm. Oh, I see. Maybe I do this. Or maybe I do this first and see... Yeah, maybe. Okay, I'm going to put the Great Worker here. I'm going to draw one, two, three, I think, if I understand it correctly. Mm -hmm. I may immediately fill one of them using wine tokens worth up to two less than the order's requirements. Now, if it requires two wines, each one is two less? Um, Is there not a... 
clarification? I don't know. I don't think so, actually. No. Draw two purple cards. You may immediately fill one of them using wine tokens worth up to two less than the order's requirements. I would say total. Is it total? So whether it's like two... So it's like two. a five and a three wine, I can do like a four and a two or a yeah. three and a three. three. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would say. I don't know if this is smart. Might be. You got lots of wine in your cellar. I know, but I could go here, or I could harvest first. Harvest first, that would get two down here. Then I could make, which would age some wine forward. Or I could just start going here and selling. That's probably the better way to do it. Because residual payments right now is kind of dumb. Victor points are great though. But I might whiff on that. And then that's like a sad, sad panda. I feel like you won't. I feel like there'll be something you can fulfill. Which you'd probably get like three victory points would be my guess. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here. I'm going to sell a wine. I'm going to sell. Oh, first I'm going to age it. And I'll age, doesn't matter, my white, okay? My white has been aged. Now, I'm going to gain one uh, money equal to the value of it, which is six. Because I'm a baller, okay? My wine is expensive, I guess. All right. And then I get victory points equal to half its value rounded down. So I'm getting one, two, three victory points. Okay? Oh, and it's sold. It's sold. Gone. Gone. The wine is gone. Okay, go ahead. Because then now I can play this winter thing here, and I'll discard this other wine, which is five. I have none. I'm and only going to have it. It is the most valuable, so I'll gain two more victory points off that. Mm -hmm. Boom. Okay, I'm got gonna, it. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to make up to two, which is a three and a three. Three and a three. Don't and then forget, I you can, can age. age one. Yep. I will age the red to a four. Okay. So I'm going to go. Where was I saying? Oh, it's this winter guy. I'm going to go play a blue card. So I will play this card, which discard one wine to gain four money. Okay. So I'll get rid of this five blush. I know it's probably not the best way to do that, but I will gain four money. Okay. Then if it's the most valuable wine in any player's cellar, no ties, I gain two victor points. One, two. Boom. Go ahead. So there's a play where I go and I try that draw three and see and hope I can fulfill one. If I don't, I just have them for next time. Or I make two more wines this time with my Grande Worker, aging them, and then doing that maybe next turn, or selling off any wines I have left over in the last year. Because I am behind. Or I do this, going with my Grande to you, and I can trade. I can make up to two wines of value four or greater, even if you don't, oh, I don't have any to make, so I can't do that. Uh, this one, what can we do with this one? Draw two purple cards or pay three to train a worker. Draw two purple cards. Okay, what do I do, what do I do? I think I make, or I think I harvest again for next round. Yeah. So if you can pass me one more beat, sorry, a three and a three I harvest. Mm. Mm. I don't know if that's a smart right question. Go go here. A six to give us an influence. And build a structure for free. I think I'm just going to do my large cellar. I, I don't probably need it, but I don't know what else to do. Yeah, I'll just do my large cellar just in case. But I don't know. I don't really. I don't know what the other. Uproot a vine or harvest the field. Cottage. Extra cards maybe is the play. But I'm, I have one last fall to go through, so that's kind of dumb. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. This is rough. All right, whatever. Go ahead. I'm done. Okay. I'm take my workers. And age my grapes and wines. Okay, and then discard down one, two, three, four, five, six. This one. Oh, shoot, sorry. Okay. And then collect residuals if you can pass me two. 
Mm. I will, I guess, just harvest the field with my grande. Yeah. Oh. One and a two. I would play this to draw two yellows. But I don't think that's the play. Four or more. Three victory. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I'm getting from here to here in one year. That's like not I know, happening. I don't either. Yeah, this is crazy. I need? Crazy game. I can do yeah, this. Yeah, mess, a mess. Okay. Uh, done. So collect workers. Yeah, I'm definitely don't know what I'm doing here. Like all over the place. So many options. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so this will go back here. Uh, age grapes and wines. Okay, then discard down cards. I'm good. Collect residual payments of one. Then advance the year marker. Boom. Last event card. Forever King, as I, your Forever King, lay on my deathbed, I regret that I will not be alive to see the end of your journey. However, whatever the outcome, you are all winners in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Get out of here with your participation trophies. <laughs> Uh, I hope you take the lessons you learned from Green Gully and apply them to your future winemaking efforts in distant lands. Even though life as winemakers seems difficult, your early innovations will quickly pay off. Start this year with each player gaining three victory points. I forgot about this. Oh, oh yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. A little, a little, little nudge. Okay, maybe we got it then. Uh, and then there's a spot here. Take up to two different actions on the board with no bonuses. So okay. two actions for one space. That's helpful. Okay, and then our last innovation tiles is fill a wine, then up to once per year, each player gains a victory point. That would have been better earlier. Yeah, some of them are like, I, I wish I could seed that deck and, and make them certain ones come up early, er, er, like better chance to come up early half and oh. once better chance in the second half. Okay, and then play up to two blue cards or winter cards, gain one victory point if you play two cards. And then we have aging a... Want a grape and adding a yellow. Oh, sorry. Oh, that makes more sense. <laughs> sorry. This is okay. our last. This is our last innovation tiles. We'll see. So I don't know if they're helpful, but maybe putting like an oval out on a spot that you want to like hammer on the last year might make sense. Mm -hmm. But might not be the best spend of a worker. Who knows? Okay. So you need how many victory points? One, two, three. Too many. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. We need nine. And we need two more of this influence stuff. So. I can uh, go uh, there uh, once. Yeah, yeah, but then we need like a grande there or we need to like throw some other thing over there. I don't know. Okay. Probably a grande. Oh, but or this spot. Or that. We could use that spot to help okay. cheat. Um cheat like two okay. different actions. So you need eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need twelve points. So going here, based on once I can get two I can get four points from here with two workers, I can get three points from here. Oh, but then I need another wine. Yeah, so I might have a way to get seven points that I see, at least. Okay, and then and, can you and go I here? See, I have the money to go here once. Oh yeah, and I could buy it from there, yeah. So you need how or, many? Or here, like this one. Oh yeah, that's probably where I Yeah, maybe you should go because you're behind, I don't know. I think but I then can, do you have ways of like I think I can get slamming four, oh, and you didn't do five, this yet. If you can get that one of those six, to fire off. Seven, eight. Nine, ten. I think I can get ten points without going there. And I think I need twelve. There's also a way for us to each get a point from covering up this space, even if we don't go use I think, it. I think I need the worker if you don't to get all these points, though. I'm assuming I can go there and sell this field, and I just lose the yeah. vines off it, right? I think so. You get a victory I think point that way. That. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. We, we, we might not do it, but. Um, but what I need to do is take a quick break. Yeah, yeah. Before we pick where we're going. Yeah, so before we choose our starting order, I'm just going to take a quick uh, bio break. We'll be right back in a couple minutes.
And we're back. Thank you. Hey, Joseph's here. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year, Happy New Joseph. Year. Hope you're doing well. All right. Let's... All right. We're deciding our final year here. But I could go with the... What's that one? Hmm. Okay. Uh, so... We're deciding turn order, right? Yeah. Do I need that victory point, or is it probably just better? It's probably better for me to take the worker if you don't need, or just counting. Maybe a out. summer card that might have victory points on it. Let's see some of these discarded ones. Building a structure for a victory point. Getting rid of a grape for a single victory point. No, not many of them have victory points on them that I see, but maybe that means there's more in the deck that do. I don't know. I feel like the winter ones I've seen have good victory points, but I don't know these decks well enough to know. I need to play a yellow card. That'll give me three victory points. I need to fill with two workers. Let's just count these out for a second. That's two workers. I need to sell a farm, uh, vineyard for another one. I probably should give a tour. Don't forget this. And then I have my this guy left that he can. Don't do forget we need this. So maybe your grande might need to go here, or yeah, go there and we can fire off this. Somebody can go there, fire off like this and something to I help you. I think whoever doesn't take the the extra worker goes there. Okay. Because that'll give us like the same amount. So if you want the worker, go I ahead. I don't know if I need the worker. I'm not even. I don't care that much to sit there and plan out all my workers. Really, I know I should, but I honestly don't care right now. Um, but yeah, yeah, but with this option, it's just the opposite person. I just am thinking. So, do you need the victory point, probably? Probably. Okay, go for the victory point. Okay, and I'll, I'll go for the worker then. Okay. You'll be going first. Okay. Okay. Do it. Play a yellow card. I'll play the auctioneer. Discard two to gain four points. Or do you need something? Nope. I was just saying, don't forget this. There's a victory yeah. point possibly there. Or two, actually. If you toss two cards or spend only three money or you just get rid of one grape, that's worth two victory points. Which I might have I totally to forgot about that. And then this uh, is my backup. Ooh, yes. Selling okay. for half might be more. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Or discard four cards to gain three victory points. I'll discard four cards. Oh, I don't have enough cards. One, two, three. I didn't. I counted that card. You have four. No, but this one I need to fill for four points. Oh, then don't. don't okay, do so sorry. Rewind, 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 rewind. So maybe go like here first to just draw two cards, like two random cards, whatever. Not gonna be... Maybe one of the blues. No, maybe you... I should have not taken the victory point. Oh, and then got a card. And I got a card. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's get this one. Purple. Yeah, and then you'll go first as well. So I have my options. Oh, five. Five red to get oh, two victory two. points, no. one red is his rule. Okay. And then... No, uh, you're first, sorry. Oh, yes. Yeah, because it changed. Okay, okay. So I will just go with a regular worker, or trained worker here, just to draw a green and a blue. And I just get like a random Merlot and a manager. Take any action, no bonus from a previous season without placing a worker. That is not bad for this. I'm probably just going to toss it, but yes, yes, that's true. After you see what your situation is like, I'm probably like. just going to toss these two cards. So I could take that again to get like two victory points for those cards. And now I'm going here, spending this. I think I was counting this card as my four. And then I discard these four. Two blues, purple, and a yellow. And that gives me three. One, two, three. All right, we're tied. Let's do this. <laughs> we're almost there. Let's do this. Climbing up that hill. <sighs> Whatever. Can't reach it. Oh. Okay. Then I have this summer dude. What should I do with the summer dude? I need to save six for buying this. I could just throw them up here. But I took the extra workers, so you're saying don't do that. I could just throw them here and toss those two cards now, which I will do. So I'll get rid of these. And that will let me just gain two victory points, I think. Yep. Okay. okay. I think I need to sell a field 
for five and a victory point. You also pass me five coins. Five lira. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> nice, Mike. Nice. <laughs> I think I'm just miscounting my cards, obviously. All right. I think I'm probably saving the rest. Maybe for winter would be smart, because if I'm getting two for the victory points, playing a blue card. Need four. Ronde guy. Oh. Don't forget this spot. Yeah, that. You need to do that. Is gonna go so I'm going to pass. Here. I'm going to pass. Uh, so fall time. Okay. Uh, could get a card and two money. That wouldn't get me enough to do this again anyway. Or just age a grape. I probably should age a grape, maybe. I think I'm one shy. Oh, no. I can use this. Oh, no. I don't yeah, I'll just age a red. Oh, I'll age the white. Agent of White. I don't know if this is right. But go ahead. I'm going to be one shy. That's fine. I know. I just want to... I mean, go here to buy two for like three money or... So um, this guy is definitely going to fill You could turn time. one grape into two victory points there, you know? But you need to go there with a grande. No, I can use Or that. use that, yeah. So but this... it's only... Oh, it's on the board. You don't yeah, have to worry so about seasons. this guy is going to go there. And he can do this one, because yep. we need to do this, and this one, so I can sell. Also, this helps you build a structure for free. So if, oh, you don't have a vine to plant, you already have that structure. I don't know, never mind. That's four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I need two more. You could sell a wine, and you get victory I points won't have equal wine. to half the value. I'm one, I think I'm one worker short. Then you should have taken the extra worker. That's the problem. What about this? Of uh, you, you draw up the from problem here. is, is my wine's over here. This is already allocated to get four points from here. Okay. Then I'm I'm not gonna have anything. So maybe making an aging. Remember, you can age. But then I don't, that's my last guy, right? I, I so, don't know. No, I'm not I know, sure. I'm just trying to think if there's another way. I don't know way. what to do. Maybe I just go here. No, maybe I just go here. This guy's four. Five, six, seven, eight. Like, question, how much wine are you getting rid of? Seven, Listen. Six, seven, eight. Oh, Count. I think that'll work. I think that'll work. This fills, these two guys go, oh, this guy uses it from here, and this guy goes there. I think I got it. I think I got it. Okay. Got it, got it, got it. So this is going here. Sorry. I just want to make sure I don't sure. lose because I'm an idiot. Well, so. oh, that's the only <laughs> way you normally lose anyway, right? Six. I'm doing this one. Six to gain an influence. I'll give that to you. Yep, and build, build a building, building for, for free. free. So we'll build... Sure, we'll build a large cellar just to say we did it. Okay. And then my second action is here. I will pay three. And I will gain two victory points. One, two. Uh, you're still in spring though, right? Yep. So you keep going? Because oh, I, pass? I passed already, yeah. Okay, so then I'm going to use my grande worker here. To spend three. You have made two bad. And I'll gain two. One, two, and then I should be able to gain four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, okay, good. I think I got it. <laughs> uh, now I pass. I will, <laughs> what will I do? I agree, Brett. The math's all off. You get them. <laughs> I got there. I just want to make sure I didn't No, lose. not the math for you. The math for we have 85 votes in our poll, 86 votes oh. today for people who stopped in. Oh, nice. But uh, only 33 likes on the video. So what say you? What say you? We're never gonna get to a a quadrillion subs with this math. I agree, Brett. Quadrillion. Quadrillion. We on our way to hashtag two. road to quadrillion. Yeah, we'll we'll be there before we know it. Mel's got it, Rob. Priceless expression. <laughs> now we gotta make sure he gets it though. I don't know if he's counted out his turn to know that he's got it. Oh, homemade chocolate pie. Oh man. Oh yum. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Oh my God! Did you read the rest? Did you know? I had to go over to in-laws to take out the Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Things you got to do to get homemade chocolate pie. That's awesome. Deal with the in-laws. All right. Uh, awesome. Okay. So, are you passed? And now we're starting yeah. winter. Yeah. 
going first for winter. Mm -hmm. Are you confident that you can get? I don't know. 25? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not really counting it out, so who cares? But maybe I should. Okay, so I'm thinking winter. There is some kind of playing a winter card. So this will allow me to discard a wine of value, uh, four or more, which I have two of them here, and that will give me three victory points. One, two, three. I'm at 21. Then uh, I can put a worker to uh, selling a wine, which will age one first. It doesn't really get me any victory points. But, oh, it does. If I sell this one in front of it, I can move a three to a four. That will get me two more victory points. So then Move I'm at away. one, two. And then I can could just... Sell again? Yeah, I could sell the other one that I didn't discard here to get two more victory points. Yeah, so I think that's good okay. enough. But I also have ways of like making. Oh, you wine. have to go here too. Oh yeah, that too. So one there, and then. And then you're one more to do this because you have to do this twice. Yeah, so that's all of them. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we know my route. So I'll go here with my winter guy. He, I'm gonna play this card, uh, which I could draw two yellows or discard one wine of four value or more, which I'll discard a red. Okay. And that will give me three victory points. One, two, three. So I'm tied with Mel. Card is gone. Go ahead. Okay, I will fill this one. I have a five red and a four. Oops. Man, nobody did this, eh? We did all that for like nothing. I know. I thought we would, but. but why don't you go there? Maybe you can find something. Because like... this is a for sure. Oh, okay. I'm scared. I want to draw three and see what one, happens. Two, three, remember, four. remember what wines you had there. And one. I had a five and a four. Okay. And then that's gone. And I am at 25. And I have no more. If someone could get to 30, we can get a free influence right there. I have no more workers. We're not there yet in the skill level. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even believe I got 25. I was scared. You're sitting back here until like turn four. It's so frustrating. Scraping. And watching this stupid grape. Uh, don't even, I'll, I'll rant after. I'll rant after. Don't worry. Oh, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Let's, let's turn. Let's get that. Make, rant. It, make it good. Yeah, let's crank that rant up with some fuel. Hold on. <laughs> Really Add some fuel to the fire. <laughs> you thought I was honest before. We still got a few glasses of wine in me. <laughs> I will tell you what I think, good or bad, or both. <laughs> Mel did her part. Don't fail the team, Rob. Listen, listen. I'm doing great over here. <laughs> did you fill a wine today? But it, I, no, that's not how yeah. I'm, I'm working. That's not my I path. Know. That's, that's your why path. I think it's awesome. Yeah, it is. Like kind we're of like. Filling in each other's weaknesses. Yes, we're working in our, our, the same vineyard, working together. We're a family trying to, yeah. like, you know, trying to do the best we can as a family. You know, she lives here and works this field. I'm also part of the business, but I work in this field. We're in the green gully. You know, we're working in the same village, but, like, our vineyards are on opposite sides or something. He's taking care of the visitors while I'm yeah. making the wine in the back. Yeah, the visitors come in. I just sell them wine straight up. You're filling orders to, like, distribution, selling at retail, all that stuff. That's your side of the business, all right? You don't tell me how we run our business, okay? Lance says, Rob's doing grape over here. <laughs> I'm doing grape? <laughs> Quit whining in the chat, all right? <laughs> all right. Did we throw you off? Do you remember what you were doing? No, I don't. They're trying to distract me and ruin our business did here. You, play your, you played your guy I did already, my so card. I think you're doing this one. Okay, so... This uh, one or this one? One of those two. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. So I'll do this one. Just pay the six. I'll build a structure for free. I'm going to build the windmill. Why not? No, tasting room. I like the tasting room. Sounds better. Okay. And then you get influence. I gain the last influence. We're at 10 out of 10 influence. So together we got that to the winning condition. I just still need to get to 25 for us to win. Pass. I'm done. Passing. Did you do all your stuff? Oh, I did not. Retrieve no, your workers because it could free up spots. I could. You're use. right. You're right. It could. So that's also part of the strategy. Oh, even there. Oh, man. Yep. I can maybe even get more points than Mel. Get off my back. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to age my green. <laughs> yeah, get off my back. I thought it was Koha. What are you talking about? Uh, well, they're, they're trying to turn it into competitive. Residuals of two. I know. Rob is raising a fuss. <laughs> <laughs> losers. You're all losers. All right, I'm done. Get out of here. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Uh, I have two workers left. Oh. Yeah, you definitely can get more points than you probably, which is funny. Oh, I see. I'll say that I uh the wine I discarded was the red maybe? 
Yeah, I think I should do the red or the white. I got rid of the white, so I'll save the four red is better, I think, because the way I'm aging them, it might work out better. So I think what I can do. What was I gonna do? Just two here? Yeah. But if I make a blush. But I, now you have an extra action, right? Because, that's what I mean. So, so if I go here instead, right? Yeah. I could take the make up to two wines and I get to age one first. But I would just make one. Uh, yeah, let me age this red to a five. Oh, I could age after too. But this blush will be a six. So I need them to be even numbers for the whole half victory points rounded down thing. Mm -hmm. So I make a six blush, right? Is what I had, I think. So I combine those two to make a six blush. And I aged with the bonus on this. Oh, no bonuses. No bonuses. Oh, no bonuses. That's the problem. No but still, longer. the six is fine. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, just no bonuses. Yeah, no bonuses. Sorry. And then this one, I will sell here the six to get three victory points. One, two, three. One away. Okay. Then with my last grande worker, I don't think it matters these grande. This, I'll just go here. I'll age this to a five. It doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah, I forgot to get the money uh, for the six. Oh, yeah. I don't think that matters either, but... Um, and then I'll sell this five for two victory points, because it's half rounded down. And then uh, that will get me five money. Right? Yep. And then... And we win. And then pass. I retrieve workers. I don't think this matters, but I'm still going to do it anyway. I'm not sure if you're supposed to do this. But I think it matter for ties. I think you're doing the main game because there's like ties with money and wine yeah. values and stuff. Age grapes and wines. Okay, I have a four value wine for drinking later. Uh, discard down to five cards. Done. Uh, collect residual payments of one. And then end the year. Done. So then we look. Literally, it's the like, best end game condition ever. Did everyone at the table get to 25 or higher? If no, all of you lose. Did you get to 10 as a group on influence? If no, you all lose. If you're all at those points or above, you all win. So straightforward. Not count up your grapes and you get points for this. And how many points are you on the points track? Add those points with how many Lyra you have and how many blue cards are worth points. And then check your, your tokens. If you have more yellows than blues, you get points. And then your grapes get points. Like the stupid Euro point salad stuff. Hate it. Hate it. This does not have that. As soon as the year ends, it's like, did we win or lose? Yes or no? You probably know even in that last year when it starts, right? But uh, very cool. But I like how the table talk and you can like kind of figure out, oh no, Bob over here and Jim over there, they can't get to it. We need to help them. So you need to take your grande to trade with them to get them the wine ordered so Jim over here can fill it and actually get the points he needs. Because even though I want to get up to 30, so we get an influence, we don't really need that. So maybe I should sacrifice stuff I have and an action I have to go and give the cards I need so that Jim can, you know, do what he needs to do. So I like that whole like, you're only as strong as your weakest link in this. Mm -hmm. Very neat. Very neat way to do it. Very different than most games you're playing co-op. Like in a dungeon crawler, we're playing co-op. It's get to the final boss, beat them to, the, to win the level, right? If, you know, let's say a player named, I don't know, Rob is like wandering and trying to get all the chests so he can get better loot so we can win the harder quest later. Maybe he wasn't involved in the boss fight because he showed up late and only got one hit on the boss or whatever. But as long as you win as a group, you win. But, you know, maybe Rob didn't look like he was doing his part there, but Rob was more forward thinking for the whole campaign, let's say. Let's just say that happened in a game, right? Uh, theoretically. No games in particular. Yeah, no games, no games in particular, right? But uh, in this game, it's like literally like if I was, you know, like dilly dallying behind and it's like if I couldn't also do 25 damage on the boss, we just lose, you know, like every player has to do 25 damage on the boss. That's how I look at this. And that's so different. I don't know if there's other games that do that kind of thing. Where like, you have to help the lower player. Like you have to help the weakest link to make sure you win. Very neat. Very neat. But I yes, this is our first win, our second time playing. Uh, I feel good now, cause I was like, man, we, and I know it's expected. I read online after I was like, did we mess up a rule? I went looking for rules on BGG and I was like, we are playing the intro. Then that's how I learned about the print and play even easier version of Green Gully that's really meant for players who are kind of struggling. Because again, the problem with this game is what you've learned in Viticulture and how you win and get high points in Viticulture, it's 
you have to throw out some of that and kind of rethink your way you're approaching this with the whole co-op and everyone has to win kind of thing. You can't just sit there and slowly gain points and play for 17 rounds if you want and then boost at the end. Right. You literally have six rounds to make it done and you have to make sure everyone at the table is getting it done. Because you're all part of the same family business, traveling to different continents, trying to expand your business and, and handle it. And again, this event deck is the recommended starting, but there is an easier version that you can print and play or get as a promo pack from Stonemaier Games that's even easier. It's the same thing, but they have like abilities on them that are like really easy, like really helpful to win. But it's still challenging. Like there are people online who are like, I played the promo one and I still lost. Oh wow. But, I, but I've won, like crushed a hundred different games of viticulture I played. And then I come to this and I'm getting spanked, right? Because you have to think different in this, you have to play different. So if you're just looking for viticulture co-op or you're just playing against an AI, it's not really that. It's like you're playing group engine building is the way it kind of works, right? Yeah. So yeah. like you have to make sure the communal engine you're doing, all the busted spots you're doing, and everyone's weaknesses are getting covered by each other so that you're all slowly going up in points and eventually boosting. And you this this turn track, the whole thing where like instead of just stealing a spot and trying to grab it that I love from the other version, you are like literally like, man, if we don't work together and line up our turn order correctly so that someone puts out a tile and then someone else can take advantage of it, which then, you know, just more efficiencies and more game breaking things are happening where you're just like getting more money for your single worker, getting more wines made, getting more cards drawn. If you're not making sure everyone at the table is kind of taking advantage of these spots and like opening up these oval tiles to help everyone be able to get and do those and taking advantage of whatever these cards present to you and, and cheating with these, you're falling apart. So some people might not like, and that's the one part I don't like as much. I think I would probably not really prefer to play this co-op ever, to be honest. Because I love base Viticulture or Viticulture with Tuscany. I love the cooperative deck building in this game. I love building my own engine. I like not being pressured by time, only pressured by the other players. So it's like, you know, if they're going slow in building, you can kind of go slow in building. And I like how every game's different based on how the players at the table are playing it and what cards they're seeing. I think I just love base Viticulture so much that if I'm going to pull this box out, I, I don't think I'm choosing the co-op version, but I want to try it. I thought it might be fun if you have people who pl you've played competitive worker placement games with and they don't like competing against you because you're like too competitive or kind of sometimes a sore loser or a jerk, you know, when you play competitive games because uh, you, your competitive nature can be too much. Um, maybe you just want to play Viticulture that bad, bringing this to like a group that maybe is more co-op friendly, but you just love playing this game and seeing it on the table. This might be the way you get Viticulture to hit the table more because other players that maybe don't like the competitive have a way of playing co-op. But then they have to be willing to lose and understand it and play and play and play to get better at it. But if so you think co-op when you lose, it's not so bad because you lose together. Yes, So it doesn't true. feel as devastating. But if that feels bad for everyone at the table and you don't want to play it again, that could be a bad thing, right? That's yeah. too challenging? Yeah. Because I, I don't know. But then again, so let's let's check the... Um, so So the other thing is, which we haven't really looked at, remember there is other continents, right? So there is like, you know, uh, and they all have a different difficulty. Maybe I can find that in the book. Oh, where was I? I just want to know while you're looking for that, that yep. one turn that I did take the victory point on this little track, uh, I definitely needed to do that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad so I did that cool. like round three or something. Or uh, else I would have lost, I think. This? I just want to show you the, um, the different continents quickly. If I can just find there. It's in here. It explains that I think it was in here. Or maybe I read about it online, I forget. I don't remember being in there. Oh, right here, I found it, I found it. So here on the right is that little table. So there is seven continents that come with the box. And again, there's a promo easier version to play that you probably should play with players. It's too bad they didn't include the promo one in the box. Instead, you got to print and play it or order it separately and you know cut out and all that stuff. Um, but Green Gully introductory, and then Asia is supposedly easy, so it's actually harder than what we just played. Then there's Oceana, there's a bunch of mediums, and then Africa when you're ready to like, you know, be crushed. But the cool part is, it's not just playing it the way we played Green Gully. It was six cards, we played them in order, every time you played it could be that way. Or, you shuffle them, is as you see on the left there, it talks about this. 
you you uh, under D set up there, event deck, for your first game in each continent, they say take cards one to six and line them up. And some continents come with a lot more cards to add variability. So you take the six cards, you put them one to six, and it slowly progresses. And, and it makes sense what it's doing and explains it with the rules card and all that, sets up some story. But once you've played that continent once and you get a flavor for it, you then take all the cards from the continent. With Green Gully, there is only six, so it's kind of a bad example, but you still can play Green Gully infinitely by just shuffling them up. And then you place that down. So you don't know when it's going to say, and that's why I think some of those ones felt bad when they were coming later in the game. You're like, oh, that would have been nice last turn. But what you're supposed to do after you play it once, shuffle it up now. And it'll give you some of the bonuses that you want early in the game. Some of them later when you'd rather have them. But taking advantage of these cards is one of the things. So for example, look at this one. This is, uh, I don't know, Europe, Europe, I guess. It's got the Eiffel Tower on it. So Europe, for example. Look how many cards come with Europe. Okay. And there is numbered one to six in here. Look at all these. They're beautiful. Got a little art on. But in Europe, uh, oh, they're actually numbered all the way up to like nine, 10, 11, what whatever. Oh, I don't story, know. Story. Yeah, but there's like extra cards. So like, those are probably event cards. These are probably a side deck of some kind of mechanic and it changes the way it plays. I don't Separate know. the 12 white, yeah. It, it, it's, each one, each continent plays differently. So what we showed you is just so basic. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, what we showed you is just a basic introductory learning how to play, learning the few new mechanics. But once you play that, that's where the game probably shines. So like, I want to play it more just to see those. So I'm not going to say like, I'll never play Viticulture World again. But man, playing that introductory wasn't enough to make me go, yeah, Viticulture Co-op's awesome. I'm always going to play it that way. No. But, uh, and here you go. This is, uh, I think, the way, uh, this is from St. Louis, Missouri, right? In the U.S. What are the options? Does and I, th I, think, I think this is where uh, oh, no. Stonemeyer Games is based. I think this is where Stonemeyer Games is based, if I understand correctly. I remember there's like an update about uh, holding some kind of convention or, or something in that local area. I remember way back in the day. But I think that's why you put that on the back. This is North America. Uh, North America. So that's kind of weird to put for North America because like who the hell knows that? But uh, yeah, there's way more, obviously. <laughs> oh, I am correct? Okay, perfect. Because I was like, that's a weird thing to pick for North America. Right? Is that not a weird place to pick? But obviously it's like related to the company, so that makes sense. Kind of funny. Um, but yeah, what are these? What the hell are these? It's a puzzle. I don't know if we're spoiling what, it. What, what the hell are these, right? I don't know. But I'm just showing you <laughs> some of the stuff in the box that we haven't experienced. So it, it's, it's, it's a much larger expansion than I'm showing you. It's like I can't, I can't play all this in one stream, right? So maybe we'll try uh, the easy... Uh, what was it? The easy one is Asia. I don't know what Asia does. And then there's the whole solo bot stuff. There's a whole deck for solo play and components for solo play, whatever the hell these all mean. And uh, these are for solo, specifically for solo tiles with reminders and everything. And uh, that's exists in the expansion. So it's kind of neat. There's a lot here. And like, yeah, it would take you hours to experience it all. It would take you, if you were to play each one once, that's seven playthroughs of trying each one, just trying them once. Not to mention shuffling up the cards and trying to actually beat some of the harder ones, plus the solo variant of it, which I'm assuming you can add any one of these with solo, I don't know. But yeah, and then there's the whole solo rules. So it, it, it's like quite a bit here, I think. I don't remember how much this expansion was. We did buy it at our local game store. Uh, I don't remember. We bought it a while ago. I don't ago. remember. We bought it a bit ago. I probably yeah. bought it like three or four months ago. Maybe less. Maybe less. But it's just been sitting there waiting to be played, and I thought, oh, let's play Viticulture on New Year's Eve. We're going to be drinking some wine. It'll be good times. But yeah, I just thought it's neat. So again, this isn't what I've shown you today is just a taste of some of the mechanics and the flow of the game. But I'm not sure. I, I haven't played further into some of these um, some of these other continents, but they definitely look more involved and more interesting and would spice it up a little more. So maybe that, maybe one of those is like the best way to play it co-op, in, in my opinion. I don't know. Yeah, that was literally an introductory scenario yeah. where it kind of like walked you through yeah. how things in this game work. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But yeah, just just throwing out there, I just want to show this off. It's, it's neat. It's mm -hmm. like making Viticulture co-op. I never thought that was something I would ever care for. And when I saw the expansion announced, I was like, well, that's weird. 
But yeah, I guess there's a whole side of the board gaming hobby that there's players that hate playing competitive games. I know of these players, and I'm the opposite. I love competitive games, but I like co-op games if the game is done right. But the problem with co-op games, just like solo or co-op video games, is the game is only usually as good as not just the mechanics that you're playing, but the challenge of the game has to be the right level or be scalable or be interesting. And sometimes coding the enemy or the AI or the card deck you're playing against or whatever, uh, you know, sometimes there's flaws in it and it's not interesting. So like you play a game a couple times in a video game and you get to learn the level and the boss and the how the AI spawns and their behavior. And you find out the programmers didn't handle every situation. Then that's how people cheese it and break it and find it's easy. And then they just get bored of it and they walk away, right? Um, so playing Viticulture, the beauty of this game, it's just like, you know, one of those euro -y worker placement engine building games. I love engine building. And uh, yeah, I like competing against other players. But there's a lot of people out there who won't buy Viticulture because of that. And now there's a co-op option. And the solo built in too. So it wasn't needed, in my opinion, no. Is it cool that it exists for certain people? Yes. Is it the best way they designed it? The best way you could do Viticulture co-op? I don't know. It's different. And I have to applaud them for coming up with this cooperative engine building thing just to try to get the highest score versus let's just make a deck that you flip over and it puts workers on the board and you're trying to beat them shuffling and stealing cards and placing workers to block you. That some worker placement games do for their solo. And it's like, you know, a 10 card deck and it gets kind of like, it's kind of lame. But I think this was different. And I have to applaud them for coming up with this I would never think of making Viticulture co-op this way. A new board with uh, engines and innovation tiles. I don't play, I guess, a lot of Euro games and stuff. I don't know if this has been done before. Many times before, I don't know. But uh, it's neat. I don't know, Mel. What do you think about it? What do you think about it? Um, I actually really enjoy it. I love the puzzle of trying to figure out how we are going to beat the game which I think is really cool. I'm yeah. definitely super excited to try some of the different continents. Uh, like we said, we only played the introductory one, which gives you a taste, but I feel like you said it's not... A taste, you said? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. It gives you a taste of how the game is supposed to be played, but I feel like there's more, and I'm excited to try some of those continents and see where it goes. One thing I, when you were talking, I was kind of thinking of, this would be interesting. We've played Viticulture the way it was designed, right? The yeah. competitive version, but imagine... We hadn't, and we started with this. And that's how I was kind of thinking about it as you were talking, right? It's like, for some people, they may want to start with this to get somebody into then playing the co-op, learning the rules, learning how to play, and then take it competitive. Yeah. Which would be interesting. Because we come from it the other way, so it's a little bit different. And, and that's how I think most people will hit this. They'll right, buy Essential it's... Edition and they start looking at expansions. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, wait, there's a co-op. Right. I don't know how many people are going to find out there's a co-op expansion first and go, oh, okay, let's buy that expansion no, but and maybe, we need the base game no, for no, it. No, 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 I don't think that's the case necessarily, but maybe yeah. somebody that's played it, maybe with other people, and then they're like, okay, yeah. well, let's play this co-op with this person that I want to bring like, in. right from the start. Right from the start. Mm. So maybe I've played it, but I'm going to bring someone in, play co-op, show them the game, yep, that makes and sense. then go out from there, which would be interesting. And yep. I can see it being a totally different experience in that way it's a good way to teach i guess too right yeah because like, you're kind of working together everything is out in the open so i definitely like that um i definitely think the six rounds that's an interesting choice six rounds is a challenge yeah and there that clock that's like ticking in your head of like okay i can only, I only have three more rounds i only have two more rounds like and that's it's more stress. i saw it mentioned before this is more of a, a design usually used in solo variants for games yeah is like, just making the solo player have a limited amount of time to try to get the most points yeah that, that you see that in a lot of games where they're just like you know let's make kind of an ai deck or something or just let the player run wild, but they have to try to in 10 points, get the most, or in 10 rounds or whatever, 12 rounds, six rounds, whatever it is, get the most points. I don't know how much I like this in the co-op though. Oh, uh, Piot gives gifted a membership. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you for the support. The RC. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> nice. Thank you. <laughs> um, and the last thing that I'll say about it too is similar to what you were saying that I like the design of this, and I like that this really, really feels like a co-op game. You yes. need to work yes. together. You can't, some co-op games we've played and we've, we've played it before where it's kind of like, okay, I'll do my turn, you do your turn. 
yeah, the decisions that we make are, are important, but like we can probably still win. But this, you need to work together or you will not win. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. So I like it. But I, I, again, and like, I uh, do want to see where Imagine a game where we're like, everyone's hitting this. Uh, oh, I can't. This point, uh, hitting 30, and they're each getting a challenge point. Like, that's the, that's the goal. Like, trying to work on green over and over again so we can, like, both of us or whoever, how many players, all, everyone's hitting this for an influence. Hitting 30 is a thing. Or at least a couple players at the table hitting it, right? Just to get to some bump influence. That up, yeah. But the more players you play with, the harder it is. So then, like, some players have to do it. Yeah. I don't know. It's neat. It feels like God. It, it is a bit of culture, but to me, it feels like a different game. And again, at first, when I first played it, I'll be honest, one of the negatives I had was just like with regular bit of culture, the random decks where you just oh, yeah. keep drawing cards and you're wasting your actions and time is passing, but you're getting junk. But in regular bit of culture, that's fine because you have time. So you can toss those cards, get more cards, play some, whatever. And as long as the other players aren't blowing past you, but sometimes they can just draw the perfect cards and have the perfect grapes that fill the perfect wine orders, it happens. Yep. And it feels kind of bad, but there are ways to get out of that. In this, though, at first, when I, was, I drew crap when I played yesterday, I was like, nothing was working for me. I was getting so frustrated. And I, then I clicked after we played. I went and read online like about the game more and stuff. And then I understood that, oh, that's right. We all need to win. So if I'm drawing crap cards, we weren't taking advantage of the trading enough. No, we weren't. So, and the other players at the table have to trade with you to get those crap cards from you and turn them into something and give you stuff you need. So like Mel could have gave me the wine I needed to fill some huge order I got that I can't fill. So if Mel's pumping out high value wines and I'm just drawing purple cards and I'm getting high value stuff, we could work on the trading for her to give me the wines so I can fill my order so that I can get points even if I have trouble getting a large seller going, you know, stuff like that which I think is really cool. So you are trying to build an engine at the table. Not everyone's trying to all get their large seller and everyone's trying to fill big wine orders. You can't do that, I don't think. I think you can if things work out. Mm -hmm. And it all depends on these innovation tiles. But the idea that this game felt different too, based on which innovation tiles showed up, even though this was all the same order for us, yep. the innovation tiles showed up different and we learned to value these more. Even though the rule book right away tells you, do not ignore these, you will lose. Like in the early game, first half of the game, these need to happen one or two times in a two player game. And there is, there is some recommendations online in BGG. There was a post we read about where someone was explaining one of the play testers describing like how you have to think differently. And some of the things like if you ignore the innovation tiles, you ignore working on the turn order and the bonuses and who's gonna go first. If you ignore who's gonna take care of the influence track, if you ignore helping the lower player out, you know, if you ignore trying to help other players who are having their weaknesses showing and trying to fill those weaknesses and take them away from them or give them what they need, you're all going to fail. And that's really neat. And then abusing these tiles, like get them out there and abuse them as much as you can will help you then get break the game and get enough points going to get there, right? And it's not uncommon to fire off 10 plus points in the last year. So don't stress if you're only like, you know, halfway on the track going into the final year. Because if you properly line things up and the event cards give you ways to do influence and give you ways to cheat the game a little bit, do not sleep on these cards either. So everything that's new to the game, mm -hmm. do not sleep on. Once I read that, I was like, oh, here I am being a dummy. I'm playing my own solar. When I first played this, I yeah. was doing multiplayer solitaire like you do in normal viticulture and things weren't working out for me. And then we did trade like once or twice, but I wasn't, I wasn't thinking like, wait, I don't have to be planting things if I don't want to. I could focus on the card strategy, which does work in normal viticulture. But in this, it's like, maybe I'm the one who just works on making white grapes. Mm -hmm. And if you find a white grape order, give it to me. If I find a red, we trade. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that, right? It's like, you build that building. Okay, I'll make this amazing. Maybe I'll never go there and you just abuse it to get points. Which is what happened. Yeah. And that's the thing I was going to say it, too, sorry, is that we played this yesterday with the mentality that we had learned from playing viticulture. and. I mean, our points kind of look like something like this, yep. right? Where we were like both like two away was so close. But after playing that and seeing like, oh, I get it now. Like we had to play it wrong to realize how to play and how this game is a little bit different and how you have mm -hmm. to think differently. And that trade definitely, I think, was the clutch of this game. Being able to like you gave me wines that you didn't mm -hmm. have the, yep. the buildings for. 
you gave me money, I gave you wine from my sellers that you didn't have so you could fulfill cards, things like that. I think that was definitely one of the um, one of the MVPs was like being able to trade. Yeah, and Janet mentioning in the chat, I, I thought it was in the rules. Maybe I read stuff online too, and Jamie was in the in the forums on BGG posting about the game for people's questions. So I was reading a lot about that last night and this morning too. So some of it's not in the rules and some I read on BGG. It's hard to remember where, but Janet is saying, if I recall, some have mentioned going seven years if you find six too hard. So there is ways, obviously, to house rule the game a little bit to tweak it, right? So we could have just said we get one more year. Yeah, like then you move it off the board or yeah. something. Yeah, you can definitely tweak it for sure. Or just putting the cards in a certain order, you know, or you could you could do the innovation tiles where you divide them up into two stacks, kind of like some other games where like games that use loot decks that put in high level loot in there, you're not allowed to use early in the game, but you still could draw it and it just is dead. That gets house ruled in some games to help smooth out the flow of the game. So you could take um, some of these innovation tiles, the rectangular ones, that are more early game stuff, like maybe summery stuff. Oh, and shuffle it in the top half? Yeah, or maybe you do a summer and a winter, you know, or something that's like a better odds that something shows up early more often mm -hmm. to help smooth out the game, you know, that could happen. You know what I'm thinking? Yeah, they probably did play test it in yeah, yeah. six years. But you know what I'm thinking? I'm curious also to see how the continents feel different in the event cards. Like, yeah, what I could no they idea. do to make it feel different and not feel boring? No idea. So I'm curious. Yeah. We'll leave that for you to discover on your own. <laughs> but we might play it again. Maybe we'll play one more. I am curious yeah. to play like one that's not introductory. Yeah, yeah we sure, do Asia. But... We could try Asia. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's definitely a fun game, do you think? Yeah, yeah it's fine. It's neat. I like how it's different. Mm -hmm. At first, I was like, I, I don't like this time track. It's annoying because I love Infiniculture just playing with the other players. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm a more uh, social, kind of like want to play with other players. That's what drew me into board gaming. I like competitive or even co-op where it's a lot of table talk and working together to solve the puzzle. I love that. And that's what you have to do in this game. Mm -hmm. But the time crunch, I don't know, man. Getting your, trying to beat the high score idea. It's not really here. It's just like hit that and win. But well, it is kind of. That's kind of what it is. It is kind of like right? that, right? Like... And, and that's not my favorite. But uh, it, it's something. It's cool. Mm -hmm. But it, it's like definitely players who play solo or play this kind of game. Um, it is on par with other stuff. That's fine, I think. Yeah. But it's neat. It's neat. I like it. But yeah. I, again, I love co-op games, so yeah, yeah. I I don't mind competitive at all. I'll play competitive games too. But I think I think this is fun. But I, you know what, I'm I'm interested to see because this tutorial is introductory, but it was challenge. Yeah, and that's why they made so, like, a new can you introductory what one. Hard is. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, we'll have like <laughs> ten points by the end of the game. But that's the thing. And that's the thing. You play over and over again. You start learning like what to value. Like yeah. if you see certain tiles come up, you know this is the path we're gonna go. Yeah. And when certain cards flip over, it's like take advantage of it or don't because like this, you're min maxing everything, right? Right. Which every player at the table has to get involved. So it's like there is replayability there, but you're probably gonna have to lose a lot of games before you start winning some you know that's what i feel here but i think knows? i think one of the things too that was noted in on bgg was sometimes you have to sacrifice your own engine to help someone else and you may yeah, yeah. mention that yeah. which is kind of like what rob did at the one point when he was like am i going to use this and he's not he has one or two buildings right but for me i have a ton of buildings so it's giving me a lot yeah. of money so it's like i have to he had to sacrifice to put that one down to help me yep. to you know do other things yep. so. like we all have our separate workers but yeah. you need to make sure you're using those workers to get victory points generated for the right Everything. players yeah yeah, yeah. Which is, cool. Which is cool. Yeah, that's definitely cool. But yeah, so the poll that was running oh, yeah. the majority of the stream there, uh, just out of curiosity, I'm going to close it. Oh, it almost got to 100 votes. Wow. Wow. Uh, are you playing board games on New Year's Eve slash day? 77% of those voters say yes. So they're doing it right. Nice. The rest of you, what the hell are you doing? What is wrong with you? No, I'm just kidding. Well, it's there might good. be a few that are working. I know. Some or or out work, having parties. Yep. Part in a dark area with lots of lights, a DJ, and alcohol flowing to pop out a board game and just play it. I understand. <laughs> I understand. Might not be the best situation. Or in the back of a cab or an Uber, you know, after a night of dancing and drinking. You don't want to just bust out a card game in the back of a, a, a you know, uh, a car. Um, yeah, sometimes. I understand. I totally understand. Brett says, does watching you play count? Uh, uh that is fine. That if you're is... playing along with us, sure. Yeah. No, no. Just watching us and being involved in the chat does. That's okay. That counts. You I need to I, change your answer, Brett. I won't make fun of you for that. <laughs> you're fine. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Brian has a, a thing for you there. Uh, oh, will Rob continue to whine about a, 
about a game about wine? Will Mel deal with Rob's sour grapes? Well, I have one more bottle before 2023. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, man. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, Viticulture is still a classic game, still like quality. Uh, the world expansion, all the expansions I played with this game uh, are solid. It's all solid stuff. Um, but again, I still don't think co-op Viticulture is for everyone, but it's cool to have it as an option for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it won't hit with everyone. I'm curious, like solo-wise, how it plays and feels, because maybe that's where this shines too. You think? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. Or maybe it sucks. And maybe like the cooperative teamwork thing is where maybe like a higher player count is where this shines. And I don't know. Having everyone at the table throwing workers all around because you get the extra spot. But then spot it's harder. Open. You have to get everybody to 25 But that's points. a part of the fun. That's just it adds to the puzzle and the, and the you know, the, the puzzle solving. More players uh, looking at it from different angles kind of like, you know. Will Mel's solo playthrough with wine? You may be on to something. <laughs> I don't play solo. I never played a single game solo board game yet. Okay, see, paint Jonathan painting minis. That's fine too. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. You're interacting that, with the game. I, yeah. See, now my poll is totally. Yeah, it doesn't need to be playing games. But if you're like painting, punching out stuff, putting together your storage solution for a board game, sorting your collection, crying over the giant mountain of games you have to play, mm -hmm. dusting off old ones, whatever it is, I was, should have put something like that. But I can only fit so much in the question but yeah the painting minis does count yeah and all those things i just mentioned it's playing adjacent but the poll is closed so don't worry about it <laughs> but yeah so a lot of people are i was surprised i was surprised but yes i always ever since we got in this hobby either new year's eve we're playing something at somebody's house uh yeah. many times we've done that on stream and off stream mm -hmm. or if we can't do it at night because we're out doing something or we're chilling in or whatever uh, the next day is definitely because it's usually a holiday for most of the people we know. So they are coming over in the afternoon and we're playing some big long game. Yep. That is usually a thing. But tomorrow we're actually going to be streaming and we're going to be playing Super Hardcore, My Little Pony, Adventures in Equestria, the deck building game. Super short title um, by Renegade Game Studios. Just chilling, just having some fun. Join us tomorrow, noon Eastern, I believe. I think so. Should it stay noon Eastern or should it become 1 p.m.? That one extra hour, if we end up staying up late tonight, that one extra hour. I mean, hour, it depends on how much more wine we're having after streaming. Yeah, <laughs> I might bump the stream back one hour because if it's not already, I probably did already. I don't remember what time we made it for. Now I need to look. I got to know my stuff, but I never do. Let me see, let me see. Oh, Bob, that is a thing that we've done as well. Bob says, my only issue playing a game on New Year's Eve is missing midnight because I was in the middle of a move. That happens. Yeah, we've done that before when we're playing at... Yeah. But who cares? Yeah, but it's okay. Uh, but who cares? Yeah, I, I, we've done that too. Where like we were streaming, playing, and then someone in the chat's like, oh, guys, it's 12 now. And we're like, mm -hmm. oh, whoops, uh, we forgot. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to change to 1 no, p.m. No, we are not kidding. We are 100% serious that we are playing My Little Pony the Deck Builder game. It's actually decent. It's actually not bad. It, it's designed by a couple people, uh, and one of them is TC Petty the third, who designed uh, my father's work and also designed the GI Joe deck building we, game we played, which I thought was going to be a cheesy hunk of crap and turned out to be a pretty solid deck building game for mass market play. Um, but still, you can tell a gamer designed it and gamers play it. Um, but yeah, they made a My Little Pony version, mm -hmm. which. Seems like it's made by gamers and it's a gamer's game, uh, but can be played with families-ish. Yeah, like we played with our daughter. Yeah, but she's 12. She's I don't know. If, 13, sorry. Wow. I don't know what day it is or that's year. Okay, that's okay. But anyways, my bad. Um, I'm horrible. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk about that game tomorrow more, yeah. I guess. Um, but we'll just have some fun hanging out, chilling. Mm -hmm. I'm sure most of our audience is going to be like, what the hell is this guy doing and not click on it? That's totally fine. That's fine. We're or people will click on it like, what the heck are we playing? Yeah. Like, and no, we're not dressing up or anything. So we'll get your hopes up. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did play the G.I. Joe one. There is a stream of that yep. on the internets. And we may play the expansion in the future. Uh, the publisher did reach out and said they were going to send it to us, but 
we never got it. So I need to follow up with them. And they were talking about sending us a Transformers one, I think, or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But they have a Power Rangers deck building game. They, they just keep pumping out these IP deck building games. And they all play a little different. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I uh, will see the pony one tomorrow. We'll have some fun with it. Join us for that. And it's just going to be chill. We're just chilling, playing a casual, fun, fun game, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And you guys can play along. I'll show you how the game works. And if you have like a daughter at home or someone into My Little Pony, you know, or you know a brony. Yeah, not even daughters. Could be, if yeah. you know, know some brony friends, you could definitely uh, play this game with them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's just on the level of a modern board game with, you know, mechanics we know and, you know, kind of the quality we know. So, yep. yeah, it's not really casual, actually. Yeah, it's serious. It's yeah. For sure. yeah. Definitely made by gamers for gamers, I think. <laughs> Rob, any unicorn costume? Must see. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Brony? What the hell is happening? Uh, Kanji, if you don't oh, know what a brony is. Google it. Go watch a documentary on it. Yeah. My daughter was heavily into My Little Pony when it was on TV many years ago. This version we're playing. The like, the I don't know which generation of My Little Pony it's called. Let's say the 2000s. Whatever it was. My daughter was watching this thing and fell in love. So I had to know about which ponies to buy and what to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm searching up pony toys. I'm going to pony stores. I'm finding My Little Pony was super crazy, super hot. And I learned, my daughter actually found out, I think, about My Little Pony conventions or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think it was her. And then I looked it up, and then I learned at My Little Pony conventions, there was a huge fan base of males who watch My Little Pony, and I don't know, some of it's a little, little weird. Some and of it gets strange. But some of it gets fine. strange, but some people are just watching it with their kids, or they're just like the show. And there's a bunch of dudes that are just fans of My Little Pony, and they're call themselves bronies. Mm -hmm. And it's a thing. They do cosplay and get together. They make games. There was that My Little Pony CCG, and you know that was made to target that audience. I this which we played this yes, and this deck building game might be targeting that audience. I don't know, um, but yeah, mm. yeah. If you're not sure what that, it's a real thing. There's like yeah. there was like a subculture. I don't know if it's still around, but they were they had conventions. The uh, voice actors would go, and some of the the um, like celebrities and stuff. You know, yeah, I looked into yep. it. So my daughter wanted to go to like uh, My Little Pony thing. She was but I think so they were into all it. Quite far. Yeah, they were they were kind of far. But uh, yeah, Brony's a thing. Oh, it's third generation. It's third generation. Thanks, yeah, yeah. But they make like fan art and fan things and mm -hmm. fan toys. I think even the fans came up with a pony. Oh, yeah? And, and it got put into the show and stuff. I, yeah, it's like, it's pretty crazy. I do have to agree, Daniel. The show is really well made. We did have to watch yes. a lot of it when our, child, yes. when our daughter was young. On repeat. It was not terrible, I have to tell you. Yeah. It was not bad. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely good quality, like, animation and voice acting. And the and writing stuff. was well done. And it had good messages and things. Like, yeah. definitely, I, was, I felt okay my daughter watching it mm -hmm. and, like, learning from it and stuff. It was definitely not trash. It was definitely, like, kind of, like, educational and, like, definitely friendly stuff. But... Mm -hmm. But it was funny too. Like there was like definitely. Yeah, it was well done, well yeah, yeah. written. Mm -hmm. And there's like an actor, the actor from like I think Star Trek. One of the older actors from Star Trek is like the voice of this like funny character, like this evil guy character on the show that I remember. I don't remember what the actor was. I think he's from like um, maybe Next Generation or something. Daniel knows. Daniel know. But yeah. Yeah, then, then we got the deck building game. My daughter saw it and was like, oh, I want to play that with you. And she won't play board games with us, but she saw it. And the nostalgia just showered all over her <laughs> and pulled her right in. So she sat down on Christmas with me and I got to play a board game with my daughter on Christmas. Blown away by that. Yeah. Best gift ever. Like no complaints yep, at all. No complaints. Sat like, there, not like, oh. sat there, put her phone away, let me teach her it, played with me, wanted to crush it, got super competitive. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was like, this is awesome. Yep. This is awesome. So yeah. Anyways. Yeah. That's tomorrow. Yeah, that's tomorrow. Join us with that. We'll take a look at the game. We'll talk about the game. We'll have some fun. Come in, hang out with the chat. We'll have some drinks. We'll just we'll just goof around on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. Sorry, New Year's Day. Um, but yeah. Daniel says it reminded me of the cartoon of my young like Batman and Spider Man. Yes. Yeah. That are like, kind of well. Yeah, I don't think art in those ones have stood up, but like that have like the the message always, you know, at the end or like GI Joe, like. Transformers, they always like have that message 
you know, they're trying to teach and then drop like some educational thing on you, you know, so they're not basically just a complete toy commercial. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so they can stay on the air and parents don't get mad that so they're actually teaching something. But yeah. Uh, John, oh, uh, Daniel says it's John Delancey, the guy who, who does Discord and does Q. Is Q, Q the character, is the character's name on Star Trek, right? Mm. I can't remember. I can't remember if he was also in the one that I watched or not. Oh, he says he's one of my favorite from Star Trek, so yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, in the documentary, that actor is like, I, I forget, he's like the host of it or something, but he's like a voice actor in the show. He also goes to the conventions and all that stuff. And like, yeah, he's, he's a funny guy. Definitely a funny guy. Uh, but yeah, go look into that if you're curious. And then join tomorrow's stream and you'll understand if I mention, <laughs> if I mention the word brony, you'll understand what I'm talking about. If you're curious. Might be a little weird, but uh, I mean... It's okay, everybody has their things. So. Yeah, every, everyone has their like hardcore geeky mm -hmm. geek, geekdoms. And uh, ours is like board gaming and yep. Game of Thrones and stuff. Um, so yeah, if some people's is a cartoon, not no judging, judging not judging. It's totally cool. But yeah, it's just a thing that, yeah, you might want to might wanna understand because I think that's what maybe they're targeting with that deck building game is like that kind of audience maybe. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. <laughs> Mike says, Mel, how many times have you caught Rob watching ponies on his phone? I haven't I watched the show. Have ever. <laughs> I haven't watched the show since my daughter stopped watching it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we have. But I'm telling you, time. like, I'm that type of parent. I grew up and my my had to make sure, like, how many times do you have to explain for a grandparent or a parent who's so out of touch with your favorite hobby and you have to try to explain to them the exact video game you want? Not this video game with a similar title, not this game for a totally wrong console, which I've had all these things happen. Grandma gives me the game and I go, thanks, grandma. And it doesn't even fit into my Nintendo. It's for Sega. And I then secretly have to return it later. And my mom has to take care of it. And it's like a very upsetting Christmas. And like, so when I am a parent now, I make sure when my daughter's into something, I'm doing the research. I want to be that parent that like knows I'm getting her the right thing. So like, I'm going to look into like, is this pony that's left on the shelf the sucky pony toy <laughs> that's just left that over? Wants? Yeah, is this the character in the show nobody cares about? You know, like back in Ninja Turtles, like everyone buy all the turtles and there's all the random like enemies nobody cares about and you get those at discount later. Um, you know, like that that's the thing. So like I made sure I understood like which little playset was the best, which is the one they're into, which are her favorite characters when she's watching the show. Which ones is she's asking for little dolls and stuffed animals of? And then I go online and try to find some cool variant of it that she would really like and stuff like that. Yeah, and then that's how I found all this stuff. And I remember being like very into trying to make sure, because I thought it was a cool thing for her to like love, be a kid and love your fandom is the exact way I was with Transformers. And, um, you know, like Transformers, G.I. Joe, Ninja Turtles, all that stuff. All of my friends were into it. Playground, you know, we're all into it collecting cards and toys and watching the cartoon, talking about it the next day, like super into that stuff. So to see my daughter into that, and then I want to make sure like I'm fueling that because it's just fun to have a passion and a hobby, right? Mm -hmm. And as I know, I'm like sitting here <laughs> working in my passion and hobby. So I'm like living the dream, but. Um, You're a good example to her. Yeah, I like, I like fueling that. So I really got into that stuff and made sure I understood it all. But no, I did not dress up. No, I did not go to conventions. No, I did not watch the show without her. And no, I don't play with the toys when she's sleeping, I swear. She did dress up as one of the ponies for Halloween one year, that, and I made her costume. Yeah. And Mr. Bacon Pants says, as a parent, I also agree that it's important to show interest in what your kids are into. Yep. Yes. Exactly. Unless it's stupid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> also, also, it's good to know just in case that thing your kids are into is kind of like not shouldn't they shouldn't be oh, into. Yeah. It might be like warping them a little bit or might not be as quality as you think. It might just be turning their brain to mush. Yeah. Um, Which there is things that you have to yeah. tell your kids like, yeah, this is for kids, but yep. sorry. Yep, yep, yep. Transformers, yes, really transformed my life, 100%. Yes, I own a car that turns into a robot. That is, that's <laughs> definitely, it had, had to have it, right? I just had to have it. 
Yes, 100% you need to protect them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep, 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 yep. Mike says, my host was Thomas, Power Rangers, Toy Story, and G.I. Joe. We need to talk about all this tomorrow's stream. I, this, oh, yeah. So we'll this, have like a I like stream. This, I like this discussion, but this should not be happening at the end of a bit of culture video. <laughs> but at this point, people probably have already tuned yes. out. So tomorrow, 1 p.m., I change the time. 1 p.m. Eastern. I just changed the time of the stream because I have to... I definitely don't have My Little Pony scenes just ready to stream a My Little Pony game. No. Haven't really streamed something with that theme before, so I'm going to have to put something together for it. Oh, so I'm going to be spending a couple hours in the morning setting up a streaming for that game, plus rereading the rules. We haven't played it in a week. Um, but join us for that. We're going to have a casual stream. We could talk about nostalgia all over the place, cartoons, bronies, deck building games, Renegade Game Studios, the, you know, the game in general. And just have fun hanging out in the chat. As so. well as everything you guys did tonight through New Year's. Yes. We talk about all that. And stuff. New Year's stuff too, yeah. And, uh, you know, and those who got to watch football all day in, the, in, in America, in our Canada, I guess, too, or wherever you watch, if anyone else watching, you know, American football, I guess. But I think Canadian football is probably happening tomorrow, too, maybe. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't watch it. I'm not sure. I'm probably way off. It probably isn't even played right now. But I know lots of people watch American football or college. Is it college football? It might be college football. On New Year's Day, they do? Yeah, they're, on New Year's Day is like a big football day, right? Oh. Right? Somebody correct me. Is anyone I'm... a fan of football and lives in the U.S.? They will know. But they're probably not here right now. It's college? college. Yes. Okay, thanks, okay. Brett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Brett says it's college football. Yes. Both of this year. Whoa. Oh, so Whoa. yeah, no, we'll the, have, okay. the bowl games. Yeah, like the Rose Bowl happens tomorrow, right? Oh, college football. Is that right? Or the Doritos Bowl? Oh. One of those bowls happens. And you know how I know? I used to work at a job where uh, one of the like executive guys who didn't know much about computers, who watched a game on New Year's and loved it so much but wasn't able to find it anywhere else, asked me to use my technology internet hacking, maybe pirating skills, whatever you want to call them, to try to find me a copy of that college game that he could watch over and over again because it was like the best game he ever watched, ever. And this was like 20 years ago, 15, 17, 18 years ago, I don't know. Um, and yeah, I remember having to look into it. It was a college game. I had to find the right team, find the game, get him a copy, put it on, uh, burn it on like a DVD or something for him so he could watch it. Show him how to do it and all this kind of stuff. Went over to his house, I remember. He was like an old dude that was just like not really in touch with technology at all. So, but he loved his football. And then he told me about this college football that he watched on New Year's and was like the best football he ever seen. And he wanted to just watch it over and over again. Wow. And I forget the game, but it was like some crazy comeback. I even watched it after because he sold me on it. I remember downloading it and You're watching have to it. See this. I would watch it and I was like, <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. Wow. That was pretty cool. I forget what it was, but it was probably in like, the mid-ish 2000s, maybe. I don't remember the game. Hmm. But it was like some insane comeback. It might have been the Auburn game. I don't know. It probably was in like the mid-2000s. Like, I'm trying to remember what time and when oh, I worked maybe there. Oh, it was. Cause... Is it that one? It might be. What bowl was it? Was it like the Rose Bowl or something or Doritos Bowl or something? I forget. Maybe I'm just confusing it. But is that all after? But it was like famous. Yeah, it was like all day and all day. Oh, thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is it Auburn? When was that Auburn game played? What year? But that's how I know college football is on New Year's. That's my long winded, that? oh. pointless story nobody probably cares about. But this guy sold me. Like, I don't watch football. And this guy was telling me all about it. 2010, 2010 Iron Bowl? I don't think... Maybe it was, was 2010. It? Maybe. I feel like it was older. The Guacamole? Was it the... Mm. I don't know who's joking. What, what... No, that's real. Like that's they're, they're sponsored. Yeah. Oh, like, I'm like, I don't know yeah, if yeah, people yeah. are just trolling. So. No, I think the Guacamole is a joke, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Sure, if you tell me, I think it's right. Just like Doritos sounds like a joke. Auburn and Alabama. You was it before Chelsea? I don't remember. Oh, I remember it happening. I'm trying to remember if like I still work oh, with okay. him, <laughs> or he reached out to me when I already worked at a different job and was like trying to get me to help him out. Uh, I don't remember. 
Oh, Yogi says, uh, I know nothing, but it's on YouTube as just highlights. I don't know if the Iron Bowl is right. That doesn't sound right. Mexican dip? <laughs> but I, it could be right. Mark, now I know you're just trolling. So we never troll okay. here. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, guys. But it was a college game, and it was a crazy comeback out of nowhere. Yeah, it was a crazy comeback. They were like really down, and then they came back, and it was like crazy ending to it. Like something happened in like the last few minutes, hmm. like a whole a full field run or something crazy. Now I want to see it. Oh, any Auburn versus Alabama is called the Iron Bowl because of the rivalry. Oh. But it could have had a marketing name on it, right? Like some, some, like the Doritos Bowl, right? Like these, they just pay to have their name on like, you this, know, just like stadiums are named after whatever company wants to pay to have their name on the side. This might be a dumb question because I have no idea, but does it change every year based on who their sponsor is? So like the Doritos Bowl is a Doritos Bowl know. one year yeah, and that's then it's something maybe. else the next year? But I'm pretty sure it could have happened around 2010, but I feel like it was a little earlier, but maybe it wasn't. But it could have been, because I did work at the same company with him twice. I worked with him uh, at McDonald's. I'm not, okay, I'm and, not 100% sure. Who yeah, I'll tell you who after. But then I, I think I might know. Then I worked again at corporate Tim Hortons. Oh, then and I, I remember. Know. Okay. Yeah. But did he ask you when you worked at the first place or second place? Maybe it was the second place in 2010 probably lines up then. But I thought it was the first place. Well. It might be the 2010 one. You might be right. Auburn, Alabama, maybe it was that. But I don't remember. Because it was in 2010, and I knew nothing about what those schools were and what was going on. But the top sponsored bowls are always the same. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. They're four big bowl games, and they cycle between specific cities because NCAA is corrupt as hell. Okay, okay. <laughs> How, How many, many board gamers does it take <laughs> to figure out a college football game question? <laughs> and again, my memory is not the hottest, right? So what I'm remembering might have happened. Five ten years before or after I think it happened. Posted oh, Yogi posted something in the Discord. Oh, okay. At me. I don't even know what I was talking about. Losing my marbles. It wasn't 2016, for sure. It was definitely sometime between, like, 2005 and maybe, like, 2012 or something at the latest. Oh, Yogi posted the highlights so that I can watch the highlights in the Discord. Thank you, Yogi. Does, does that look right? I don't know. But I, I don't think it was called the oh, and Iron Bowl. Oh, what Yogi posted was what Kanji was also talking about. Yeah, I know. But I don't, I don't know if it was the Iron Bowl. That doesn't sound familiar. Hmm. But it could have been. It could have been. Thank you. I will watch that. I, um, ever since we watched like Last Chance U and all that, I am interested in... I'm just pretty sure, it was, yeah, it was like an epic <laughs> finale. Like, I remember it was like the game looked like it was one-sided. Then it got like near the end and all of a sudden like the craziest circumstances just happened and boom, like the other team came back and won out of nowhere. It was like the most like epic finish. Like, I don't know. But again, other games have happened since then that might have definitely trumped this. So it could have been in like 2008. Could have been in 2005. I don't know. Could have been in 2009 even. I don't know. But... It might be that 2010 one. I just don't, the iron doesn't sound familiar, like the Iron Bowl. It's okay. But yeah. But it wasn't a big point. Yeah, it probably is the Auburn game. Yeah, it probably had to be, is. I think, because it's interesting to epic finale. Yeah, I, I, that's how I remember it. Yeah, maybe it was the Iron Bowl. But it's, I think. We'll watch those highlights. Uh, yeah, that it's so many years ago, I'm not remembering. <laughs> But anyways, that's how I just know college is on that, because somebody asked me to get this game that was the most amazing game they ever watched. Yeah, it probably is the Auburn game. It probably is. Okay. But again, I only watched it one time, so I'm not going to remember if it's the game based on the ending. But if I go read about it, maybe, like, what exactly happened. Maybe if you watch the highlights. But it's okay. It doesn't bung me that much that I need to know. But I know sometimes I need to know something. I'm like, I need to know what the real answer is, and I will not give up till I find it. <laughs> this, I just have to let it go, because I can't trust myself that I remember what year it happened in, what the name of the bowl was, what the teams were. I can't remember. I am, though. I am trusting uh, Mike and Hedger, who seem to yes. know exactly what you were talking yes. about. That's so awesome. So I am, I am trusting in them that they, That's so they awesome. have you. I love that they're like right away, like, boom, it's this game, Rob. Which is crazy. I'm like, yep. 
I love this chat. I love this community. Yeah, you there's guys are always awesome. someone that can help us with every problem. I feel dumb, but I love throwing out things. And it's like I have that IBM computer that is like AI. And I could just yell something out to the chat and I'll have an answer come back. It's so cool. Yeah. Coolest. I have the coolest tech. I have the coolest technology at my fingertips, which is just a bunch of people watching my stream uh, who know more than I do about things that I don't know much about. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. The internet is awesome. Mm -hmm. And she says, I was a huge sports guy until I got into board gaming. Yeah, board gaming. Yeah, we, we board used gaming, to watch a lot more sports too. Yeah, board gaming crushed my my time for sports. Yeah, no more hockey. Yeah, we used to, Mel and I had a tradition. We used to yeah. watch the World Series. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of baseball. I used to go to Blue Jays games in Toronto yeah. just every now and then through work or just on cheap nights or to take my daughter or something just for fun to get her out of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, get on the train or whatever, go, go check out a Blue Jays game in Toronto. Um, but wasn't the biggest fan. It was more about just the experience being there. I, I, I liked playing baseball on like work baseball teams and stuff. Mm -hmm. I liked playing it when I was a kid, not organized though, just like more, well, I guess more organized. casual, casual baseball, yeah. softball, whatever. Um, but we used to watch the world series every single game and loved it. Cause it was like the best, you know, it's supposed to be the best baseball, you know? So it was like always cool watching the highest level of sports. I feel so like, I do love watching the super bowl. Yeah, we always watch that. Uh, just to see, like, the build-up, you know, this is the highest level of football there is. Uh, but hockey, like, obviously, I'm in Canada. I grew up with hockey around me. We have been to so many games. Yep, yep. We've watched lots of games in person. You yeah. grow up in school going on field trips to go watch hockey games and stuff. We have teams, Traveled. teams all around us at different levels of hockey. Um, family members who play hockey. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, watching the Penguins uh, play as, from being, a, like, you know, falling in love with them when I was like nine or whatever, eight years old or whatever it was, all the way up, you know. Um, but even then, like I used to pay for like the NHL network thing just to watch Pittsburgh games that weren't on TV and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but then board gaming just came and it, it just took over. That yeah, was yeah. like, it even killed video gaming as much for me and stole that time away. Yeah. So yeah, it's just weird how this crazy hobby that I thought was such a joke as a child that it was like, Man, if I was playing board games with my brothers and sisters, I felt it was like we were being punished because my Nintendo got taken away or my mom said, stop watching TV and let us play board games instead. You know, uh, it was more of like a punishment because the game sucked and playing with my brothers and sisters sucked too. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, but then coming later in life, it's like board gaming all of a sudden is like it's taking away video gaming, which is my favorite hobby. I still spend time video gaming. Uh, it's in my DNA. Mm -hmm. It's in my DNA. I can't stop. But, yep, we were playing last night. But I'm a gamer in general. So even though board gaming is different than video gaming, it's like there are more similarities nowadays than differences. And the quality is there in most games. Uh, in some games, I should say. But also there is garbage in video gaming too. But there's quality in both hobbies. So I still kind of have video gaming time and board gaming time. But sports, that just had yeah, to get sports, cut. Yeah, we don't have time for that. Watching someone else play games uh, uh, is basically sports, right? And I like more playing the game myself. But I do watch streaming of games being played. I obviously, I wouldn't create this content if mm -hmm. I didn't watch uh, people streaming video games and board games to get me into it and that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, it's just weird. But yeah, I haven't cared about a Penguins game in... Oh, many, many, many. Like 10 years, it feels like, since I got yeah. into the hobby. Like, I, no, maybe it's been like six or seven or something. But yeah. Yeah, it's been... I can't remember when the last time we went to a game. Yeah, I remember getting offered, like, uh, at one point, just hockey tickets at work, and was like, you know what, I'm good. I, I'm, I'm good. No, I, I don't need to see the Penguins play when they come to town. I'm good. I'm good. I have other stuff to do that evening. Thanks. I'm going to go practice for a card game tournament. Thanks. It's just like, wow. But yeah, that just that just interested me more than watching grown dudes get paid millions of dollars to like half ass their hobby, you know, or half ass their job. Like a lot of them are get lazy and just get paid and don't care. And um, it shows. But uh, I just liked I'd prefer to be me playing the game and spending time in board gaming, like exploring and learning and stuff. I thought it was neat. Mario retired and Rob started playing board games. No, Mario retired and I cared about hockey less, but then Mario bought the Penguins and then I cared about hockey again. That's what happened. Oh. Yeah, there was a time where like Mario, Yager, all that stuff, like the Penguins just started falling apart and I gave up on them too and they hit the bottom. 
Mario came in and saved the team from leaving the city pretty much. And he bought the Penguins, Mario Lemieux, fellow Canadian. Um, and yeah, then they uh, used the money and built new stadium. Uh, you know, they drafted Sidney Crosby. And uh, uh, what's his face? Oh, I can't remember the guy's name. I know who you're talking about, but I can't Yeah, um, and then they basically remade the little Mario and Yager pair. Um, and I forget the other guy's name. I'm so bad. You guys, someone will say it. Um, but Sidney Crosby, also a Canadian. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I was right back into it. I was like, oh my God. Like Mario bought the Penguins. And they're getting some great players. And they're doing good. And I just got back into rooting for them again on the rise. And then watching them win a couple cups. Funny that, that's awesome. funny that this is coming up today because I did see an article on my um, like Google News or whatever saying Ovechkin is banned from Canada, but I don't I didn't read the article <laughs> to find out why. Oh man. <laughs> and it could have been it could have yeah. been clickbait, but I didn't click on it, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> there is forty two bowl games, says Brett. Oh my god. Tomorrow? No, no, just in general. Okay, just in general. Mike James says there's only one. Canadian hockey player worth mentioning, a.k.a. the great one. <laughs> yes, Wayne Gretzky. I mean, there's quite a few good Canadian hockey players, right? Oh, through December and January. Oh, okay. Michael Richard, or Michelle Richard, is it? Michelle Richard is the great one? <laughs> Uh-oh, watch out. Daniel's going to come in here with the Montreal Canadiens love. <laughs> It's going to get messy. Let's not, let's not start doing the whole... We're going down a rabbit hole yep. here. We're from Ontario. We're not, I'm not a Leaf fan at all. Don't worry. But man, let's not get the Montreal Canadiens riled up here, the fans. <laughs> oh, man. But let me tell you, growing up watching Patrick Waugh uh, in goal uh, for the Canadiens was awesome. Like, I was like, man, this guy's cool. And uh, yeah, that, he was good. But I couldn't be a Canadiens fan uh, or I would get beat up in Ontario, so... But I could be a Penguins fan for some reason. That, that was allowed. Yeah, most of the greats were Canadian, but there's only one great one. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, we actually, um, uh, we're in southern Ontario. So in um, Brantford, Ontario, that I think, right, is where it's like a small kind of town city. Um, and that's where Wayne Gretzky's from. Oh, yeah. And it's not far from us really but i do know from driving through there going uh to various places there is like the wayne gretzky parkway yeah there's streets named after yeah there's streets him. named after him there uh i've seen his father uh when i've stopped oh, in there in, in a tim hortons we saw him we saw him in, i think a mcdonald's or a tim hortons, oh, McDonald's, or tim hortons. yeah you're right I yeah can't remember which it, his dad uh walter gretzky was years and years ago yeah yeah we just stopped off on the highway in in branford we traveling i think yeah, and uh, Wayne Gretzky's dad's just in the McDonald's chatting with people local to the town, having a good time. And he ran like charities there and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a very known thing. Like, they're very, we're very proud in uh, Ontario for uh, Wayne Gretzky for sure. Even though he didn't play for the Leafs, he played for the Oilers and the LA Kings and uh, mm -hmm. that eventually bought the Phoenix Suns or whatever. Um, so he never played for Canadian Or not Phoenix teams. Suns. What was it? Phoenix? Is it the Suns? No. I don't know. Basketball, I'm thinking. Phoenix. Coyotes. Phoenix Coyotes. Did Anyways. he ever play for a Canadian team? Mm, uh, yeah, Edmonton Oilers. Oh, okay. Okay. But then once he went to LA, I was like, man, this guy, come on, man. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? That's funny. <laughs> Anyways. But yes. There's probably statues of him, like, all over the place there. I don't know. Mike, you're a big sports guy, I see. Yeah, right? yeah. That's cool. You Mike, know, all the, the football, the hockey. Mike says, that dude is so good, uh, is ridiculous. I don't think anyone will ever uh, see his single season records. Wow. Yes, for anyone that doesn't know hockey, and if you know of basketball and Michael Jordan, uh, is probably a more famous person and a more famous name. But Wayne Gretzky was the Michael Jordan of like the 80s and 90s. Same with Michael Jordan, was more of like the late 80s into the 90s of basketball, of NBA, right? So those two were so good that they've set so many records. But again, the sport was different at the time. The rules weren't as strict. The uh, amount of money and training and, you know, uh, enhancing and <laughs> the equipment that's used to train people, the psychology studies of sports and stuff. 
um, the you know the methods of building teams and and running the leagues and all that kind of stuff and the penalties and and you know those kind of rules the foul rules and all that kind of stuff have all changed right and also the people who run those leagues are different so there are certain things at the top level of sports leagues where they will allow things to happen and change rules and change you know um, even teams the amount of money they're allowed to spend on how many players are on the team and stuff like that like the level of players the salary caps. All that kind of stuff has changed in many of these sports over the years. So even though one player like dominated a sport at the time, they were playing in a different world than somebody who's good at the sport now could have also been just as good or better than them in that environment. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to say because like sometimes like the NBA was run at certain points when Michael Jordan was playing that they wanted and it is good to have a team dominating in the sport. So when you're allowing your refs to back off a little bit or you're you know, kind of allowing the team to have all these amazing players and, you know, there's steamrolling over everyone. That's good for the sport because it gets people who are interested in the sport to come see this domination, to come see this huge celebrity, see someone winning constantly. Everyone's interested in watching a winner. Yeah, it creates rivalries. Yeah. Adam, thank you for subscribing. Adam, thank you. Welcome. Yeah, even equipment, right? Like mm -hmm. Wayne Gretzky at the time, he was probably wearing way less equipment playing, but maybe it was heavier. Maybe yeah. the goalies had thinner pads then, you know, and less equipment. Maybe the pucks weighed less. Maybe the ice was maintained different. You never know, right? There's yeah. so many different things, right? I, I don't know, like changing the size of the crease or the net or the goal or the posts were thinner. I, like there are so many different weird things, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe now players get hit more. Maybe back then they wouldn't want people to go after the star players as much, you know? So, uh, you know, the refs would help protect them more or the play, other players on the ice would help protect Wayne Gretzky more and allow him to do what he needs to do. But maybe nowadays, it's more like, let's not let those players get away with that. Who cares? And, and you know, maybe it's tougher for them. I don't know. I'm not knocking Wayne Gretzky, but for example, like it's, maybe he was just so great because he was also at the perfect time where the environment around him fostered that more than it does now. Mm -hmm. But yeah. But yes, Wayne Gretzky was great, did a lot for the sport too. Like, I'm not knocking it. But yeah, you just got, it's like, it's a wondering, like. Maybe, Would he be great now with all the other greats? Uh, yeah. Like, right? yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Or would some of the players now that people say aren't as good as Wayne Gretzky, would they been just as good? If they played If then. they were playing then. Yeah. yeah, it's just an interesting question. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he's not great. I'm just like, this is something I always think of, like how sports change over time. And people talk about old records, but it's like. Man, back then, things were different. People ate different food. <laughs> food actually had nutrition in it. Yeah. Nowadays, we have these guys, these young sports players, who are eating trash all day. Yeah. Of course, they're not performing at the highest level. They're eating garbage, living out of their cars and stuff. Mm -hmm. They can't afford to live where they live, right? Yeah. So there's so many things involved, so many factors. That is super fascinating. Sports fascinates me. It's crazy. It's like a science, man. Crazy science with so many variables. Jordan was a great player, but he didn't carry the team. The entire Bulls starting roster during the era were legends. Agree. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not one person, right? Yeah. They all work together yeah, to yeah. make a cohesive team. Yes. Yeah, they were. Yeah. yeah. When you see all the players that were on the team during that time, you're like, and what their records well, and we their place. Some yes. Documentary of yeah. Him. yeah. You're like, wait, all those players played with Jordan at the same time? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, it was very good. Like, no wonder the guy looked amazing. Yeah. He had the support, man. Yeah, exactly. He had the support of the whole league all the way to the top, man. Yeah. So, yeah. But anyways, this is like crazy. This is a viticulture stream. <laughs> but again, it's New Year's Eve. I don't care. YOLO. But yeah, it's just fun to hang out and talk. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it is. Um, but anyways, uh, we're going to get out of here. I'm getting hungry. Mm -hmm, same. I'm going to go eat some dinner soon or figure out what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thanks yeah. for just chatting. Uh, again, I don't mind so much the end of a stream because people can just drop off once oh, we start yeah. talking once about stuff. Like, like, I'm not interested in that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but join us tomorrow, where we also probably slack and chat a lot and hang out and more casual stream tomorrow for My Little Pony, uh, Adventures in Equestria, the deck building game. Uh, Wayne Gretzky has his own line, actually. Oh, it, yeah, I think he does. I, I've never tried it. Yeah, Wayne Gretzky has his own line of wine or his own, own brand of wine or something. And I think he owns restaurants or used to or something hmm. that sell his wine, I think. But I yeah. think he would be a white wine guy would be my guess. I don't know. That would be my guess. But he has his own wine, so you can look up Wayne Gretzky's brand of wine, and you'll know what he likes because it's his wine. Oh, yeah, you'll see. That's how you find that answer. Which pony is most like Wayne? 
Find out tomorrow. <laughs> Find out tomorrow. <laughs> 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 yes, so it all spins around. So this conversation was all related because it eventually got to talking about Wayne Gretzky, who owns his own wine and vineyard and stuff, probably. Yeah. Uh, so that is related to viticulture. So this was all on topic. Thanks, Yogi. Thank you, Yogi, yeah, for that. For bringing it full circle. Brought it all the way around. So it all was not unrelated and a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, thank you all for watching. All have a happy New Year's. Be safe yes, for those that safe. still have their New Year's ahead of them. For those that have New Year's has already passed, uh, still be safe. Have fun. I wish you all an awesome 2023. But I hope I'll see you in many streams throughout the year coming up, of course. And again, we'll be back streaming tomorrow on My Little Pony. We're scheduling some streams. I think we're going to play Spirit Island. Horizon of Spirit Island again with Kyle. He really asked after that stream, said, yes, please. Can we play that again next week? Yeah, he was excited to play again. So we're going to take a little break from the Poison Promise campaign for Lord of the Rings, Journey's Middle Earth, and we are going to play some more Horizon Spirit on with Kyle, switch up the spirits, play again. So join us for that. I think that's Wednesday evening. I'm going to schedule that for. Best way to not miss a stream is subscribe, turn on the notification bells, uh, or you can set reminders for the upcoming streams at youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. If you're looking for other videos and you want to keep putting us on your screen while we're not live, check out the playlist section on our YouTube channel or hit up the live section or the video section to find some of our other content and watch some of our other playthroughs of games. If, and again, if you're looking for more Viticulture and want to see the digital version, want to see the Essential Edition, uh, some different Tuscany variants packed in, different player counts, we probably have all that stuff down in the video description. Uh, there, there is a playlist link to that. And if you'd like to donate to the channel and support us, like these awesome people and many others, uh, there's a join button down below. That's probably the best way to join the channel and support us month to month. Uh, become a producer. If you don't like to give your money to YouTube, you can also do it through, there's a Patreon link down below in the video description and uh, a one-off PayPal link for some people like to use that instead because they don't want to do a subscription thing or whatever. But all that money helps the channel, helps us buy expansions like this one. Uh, nope, like this one. <laughs> I can't even do it today. Uh, expansions like this one from our local game store or online uh, and helps us buy cameras, audio equipment, lighting, and improve the channel. And I really saw that after I watched the older Viticulture videos we did. Oh, yes. And saw, oh, well, that was with a camera three cameras ago, and that camera we used, and that was before I got that capture card, and that computer was a different computer on the old crappy computer, and all these things we've changed since then in a short two years or two and a half years. It's crazy. And none of that would be possible. Also hitting up conventions and stuff would not be possible. And me doing this full time, and Mel joining us without your donations. So thank you very much for supporting the channel. It's been a great year for us. I appreciate it. Was able to get to Gen Con again, start playing board games with family and friends again. Uh, and you know, so we're gonna keep on rolling, keep streaming. And thanks to you guys, we can do that. And we'll keep buying games out into the collection. But without the support from these people up here and some of the others that donate on the side, um, yeah, I wouldn't be doing this and we wouldn't be having a blast here. So thanks all for hanging out. But uh, and most importantly, thanks for spending the time with us here. And uh, yeah, making it an awesome community. And uh, yeah, thank you for 2022. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for supporting us throughout 2022. And I hope beyond. And again, we'll see you tomorrow in 2023. And uh, hopefully it's even better. I think so. I have a good feeling about 20. But no promises, because I don't like to promise anything, okay? <laughs> I, it, I know. It could go completely downhill and all fall apart and get worse. Anybody who thinks that should watch our, what was it after? Terraforming Mars, right? When people are like, oh, it was the end of 2021. They're like, 2022 is going to be fantastic. Hope it's gone, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, wait, what? No, no. <laughs> I, yeah. And then I was like, guys, I'm raining all over your parade. Yeah. parade. It's not going to be different. Yeah. And it wasn't any different. Yeah. But anyways. <laughs> so this year, let's see. Yes. Maybe this will be different. Thanks a lot. Have a happy New Year's. And we'll see you next year. Bye-bye.